than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman, faced with death, strives for some solution to the insurmountable problem presented by Big George Latimer's possession of the deadly kryptonite. For prize-eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pet. That's right, Pep's the prize package that brings you comic buttons of a brand new series to collect and to swap duplicates with your friends. Don't miss out. Here's just a few of the 18 famous comic strip characters in this new series. Little Joe, A Breath of Breeze, Tiny Tim, Tilda, Mama Destro, Fat Stuff, Auntie Blossom, Uncle Avery, and Superman. You've fought of them in the funny papers. You've talked about them, heard about them, read about them. Now Pep puts their pictures on gleaming, colorful buttons to wear pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. Get busy today. Give your collection a head start. Start off by making sure there's plenty of Kellogg's Pep in the house, because that's the only way to get these comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. They come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. And Pep is in the exclusive class when it comes to good breakfast eating, too. It's called the Sunshine Cereal, loaded with catchy sunshine flavor that keeps your spoon digging in for more. Get a load of those super delicious whole wheat flakes tomorrow. For prize eating and exciting prizes, always get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now the adventures of Superman. When big George Latimer, ex-political boss of the state, was released from prison, where he had been sentenced to serve a year's term as the result of Superman's efforts, he left with careful instructions from one of Superman's arch enemies, the Laffer. Latimer followed the instructions, and as a result, he now has in his possession the one weapon Superman fears, a small, jagged piece of kryptonite, the curious green glowing metallic substance which robs Superman of all his superhuman strength. Unaware that Clark Kent, the seemingly mild-mannered Daily Planet reporter, is Superman, Latimer paid Kent a visit and requested that he arrange a meeting with Superman. Kent laughed at him until Latimer happened to use the word kryptonite. As we continue now, the big lumbering politician is backed up against the wall of Kent's office. And Kent, his jaw squared and his fists clenched, faces him. I'm warning you, Latimer. Don't lie to me. What do you know about kryptonite? All I... All I know is... All you know is what? Wait a minute. You can't threaten me this way, Kent. I haven't done anything to you. Never mind what I can or can't do. Answer my question. What do you know about kryptonite? I refuse to answer. Latimer, I swear to you. Let go my arm. You're hurting me. I'll do more than hurt you unless you start talking. Help! You help! Uh, What's going on? Good heavens. Everything's all right, Lois. Everything's all right. You try to kill me. Close the door, Lois. Let me out of here. Not so fast, Latimer. I thought you looked familiar. Why, you're Big George Latimer. Yes, and he threatened to kill me. Clark Kent threatened to kill you? Yes, he Don't believe a word he says, Lois. It's true. You know what kind of a man he is, if you can call him a man. Just let me out of here, that's all. I'll take care of those insults later. Don't you move. Why won't you let him out if he wants to go, Clark? Because he wants to kill me, that's why. Oh, nonsense. 
Go ahead. Get out. All right. But remember, Kent, if you don't arrange that meeting, there'll be trouble. Now, what in the name of heaven was that all about? Nothing. Nothing? I pass your office, hear cries for help, open the door, find you with one hand over a man's mouth and the other twisting his arm, and you stand there and tell me nothing. In the first place, I thought Latimer was in jail. Well, he served his term. He got out last week. What was he doing here? He came to see me. That was obvious, Clark. What did he want? Nothing. Oh, and because he wanted nothing, you decided to choke him to death, right? Look, forget it, Lois. Please, will you go go on about your business? This happens to be my business as much as it is yours. Now, look, Big I... George Latimer certainly didn't pay you a social call. It must have had something to do with the Daily Planet. All right, and so... And just I... in case you've forgotten, Mr. Kent, I work for the Planet as well as you do, remember? Look, Lois, I don't feel like being cute now. Please leave me alone, will you? Clark, it... is something wrong? Wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Well, I, I've never seen you this way before. You've got... Well, you, you've got blood in your eye. And you'd have it to it. If what? Nothing. Oh, there goes that nothing routine again. What did Latimer want, Clark? I told yes, you. Yes, I know. Nothing. That's right. Now, look, I, I, I've got some work to do, Lois. If you don't As mind, As it I... happens, I do mind. Something is bothering you, and I want to know what it is. Well, I can't tell you, so don't keep asking. Why not? Why not what? Why can't you tell me? Your phone's ringing. I don't want to talk to anyone. That's ridiculous. Clark Kent's office... Uh, Lois Lane. Lois, what's the matter with Kent? Who's this? Hurry, wife. Who do you think it is? Oh, I, I, I didn't recognize your voice, Chief. Where are you? Oh. In my office. Where do you think? Is everyone gone crazy around here? Where's Kent? He's here. Well, send him in to see me. This backpack was telling me some crazy story about Kent trying to kill a man. It's crazy, but it's true. I suggest you come in here, Chief. I don't want to see him, Lois. Why should I come in there? I just think it'll be better. Okay, I'll be right in. Now, why did you do that, Lois? Do what? Tell Mr. White to come in here. I told you I didn't want to see Relax, him. Relax, Clark. The world isn't coming to an end. Oh. I've got to send this piece of copy down to the composing room, but I'll be right back. I certainly don't want to talk to White or Lois or anyone. Got to think this thing out for myself. All they'll do is ask questions. I guess I better get out of here as Superman. Off of these clothes. <laughs> they'll wonder what happened to me, but... That's better than having to go through a third degree about Latimer. There we are. That does it. Now, up to the window. Out! And away! But, Chief, I tell you, I left him in here less than a minute ago. Well, he's not here now. <laughs> What's the matter? The window. Look, it's wide open. Well, what of it? Clark, he, he jumped out of the window. Oh, stop it. Stop that blubbering. There'd be a girl out. down in the street if he jumped out the risen. So stop that blubbering, Lois. Well, well, then, then where did he go? No, where does he always go when he's needed? Well, I, I would have seen him if he came out of the office. I was at Holbrook's desk just outside. All right, all right. He grew a pair of rings and flew out the window. Does that satisfy you? Don't shout at me. I didn't do anything. Who's shouting? You are. I have not. Is there anything wrong in here? Yes, you are. You're always wrong. Oh, me? He's all right, Beanie. Just close the door. Yes, ma'am. Golly. You shouted at him, too. No, he's always sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong. Now, what's this nonsense all about? Who was Kent trying to kill, or is this just another of Miss Backrack's pipe dreams? I don't know whether Clark intended to kill anyone, but I heard someone in this office crying for help, and when I came in, he had one hand over Latimer's mouth and the other twisted... Who's Latimer? You know, big George Latimer. He was here in Kent's office? Yes. Well, what for? What does that snake-in-the-grass ward healer want here? I don't know. Clark wouldn't tell me. He said it was nothing, but I've never seen him so enraged before. Why, he really looked as if he were ready to tear someone apart. Well, I can't think of a better person than Latimer for that. Oh, he's out of jail, huh? Evidently. Well, I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw an elephant. I'll take it, Chief. Hello, Mr. Kent's office. Mr. Kent there? I'm sorry, he's gone out. Can you take a message for him? Certainly. Tell him Mr. Latimer called. It's Latimer, Chief. Uh, yes? What's he want? Shh. Tell him I'll give him until 10 o'clock tonight to take care of that little matter I discussed with him. Um, yes. Um, what little matter? He knows. Tell him if he doesn't take care of it, there'll be trouble. Plenty of trouble. <laughs> Evidently, Big George Latimer means business. We'll return in a moment to find out how he intends to make trouble for Clark Kent and Superman. So keep listening. Are you in the swim? Are you keeping up with your friends and your collection of that new series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep? Don't let anybody get ahead of you, fellow or girl. 
Get in on the fun when your pals are swapping duplicates and comparing notes on how many everybody's collected. These new pep comic buttons are real eye-catchers. Eighteen of them, including Flat Top, The Old Plenty, Mr. Bibb, Superman. Every picture is clear-cut and bright. Every button is a smart decoration for your jacket or dress or cap. Count yourself in on the fun of collecting this new series of 18 pep comic buttons. Just make sure that you've stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's pep and look inside the package for your prize. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop. You can't buy these comic buttons anywhere. They're a prize for you from the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Those golden toasted whole wheat flakes, crisp and fresh as can be, full to the brim with that catchy sunshine flavor. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And say, there's another exciting prize for you, a wonderful offer to be announced on Friday's Superman program. So be here Friday. Remember... Now back to the adventures of Superman Forced to assume his true identity of Superman And leap out of the window of his 25th floor office in the Daily Planet building In order to avoid being questioned by Lois and Editor White Clark Kent, unaware that big George Latimer has called And given him until 10 o'clock that night To arrange a meeting with Superman Has sought the solitude of the woods Some miles from Metropolis To gather his disturbed thoughts we find him now strolling along a trail, still garbed in the red cape and blue costume of the Man of Steel, thinking aloud. If Latimer does have that last piece of kryptonite, the only one he could have gotten it from would have been the laugher. Oh, but what's the difference where he got it or from whom? Fact is, he's got it. Or has he? It might all be a bluff. If it is, there's one easy solution. Face him and call the bluff. Yes, but suppose it's not a bluff. Suppose he's really got that last piece. Once he discovers what it does to me, I'm finished. He's out for blood, my blood, and he'll do anything to get it. The question is how to stop him. Meanwhile, back at the Daily Planet, Lois Lane and Perry White are trying desperately to locate Clark Kent. Still no answer at his apartment, Chief. Well, hang up and try again in ten minutes. Still no answer. No, what time is it? Eight o'clock. Well, hang up. We've still got two hours. Darkness has fallen over the woods. The whistling of birds has given way to the chirping of crickets. But still, Superman saunters up and down the trail, thinking aloud. It isn't only myself I'm worried about. It's everything I've fought for as long back as I can remember. If Latimer gets into power again, heaven help the poor people who don't think the way he does or who don't worship the way he does or who don't part their hair the way he does. No, that can't happen. I must get that last piece of kryptonite away from him. But how? I can't get near it. I... Wait a minute. I've got it. Why didn't I think of this before? And away! Suddenly struck with an idea, Superman leaps high into the air and streaks off into the gathering darkness. What occurred to him like a bolt out of the blue? A plan to get the kryptonite away from Big George Latimer? Whatever it is, he'd better work fast, because the deadline, 10 o'clock, is only a scant hour or so away. We don't know what Latimer plans to do at 10 o'clock. But neither do we know Superman's idea. We'll learn the answer to both questions in tomorrow's exciting episode. So be sure to listen. Tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. When you see a cardinal or a hummingbird, can you identify it? You can if you're collecting the full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. 
You'll get a kick out of swapping duplicates with your friends and collecting all 24 pictures in the series. Get yourself the colorful album, too, to paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and mellow, rich shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman stands face to face with complete destruction as the deadly atom of kryptonite is hurled at his very feet. Bet you can't name a fellow or girl in your block who's not on the lookout for those terrific new comic buttons in the new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Nobody wants to miss out. Anybody who's on the beam already has a start on the collection. These new Pep comic buttons are real humdingers. Bright colored, clear and sharp looking. They do a swell job of dressing up your jacket or dress or cap. But don't take my word for it. Get yourself a package of Kellogg's Pep and give a look-see. Get a load of flat top. Denny Dimwit, Tiny Tim, that rugged picture of Superman, and all the other 18 new and different comic buttons. Then, get busy on your collection. It's easy to get these prizes, no trouble at all. You don't have to spend any of your allowance. Don't even send in a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these pep comic buttons anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. That's P-E-P, the sunshine cereal. Pep, the golden toasted whole wheat flakes with that catchy sunshine flavor. Kellogg's Pep, so good for you. Extra amounts of energy, vitamin B1, plus good old sunshine, vitamin D, that helps build strong bones and teeth. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, always get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. Kryptonite, a strange green glowing metallic rock torn from the planet Krypton, birthplace of Superman, is the only known weapon capable of stripping the man of steel of his strength. For some strange chemical reason, when Superman is within ten feet of a piece of kryptonite, all his superhuman power and ability vanishes, and he becomes weak and helpless. And now, the last remaining piece of kryptonite, part of a meteor that fell to Earth some years ago, is probably in the hands of Big George Latimer, the ex-political boss of the state, whom Superman was instrumental in sending to jail for a year. Unaware that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person, Latimer has threatened to cause serious trouble if Kent does not arrange to have Superman meet him before 10 o'clock tonight. It is now five minutes to ten. Kent, who has not heard about Latimer's threat, is closeted with an old friend, Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman. Robin, Batman's young assistant, is asleep on the second floor of the Wayne house. Kent and Batman are alone in the library. So, summing it all up, Clark, you're sure Latimer has the piece of kryptonite? Well, reasonably sure. I don't think he'd chance a bluff. Why not? What's he got to lose? Well, you knuckle under, okay. If not, no hits, no runs, one error. What do you mean, knuckle under? Well, it's obvious he wants something from you, whether he has the kryptonite or not. Well, what can I possibly give him? I don't know. You sent him to jail, didn't you? Yes. You broke up that crooked situation in the state capitol. Maybe he's just sore at you and wants revenge. Uh, I'm afraid there's more to it than that. Well, what can Robin and I do for you? Get that piece of kryptonite, Bruce. Get it and drop it in the ocean 30 miles offshore. I won't rest easy until the last of that stuff is gone forever. You never really found out uh, why it works the way it does, did you? No, and I guess I never will. The reason I brought it up was I thought maybe we might find an antidote for it. Hmm, by that time, Latimer will have done all his dirty work. No, there's only one possible solution. Get that last existing piece and destroy it. All right. How do we start the ball rolling? Well, Latimer must have it close by him, and that means in his house. Mm, chances are he's got the place guarded. So we break in and give the house a fast going over. Oh, tell me, is it a big house? Too big. Oh, needle in the haystack, eh? Mm-hmm, afraid so. Also, what's Latimer going to be doing while you and Robin are searching? If we see him first, he won't do much. Robin's been taking rope tying lessons from an old sailor. 
Why, he can truss a man up like a chicken, ready to go in the oven in ten seconds flat. Yeah. I wish there were a cleaner way of doing it. I don't like the idea of breaking in and ransacking a house. Well, I can get your search warrant and let the police do the job. No, 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 no. I don't want any publicity. That was what started all the trouble three years ago. No, the quieter we keep this, the better off I am. Then it's an undercover job, clear and simple. Just so. After all, Ken, Latimer is certainly no pure white lily. Huh. He's got a prison term behind him and no telling what ahead of him. So this isn't just an ordinary robbery. There's a good deal at stake. I suppose you're right. Oh, what time is it? At 10 o'clock. Well, I better get going. Is tomorrow night all right for you and Robin? Don't see why not. Good. I'll pick you up about 10. And thanks a lot, Bruce. I knew I could count on you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll huh? walk down the corner with you. Pick up a late paper. <laughs> Well, if we don't find the trip tonight in Latimer's house, then we're really in trouble, Clark. Well, I'd rather not think of that, if you don't mind. Of course, it might mean Latimer hasn't got it. Maybe the laugher just told him the story, and Latimer decided to capitalize. Evening, Mr. Wayne. Oh, hello, Riley. Thinking you're constitutional. Yes, down the corner for a paper. You know Clark Kent, don't you? Officer Riley. Best cop on the force. I don't know Officer Riley, but I'm glad to. Did you say Clark Kent, Mr. Wayne? That's right. The Daily Planet Star reporter. Why, you must have heard of him. Sure, and I have, Mr. Wayne. To me sorrow. To your sorrow? That's not a very nice way to talk about a friend of mine, Riley. It isn't so much the talking, Mr. Wayne, that disturbs me. No, sir. It's the doing. Look, Riley, what's this all about? It gives me no pleasure, believe me, Mr. Wayne, to have to inform you that it is my solemn duty to put your friend, Mr. Kent, under arrest. <laughs> Joe, how long have you been in charge of the detention cells here at police headquarters? It'll be seven years in August, Mr. Kent. And I've known you all that time, haven't I? That's right. You mean to stand there and tell me that after seven years of close association, you can't tell me why I was picked up, brought to headquarters, and locked in a cell? Sorry, Mr. Kent. All I know is what they tell me, oh. and they didn't tell me nothing. But, Joe... You hit somebody, maybe? Of course not. I was walking along the street with my friend ba uh, Bruce Wayne when suddenly a cop named Riley arrested me for no good reason at all. Well, there must have been a reason, but Mr. I Kent. Tell you... Nobody gets arrested without a reason. Well, I certainly wish someone would let me in on it. Oh, did you tell the sergeant I wanted to see Inspector Henderson? I told him. What did he say? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Listen, if you think I'm going to spend a night in this cell, Joe, you're crazy. Well, I don't know how you're going to get out. Well, I'll get out if I have to twist these bars into pretzels. Oh, now, Mr. Kent, you're not Superman. Oh, no, I'm not, huh? Now, look, Joe. You go tell the sergeant... Here he I... comes now. He's got a young lady with him. Lois! Well, you certainly put him in a nice, clean cell, Sergeant. Lois, get me out of here. You look wonderful behind bars, if, Clark. If this is your idea of a joke, it is not funny. If disappearing into thin air from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until after 10 at night is your idea of a joke, it isn't funny either. Where were you? I... Never mind. Tell him to open this door. Let him out, Joe. Yes. <laughs> Sorry we had to put you to all this trouble, Sergeant. Glad to be of help, Miss All right. Now, what was the big idea? The chief is waiting for you at the office. He'll explain everything. Come on. Yes, I had you picked up, Kent. At half past nine, I told the police to send a general alarm out for you. Any objections? Well, only that it's a peculiar way of getting in touch with anyone, having him thrown into jail. How else could we get to you to warn you that Latimer gave you until 10 o'clock to make some mysterious uh, arrangements? Uh, what arrangements was he talking about, Kent? Uh, nothing, Chief, nothing. Oh, there he goes with that nothing routine again. Well, well, here, Kent. I've had enough of this flim flam. This is serious business. Latimer's charges can't be lapped off. Latimer's charges? What are you talking about? Apparently, he hasn't seen the early morning edition of the Daily Star, Chief. Show it to him. I'll read it to him. Uh, six column head. Look at here. Latimer says Superman framed him. What? No, oh, that's nothing. Listen to this. In an exclusive statement of the Daily Star, Big George Latimer, former political boss of the state, today accused Superman of having framed the evidence and sent him to prison. But that's ridiculous. Now, wait a minute. Latimer further states that Superman demanded the sum of $100,000 to keep quiet and, when the blackmail money was refused, concocted false evidence. Do you believe that? Of course not. Except for one thing. What? Read the last paragraph, Chief. Well, let's see. Uh, yes, here it is. Latimer will address a mass meeting in the Metropolis of the Auditorium tomorrow night, and he challenges Superman to appear on the same platform with him and deny his charges. That's what we don't understand. How can Latimer have the nerve to invite Superman to appear and... Clark, what's the matter? I... Clark! I don't feel well. Good grief, you... Well, you're as pale as a ghost. <laughs> 
Yes, and with good reason, Mr. White. For now, Kent knows Latimer's diabolical plan. How can Superman possibly appear on the same platform with the man who has the last piece of deadly kryptonite? And yet, if he fails to appear, everyone will believe Latimer. What can he do? We'll know in just a moment, so keep listening. If you haven't seen one of those new pep comic buttons in the brand new series, better latch on to a package of Kellogg's Pep Pronto, because you're going to be out of the running when your friends are working up their collections and swapping duplicates. And you'd sure hate to miss out. These new pep comic buttons are real eye-catchers, for one thing. The colors are bright, the pictures of familiar funny sheet characters are clear, and the buttons are one grand way of dressing up your jacket or dress or cap. There were 18 new and different buttons in this new series. That means that your fun keeps on and on. You get the excitement of collecting a breath of breeze, Mr. Bibbs, Uncle Avery, Superman, and all the rest. So get busy right now. Make sure that you're stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's Pep. That's the only way you can get these comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere. They come only as prizes, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Pep surprise when it comes to good eating, too. Golden toasted whole wheat flakes that are loaded with catchy sunshine flavor. For prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And for another exciting surprise, Kellogg's have whipped up a wonderful offer for you. A surprise that I'm not allowed to tell you about till tomorrow. So make it a point to be here tomorrow. Now back to the adventures of Superman. Challenged by Big George Latimer to appear on the same platform with him and denied charges that he not only tried to blackmail Latimer, but framed evidence against him, Superman is on a spot. Latimer, he is certain, has the last remaining piece of kryptonite which robs Superman of his strength. However, if he fails to appear, the public will believe Latimer's charges are true. But if he does appear, Latimer will have him in his control. As we continue now, it is after midnight. In a desperate attempt to forestall the crooked political boss, Kent in his true guise of Superman is hovering over Latimer's big stone house on Metropolis Heights. There he is. Fast asleep in the large bedroom at the front of the house. If I can surprise him, I may have a chance. It's risky, but I can't help it. Down! Down! Dropping to the sill of one of the three windows of Latimer's bedroom, Superman gently raises the sash. But suddenly, just at the moment when the window opening is large enough for Superman to climb through, Latimer awakens and sits bolt upright in bed. Who's there? Superman remains motionless, not a muscle of his body moving. Again, the voice cries out. Who's there? Superman's eyes, as sharp and clear in darkness as they are in daylight, sweep the room. Suddenly, he stiffens. There on the night table next to Latimer's bed is a small lead box. He tenses himself to leap into the room, but just then, Latimer reaches out and snaps on the light. For a timeless moment, Superman is framed in the sudden brilliance. But it is long enough for Latimer to act. Sweeping his hand across the night table, he hurls the leaden box to the floor. It strikes. The cover opens. And the jagged piece of kryptonite rolls out on the rug, glowing with a peculiar greenish light. What will happen? Is Superman out of range of the deadly kryptonite? Or has he been caught and held powerless? This is a tense and tragic moment in Superman's life. So be sure to listen tomorrow to learn what happens for another thrilling episode in The Adventures of Superman. Don't fail to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Here's how you can learn to identify the birds that have come back with the fine weather. Start collecting the full-color bird pictures from packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. Boy, is it fun. You'll get a kick out of collecting all 24 in the series and trading duplicates with your pals. And send for the colorful album so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. Ask Mom to get you some Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and mellow, rich shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. 
And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman accepts the challenge of his very existence as he steps upon an open platform to face the cruel, relentless possessor of his one enemy, deadly, destructive kryptonite. All right, everybody. Here's where we come up with a super special offer from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Want a big silver keychain to hook into your pocket or belt? I mean a man-sized keychain, over 17 inches long and all-out good-looking. And to jingle on that keychain, 12 lucky pieces. Silvery small-scale models of a skull and crossbones, for instance. A football, a Scotty dog, a locomotive, binoculars. Twelve lucky pieces in all. Each an actual small-scale model that's fun to jingle around. That's Pep's exciting offer. A handsome keychain and twelve lucky pieces to twirl and jingle on your chain. Now then, to get your keychain, just send in a Pep box stop and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a pep box top. And for each of the lucky pieces you want, you send one pep box top and only one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want, like the skull and crossbones or the football. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send one pep box top plus one dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Tell you more about this swell offer later in the program. And now, the adventures of Superman. The last remaining piece of kryptonite, the strange green glowing metallic substance that is Superman's only unconquerable enemy, is in the hands of big George Latimer, the crooked ex-political boss whom Superman once sent to prison. Aware that Superman cannot come within ten feet of the kryptonite without losing all his strength, Latimer has challenged the Man of Steel to appear before an audience with him and deny the charges that he, Superman, framed the evidence that put Latimer behind bars. In yesterday's episode, as you remember, after Latimer's challenge appeared in the Daily Planet opposition paper, the Metropolis Star, Superman decided on a desperate move. Hovering over Latimer's big stone house, he determined by means of his X-ray vision that the crooked politician was asleep in a front bedroom. Cautiously, then, he raised one of the windows and was about to enter the room when suddenly Latimer awakened and snapped on a light and seeing Superman framed in the open window, swept his hand across the night table near his bed. A small lead box fell to the floor. The cover snapped open and out rolled the jagged piece of kryptonite, glowing green against the dark rug. As we continue now, Superman, unable to check his leap into the room, has come within ten feet of the kryptonite. Down on his knees, he is fighting desperately against its deadly effect. Quickly, Latimer gets out of bed, slips into a robe, and moves the piece of kryptonite closer to the fast-weakening man of steel. His eyes are fanatically bright, and his thick lips curl back from his teeth in a leering smile. Don't waste your time struggling, Superman. You know you can't lick it. I've got you just where I want you. It won't do you any good. Oh, no? No. I wonder how it feels to slap your face. Let's see. <laughs> Suppose anyone ever did that to you in all your high-flying experience. You'll be sorry you did it. <laughs> You'll make me laugh. Waiting almost a year for this day. I dreamed about it at night when they locked me into my cell. The cell you sent me to. Now here it is. Superman down on the floor. Weak as a newborn puppy. Where did you get the kryptonite? I'm an old friend of yours. Ever hear of the laughter? The laugh? You've heard of him, all right. He died in the prison hospital. He left me a legacy. That piece of kryptonite, which is going to make me more powerful in this state than I was before you interfered. Not only that, it's going to put you under my thumb. 
You won't be able to rave and rant about racial and religious discrimination. No Jew or Catholic or black man will hold a state job if I have anything to do with it. I'll clean them all out. Did anyone ever tell you that a, a rattlesnake has more decency than you have, Latimer? Shut up. Shut up, Earl. One thing you can't do, Latimer, is hurt me. I haven't any strength, but you can't hurt me. I'll hurt you when I'm ready to. Don't worry about that. For the time being, I want to use you. Prove to the people of the state that I was framed by you. That won't be so easy. Like rolling off a log. Tomorrow night, I'm addressing a mass meeting at the auditorium. I challenged you to appear on the same platform with me and deny my charges. You won't appear. You don't dare appear. Because I'll have the kryptonite with me, and you certainly wouldn't want to collapse in front of 2,000 people. So what happens? You fail to show up to answer my charges. That means I am telling the truth. I was willing to face you. But you're not willing to face me. You're, you're crazy if you think the public will fall for that. I've been a politician long enough to know the public falls for anything you sell them. And I'm going to sell them into believing that you're a blackmailer and a thief. What are you... What are you planning to do with me? This will surprise you, no doubt. I'm going to let you go, yes. Right now, you're more valuable to me, alive and free. I'll move the kryptonite back so you can regain your strength. Then you can leave the way you came, out the window. Hey, how's that? Oh. Careful now. Don't try any tricks. I'm standing right over the kryptonite. You know what'll happen if you come near me. Now get up on your feet. Don't be a fool, Latimer. You know what happens to people who misuse power? It won't happen to me. That's what your friend Hitler said, and Mussolini, and Goering, and Himmler. I'm not interested in what anyone said. Get out now before I change my mind and bring you down to your knees again. All right, but I'm warning you. You can't win playing the game the way you're trying to play it. As long as I've got you where I want you, nothing else worries me. The trick, Latimer, is to keep me where you want me. Out and away! <laughs> Leaping out into the darkness, Superman hesitates for a moment in hovering flight. And then, Red Cape streaming in the night wind, heads for the suburban home of Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet. Minutes later, he faces the gray-haired editor. Sorry to have to disturb you at this hour, Mr. White, but... I'm glad you did. Now, maybe we can get some things cleared up. Now, this business with Big George Latimer is serious. Not only are you on the spot, but the planet is, too. We backed you when you broke up Latimer's hold on the state capitol and sent him to prison, you know. You're not sorry, are you? Of course not. The charges he's made have to be answered, which I assume you'll do. That's exactly why I'm here, to give you a statement. A statement isn't enough, Superman. What? Latimer challenged you to appear at the Metropolis Auditorium tomorrow night and deny his charges. And that's what you'll have to do. Why? Why is that necessary? Latimer accuses you of framing evidence against him and attempting to blackmail him. Well? Aren't accusations of that kind important enough for you to deny in person? Yes, of course, but... uh... But what? Well, there are some things, Mr. White, that are difficult to explain. Not if they're on the level. Well, you don't think for a moment that, that Latimer's telling the truth. All I know is that if you don't appear, a lot of people are going to think so. Well, I know this sounds peculiar, but in this case, no one would believe the truth. You've got to stand behind me, Mr. White. You've got to trust me. I'm going to do everything in my power to work this out. But until then, please don't let me down. <laughs> As Superman makes an impassioned plea for support, Perry White regards him strangely, unable to understand why the Man of Steel cannot deny Big George Latimer's charges in person. In that moment, a tiny seed of suspicion plants itself in the editor's mind, the horrible suspicion that Latimer's accusations may be true. We'll return in a moment to learn what happens in this tense situation. So keep listening. Here's more about that good-looking keychain and the swell lucky pieces offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is a big time, a terrific offer. Just wait till you see what you get. This keychain isn't just any old keychain. It's a big man-sized keychain, all bright and silvery, over 17 full inches long, with a clip to hook into your pocket or belt, and at the other end, a ring for your keys or knife. And to jingle all along your keychain, Pep offers you 12 lucky pieces. Twelve silvery small-scale models, including a football, a skull and crossbones, a piano, binoculars, a locomotive, 
a telephone, a clock, a trolley car, and say, will you like them? Yes, sir. Here's an offer that's really something. A handsome keychain and 12 lucky pieces. They're not just flat pieces of metal. They're actually small-scale models. Fun to jingle around and look at from every angle. Now, here's all you do to get in on this grand pep offer. To get your keychain, just send in a pep box top and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime, plus a pep box top for your keychain. And for each of the lucky pieces you order, you send one pep box top and only one dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. Say you start by sending for just the telephone or the locomotive. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box top and one dime. Print your name and address clearly. And to get your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. Ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. It is the following evening. The Metropolis Auditorium is packed to the rafters with people who have come to witness, they hope, the personal appearance of Superman to deny Big George Latimer's slanderous charges. Perry White, Lois Lane, and Clark Kent are in the audience as Latimer walks out on the stage to be greeted by a mixture of applause and boos. Hear the booing, Chief? Uh, there isn't enough of it, Lois. Some of them are applauding. Hey, what's the matter with you, Kent? Huh? Why don't you go home and go to sleep if you're tired, Clark? Uh, I'm not tired. I'm, I'm just thinking. Thinking about what? Well, Quiet, Lois. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Name is the Fair Play. Fair Play. That's a hot it one. It is no secret, and I do not intend to make it a secret, that I recently served a term in the state prison on charges brought against me by Superman at the Daily Planet newspaper. Those charges, ladies and gentlemen, were false. How do you like that? I was maliciously framed by Superman of the Daily Planet. And I can prove it. Ask him to prove it, Chief. Don't be funny. No, I mean it. He's lying in his teeth. Not only can I prove that I was framed, but if Superman was in this audience, or within sound of my voice, I challenge him to step up to this platform and deny that he tried to blackmail me by asking for $100,000 in cash as the price for destroying his framed devil. That's a lie, and you know it. Sit down, well, Kent. To- We're in enough First trouble as it is. If Superman does not appear, and I can promise you he won't, it will indicate that he cannot deny my accusation, that everything I have said is true. Oh, let me out, please. Where are you going, Carl? I can't stand any more of this drill. Come back here. I'll see you later. Everything I have said and will say is true. I will not dare appear before you this way if it were not. I was not there, Harlan Challenger. Striding up the center aisle of the packed auditorium, Clark Kent hurries down to the empty lounge where he quickly strips off the clothes of the mild mannered reporter and stands revealed in the blue and red costume of Superman. I can't let him get away with this. I've got to call his bluff. He doesn't seem to have the kryptonite with him. Either he forgot it or thought it was too dangerous to carry. Anyway, it isn't on the platform, and it isn't in any of his pockets. Well, here goes. For better or worse. Mounting the steps leading to the auditorium, Superman prepares to accept Big George Latimer's false challenge. Fairly certain that Latimer does not have the deadly piece of kryptonite with him. But Superman is wrong. This time, Latimer has been too smart for him. There is a piece of kryptonite on the politician's person. In fact, it is in clear view, but Superman has failed to see it. The question now is, will he see it before he steps up on the platform? Fellows and girls, Monday's episode is super tense and super exciting, as the Man of Steel runs the risk of collapsing in front of thousands of people. Don't miss it, whatever you do. Be sure to tune in Monday. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. 
able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman is confronted with the possible climax of his life and career as a gaping, spellbound audience watches even stride leading to the very spot of the deadly kryptonite. Give an ear, grab yourself a pencil, get a load of this out-and-out out terrific offer from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep to you. Yes, Kellogg's Pep offers you a big silvery keychain, a real man-sized keychain over 17 inches long. The kind of keychain that's heavy enough to hold your pocket knife or watch. The kind of keychain your friends would give their right eye to own. And that's not all. To jingle on that handsome keychain, Pep offers you 12 lucky pieces, silvery small-scale models of a skull and crossbones, a piano, a Scotty dog, a clock, a locomotive. Twelve lucky pieces in all. Not just flat pieces of metal, but actual small-scale models that make a hit from every angle. That's Pep's exciting offer. A handsome keychain and twelve lucky pieces. Now then, to get your keychain, just send in a Pep box stop and fifteen cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a Pep box stop. And for each of the lucky pieces you want, you send one Pep box stop and only one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want, like the skull and crossbones or the piano. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send one pep box stop plus one dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now the adventures of Superman. For some mysterious chemical reason, a jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite, a fragment torn from the planet Krypton when it exploded in space, is Superman's only unconquerable enemy. When he ventures within ten feet of the kryptonite, the Man of Steel not only loses his superhuman powers, but becomes as weak and helpless as a babe in arms. And now, the only existing piece of kryptonite is in the hands of Big George Latimer, the crooked political boss Superman was instrumental in sending to jail. In our last episode, as you remember, Latimer called a huge mass meeting at the Metropolis Auditorium in order to publicly accuse Superman of having framed evidence against him and attempted to blackmail him. As Latimer, speaking from the auditorium platform before a packed house, said... I challenge Superman to step up here and deny these charges. I challenge him to face me before all you people of Metropolis and deny that he not only framed evidence against me, Evidence that resulted in my being sent to prison, but that he also demanded that I pay him one hundred thousand dollars in blackmail money. Let him come up on this platform and deny it. In the audience, Lois Lane and Editor Perry White are puzzled as Clark Kent, who, as we know as Superman, suddenly gets up and leaves. Clark is going to miss the big show. What big show? Superman giving Latimer the business. Well, if that's what you're expecting, Lois, you're not going to be disappointed. Oh, now, Chief, after age, Superman can't afford to have charges like that made in public without denying I'm me. only telling you what I think. Don't worry. He'll be here. And then you'll see some fireworks. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the deserted lounge at the rear of the auditorium, down a flight of steps, Clark Kent has stripped off the business suit disguise of the mild-mannered, bespectacled newspaper reporter and stands revealed in the blue and red of Superman. I can't let him get away with calling me a blackmailer in front of 2,000 people. He doesn't seem to have that piece of kryptonite anywhere on him or around him, so I guess I can take a chance. Listen to them applauding him. Every word out of his mouth is a lie, but evidently they're ready to believe him. All right, Latimer, you asked for it. Now you're going to get it. Starting up the steps to the main floor of the auditorium where big George Latimer is still hurling challenge after challenge at him, Superman is determined once and for all 
to put a stop to Latimer's attempt to regain his political position by making false accusations, despite the fact that it may mean exposing himself to the strength-robbing effect of the last remaining piece of kryptonite. Meanwhile, in the audience, two friends of Superman's, the famous Batman and Robin, attired now in their ordinary street clothes, are listening to Latimer weave his fabric of falsehoods. I feel Leaning I have over, a duty Robin and an voice comment. to the people of this state. If Superman but doesn't show up soon and shove that windbag's words down his throat, I'm going to do it. Relax, Robin. Chances are he won't show. Why not? not? There is some Sunday reasons. Quiet now. I'm going to hear him. I expose him as a charlatan and a blackmailer. Further than that, if he dares to appear on this platform, I will prove to each and every one of you that he is not a Superman. Did you hear what I heard, Batman? Yes. And he can do it, too. You mean to say... Hold it, hold it. I must prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Superman has lost his amazing power. You will see before your very eyes the spectacle of his weakness. In fact, I will show you how I, George Latimer, can bring the great Superman to his knees. Is he crazy? I'm afraid not. For the first time tonight, he's telling the truth. You mean Superman has lost his strength? Well, not quite. I don't get it. First you say... I don't know. People are standing up and looking around. Uh oh, it's Superman. Where? Coming down the aisle. Oh, so you were wrong. Come on, now let's see the ladder open his big mouth. He will, don't worry. Robin. Yes? Get up on that platform for the stage entrance. Hide somewhere in the wings. And don't let Latimer see you if you can help him. What's on the fire? There may be trouble. You stand by on the platform. Right. Where are you then? I'll stick close to Superman if I catch him going down the aisle. You think we can squeeze out of here? Yeah, with a little pushing and shoving. Excuse me, please. I'm getting out. Inching their way along the row of occupied seats, Batman and Robin finally reach the crowded aisle. Robin, following instructions, heads for the stage door entrance to the platform, while Batman, excusing himself, forces his way up the aisle to meet the man of steel who has just broken away from the screaming, milling mob. Recognizing his friend, Superman addresses him by his real name. Bruce, what are you doing here? You wouldn't miss this show for a million. You've certainly got them tearing the rafters down. It'll take an hour to get through at this rate unless I fly over the heads. I'm not so sure that platform's a healthy place for you. Why? I don't like the self-satisfied smile on Latimer's face. Well, the kryptonite is not on the platform. Are you sure? If I can trust my eyes. Can't we do anything to clear this aisle? Ask them all to be seated. They may listen to you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Tell them someone will get hurt if they don't clear the aisle. Ladies and gentlemen, you must clear the center aisle and return to your seats before someone gets hurt. You'll be able to see and hear everything from your seats. Please return to them. Oh, that did it. They'll settle down now. Watch it. Here come Lois Lane and Perry White. Be careful what you say. Sure thing. I'm certainly glad you showed up, Superman. I was worried for a while. I'm glad to know someone worries about me, Miss Lane. Hello, Mr. White. Uh, Change your mind about coming down, I say. Well, uh, yes. Uh, both of you know Bruce Wayne, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you, nice Mr. Wayne. Nice to see you again. Oh, here we go again. Please. I see that Superman has decided to accept my challenge. Now, Mr. He's got nothing else. He's got nerve. A great many people, I am sure, expect me to withdraw those charges now that Superman has appeared. I do not withdraw them. If anything, I wish to make them stronger. And I wish to repeat the statement I made a few moments ago. The statement that Superman no longer possesses superhuman power. Why, he's out of his mind. That he has lost all his strength. And that I, George Latimer, will bring him to his knees on this platform before your very eyes. Like it's your mood, Superman. Go up there and show him a thing or two. Yes. Yes, I will. Will you step up to the platform, Superman? Are you sure the stuff's nowhere around? I'm checking again. He hasn't got it on him. There's nothing on the platform except a table, two chairs, and a couple of microphones. You'd better go up there, Superman. The crowd is getting impatient. Oh, yes, yes. I'm going. Well, this is it. <laughs> Riding down the aisle with his red cape streaming behind him, Superman heads for the auditorium platform, his broad shoulders squared and his lips set in a tight, determined line. On the platform, standing behind the two microphones attached to the public address system, big George Latimer waits with a knowing smile. Is Superman walking into a trap? If Latimer has the deadly kryptonite, where is it? 
We'll learn in just a moment when we return for the tense and exciting climax of this episode. So keep listening. Now, cock your ears, grab a pencil, and get a load of this. All about the handsome keychain Kellogg's Pep is offering to send you. And 12 lucky pieces to jingle all along that chain. Just wait till you see yourself with this man-sized keychain hanging from your belt and curving down into the side pocket of your trousers. It's a bright silvery chain with good strong links, and it's over 17 inches long. One end fastens to your belt, and at the pocket end, there's a special ring to hang your scout knife or watch. And now, about those lucky pieces, you can hang one right after another all along your keychain. Silvery, small-scale models of a skull and crossbones, a football, a locomotive, binoculars, 12 lucky pieces in all to twirl on your chain. Yes, sir. Here's an offer that is exciting. A handsome keychain and 12 lucky pieces. Uh, here's all you do to get in on it. To get your keychain, send in a box stop from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep, and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime, plus a pep box top for your keychain. And for each of the lucky pieces you order, you send one pep box top and only one dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. Say you start by sending for just the football or the locomotive. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box stop and one dime. Print your name and address clearly. And for your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. Ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And tomorrow we'll announce Pep's special offer to girls, so ask them all to tune in. Now back to the adventures of Superman. Before an audience of more than 2,000 tents and eager citizens of Metropolis, Superman has accepted the challenge of the ex-political boss, Big George Latimer, to appear on the platform of the Metropolis Auditorium and deny charges hurled at him by the man he once sent to prison. The danger to Superman, of course, lies in the fact that Latimer has the only remaining piece of kryptonite, the strange metallic substance that robs the man of steel of all his strength. However, after scanning everything on the platform with his X-ray vision and seeing no evidence of the kryptonite, Superman decided to take a chance. We find him now approaching the platform steps as Lois Lane, Perry White, and Bruce Wayne, also known as Batman, stand in the center aisle watching him. There is not a sound in the huge auditorium. The audience to a man is on its feet. Suddenly, Lois's whispered voice breaks the silence. I've got a funny feeling. Something is wrong. Oh, always having funny feelings. This time, she's not far wrong, Mr. White. You mean... Something is going to happen. I hope not. Now, look, what's this all about? If you know anything, I know plenty, but I can't tell you now. There he goes up the steps. Keep your eye on him. The next 30 seconds will tell the story. Mounting the platform steps, Superman looks back at Lois White and Batman and forces a smile. And in the moment that his sharp eyes are turned away from Latimer, the politician reaches out and flips a lever on one of the microphone stands. Immediately, a tiny panel slides back on one side of the microphone, exposing the jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite hidden in it. Has Latimer tricked Superman by hiding the kryptonite in a false microphone? A microphone made of lead through which Superman's X-ray vision could not penetrate? This is the big moment, fellows and girls. So be sure to hear tomorrow's exciting episode to learn whether Superman does lose his strength and power before an audience of 2,000 people. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman.
day, Superman's friends, Batman and Robin, determined to save the Man of Steel from complete destruction, plan a daring scheme to defeat the evil Latimer at his own game. Calling all girls, calling all girls... To hear a super special offer. It's something you want, and now it's something you can get thanks to that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. It's a bright, sparkling, silvery charm bracelet and 12 fascinating charms. The kind of charm bracelet with strong but delicate-looking links. A dazzler of a bracelet that fastens round your wrist with a good-looking catch. The very thing to jingle your charms on. And what charms? Why, the 12 silvery charms that Pep offers you as part of this great offer. Sure, you get your choice of any or all of the 12. For instance, choose the Scotty Dog, the Piano, the Clock, Trolley Car, or the Telephone. All 12 are actual small-scale models. That's Pep's exciting offer to girls. A beautiful charm bracelet and 12 silvery charms. Now then, to get your charm bracelet, just send in a Pep box top and 10 cents. And for each of the charms you want, you also send one Pep box top and one dime, plus the names of the charms you want, like the Scotty Dog or the Piano. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one Pep box top and one dime. And for the charm bracelet, you also send one pep box top and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send a Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send a Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now the adventures of Superman. In an attempt to regain his position as political boss of the state, a position he used to promote intolerance and racial discrimination... Big George Latimer arranged a mass meeting where he publicly accused Superman of framing evidence against him and of blackmail, daring to make these charges because he has in his possession the last remaining piece of kryptonite, the strange green glowing metallic substance which, when Superman comes within ten feet of it, robs him of all his strength and power. In yesterday's episode, as you recall, Superman was about to meet the challenge after determining via his X-ray vision that the piece of kryptonite was nowhere in evidence on the stage of the Metropolis Auditorium. But Batman, who was present in the audience, had taken the precaution of planting Robin, his young assistant, backstage. As Superman, in full view of the audience, mounted the steps to the platform, Robin saw Latimer touch a button on one of the two microphone stands in front of him. A small panel on the microphone slid back, revealing the piece of kryptonite hidden inside. Immediately, Robin sprang into action. Racing across the platform, he lowered the curtain, cutting Superman off. As an amazed murmur rippled through the audience, Batman, sensing trouble, ran down the aisle to where Superman, confused, was standing on the platform steps. Robin lowered that curtain. He must have seen something. You'd better beat it. How can I leave now? Don't ask questions. Duck out the side entrance and meet me at my place. Now hurry. Meanwhile, backstage, Robin is attempting to fight off two of Latimer's henchmen who are trying desperately to reach the rope and controlling the curtain as Latimer screams frantic orders. From the opposite side of the platform, two more of Latimer's men hurry over to join the battle. Fighting against hopeless odds, Robin is about to give up when Batman, who has come around through the stage entrance, puts in an appearance. Oh, boy, are you a sight to so rise. Come on, give me a hand with these stone no. Let's duck. But I duck, I said, come on. <laughs> When you started up the platform steps, Superman, I saw Latimer touch a button or something on one of the microphone stands. Uh-huh. A little panel on the mic slid back, and there was a funny kind of green light inside. The kryptonite. The what? Little boys should be seen and not heard. Oh, fine. How do you like that? It's all right for little boys to trade punches with four husky goons, but when it comes to a showdown... If anyone has a right to know, Robin, you have. Bringing down that curtain was the smartest thing you ever did. Well, it's nice to be smart, Superman, but it's nicer to know why you're smart. You're absolutely right. Well, here it is in a nutshell. As you know, I came from another planet, a planet called Krypton, which exploded many years ago. The fragments of the planet have evidently been suspended in space. But recently, it was back in 1944, I believe, one of the fragments came to Earth as a meteor. It was picked up and taken to the Metropolis Museum. You remember that, Robin? It was in the papers. Oh, I think so. Well, at any rate, the museum people called the stuff kryptonite. It glowed with a strange greenish light, and I soon discovered to my horror that when I got within ten feet of it, I lost all my strength. Cheapers. To make a long story short, the kryptonite was stolen from the museum by a woman known as the Black Widow. It was cut into four pieces and sold to four of my enemies. Over a period of time, I located three of the pieces, and they were destroyed, but I could never find the fourth. Uh Uh-oh. I'm beginning to see the light. 
Latimer has the fourth piece. He got it from a man who died in state prison, a character called the Laffer. And he had it hidden in that phony microphone. Right. Evidently, the microphone was made of lead, the one substance my X-ray vision can't penetrate. That's why I didn't spot it anywhere on the platform. So you see what ringing down that curtain meant? I see now. If you'd gotten close enough to the microphone, Latimer would have been able to do what he said he would in front of that whole audience. Prove to them that you'd lost your strength and power. Exactly. Oh, boy. Gives me goose pimples just thinking about it. Say, did you know about this all along, Batman? Yes, Robin. Well, then why didn't we make a grab for the kryptonite in the microphone instead of ducking out tonight? In the first place, I didn't know it was in the microphone. Well, you didn't give me a chance to tell you. You said duck and we ducked. And in the second place, they were pulling the curtain up. And I didn't like the idea of staging a free-for-all in front of 2,000 people. Bashful? Since when? No, not bashful, but that audience had been listening to Latimer's hot air for a long time and was beginning to sink in. If the curtain went up and they saw us battling on the stage, they'd be pretty well convinced he had a case. Particularly with Superman having taken a powder. Yes, I've been thinking about that. About what? Someone in the audience must have seen me leave through the side door of the auditorium. Maybe they all did. I don't know. But I can just picture what's going on there now. Latimer's probably having a field day. Mm, Sure, telling them you ran out that you were afraid to face the music. Hey, wait a minute. Bright idea? I don't know. Nobody's thought of it, so maybe it's not so bright. Let's have it. Well, look, instead of sitting here beating our brains out, why don't we go back to the auditorium, and since we know where the kryptonite is, grab it. Sorry, Robin. Not so bright. Why not? Number one, Latimer's nobody's fool. You can bet your bottom dollar it's not in the phony mic anymore. Number two would be up against the same problem, staging a battle in front of an audience. Oh, uh, there wouldn't be any battle, not with Super Robin, around... shame. Huh? I'm not much help, Robin, with kryptonite anywhere in the vicinity. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, not bright at all. Well, where do we go from here? We've got to get that piece of kryptonite. How? There's only one possible way. Beard the line in his den and take it away from him. Meaning? It's a sense that Latimer keeps the stuff close by him. Probably wears it around his neck. That's not far wrong. Okay, the next move is to burst into his house and grab it. Oh, just like that, huh? It won't be easy, but what else can we do? As a matter of fact, we've got to work fast. The morning papers are going to be full of the shindig at the auditorium. That's just the trouble. If it's possible, we should get the kryptonite before morning. So Superman can step out and really give Latimer a run for his money. The longer we wait, the more Latimer's going to be able to convince the public he's on the level. Okay, let's go. Now, wait a minute. Keep your shirt on. What time is it? Uh, I've got 8.30. Oh, no, it's later than that. Of course, it's after 10. My watch must have stopped. Mine's being repaired. Uh, Check the clock in the hall, Robin. Uh, No, wait. That's been running slow. Uh, Switch the radio on. Right. (sighs) I wish I could be of more help to you in this mess, Batman. Forget it. You've helped us out of tight jams. Clark, now it's our turn. You the 1015 edition of the news. 1015, Robin, Metropolis. set your watch. Before okay, audience, turn it off. No, no, hold it. People packed into the Metropolis Auditorium. George Latimer, former state political leader, seemingly made good his daring statement that Superman had not only framed the evidence that sent him to prison, Uh-oh. but also attempted to blackmail him. Here it comes. Speaking from the platform, Latimer challenged Superman to appear and deny the charges. To the delight of the vast crowd, the fabulous Man of Steel suddenly appeared in the center aisle, attired in his familiar red cape and blue costume. Accepting Latimer's invitation, he started toward the platform. However, just as he reached the steps, the curtain was rung down and some confusion resulted. Oh, get that when it rose again, Superman had disappeared, and Latimer took the opportunity to drive home the fact that the Man of Steel was afraid to face him. Turn it off, Robin. The right. consensus of opinion seemed to be that... I'm sure is that Superman should be drawn and quartered. Don't let it get you down. We'll have that piece of kryptonite before morning, or my name is Mud. Mm, Pleased to meet you, Mr. Mud. Don't be funny, Halfpint. Get into your costume and tell Alfred to roll the Batmobile out of the garage. We're going to pay Mr. Big George Latimer a visit. A visit he won't forget. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode with Batman and Robin attempting to steal the deadly piece of kryptonite from under George Latimer's nose. So keep listening. For every girl listening today and every one of her friends, Kellogg's Pep the Sunshine Cereal has a special and amazing offer. So lend your pretty ears and learn how you can get, easy as anything, a bright, sparkling, silvery charm bracelet. And to dangle deliciously from that bracelet, 12 of the slickest charms you've ever seen. Here's a Link bracelet, a beautifully made, smooth-looking bracelet of gleaming silvery metal. 
Not too heavy, not too delicate. You just adjust it to fit your own wrist. And just wait till you see the collection of 12 charms Pep offers you to hang from your bracelet. 12 silvery keen looking charms, not flat pieces of metal, but each an actual small scale model. A tiny edition of the real thing. For instance, you can get a Scotty dog, a football, a telephone, a clock, and any or all of the 12. That's an offer with a capital O and some R's thrown in. A beautiful charm bracelet and 12 charms to jingle or jangle on your bracelet. Now then, here's all you do to get in on Pep's colossal offer. To get your charm bracelet, just send in a Pep box stop and 10 cents. That's one dime and a box stop from Kellogg's Pep for the bracelet. And for each of the charms you order, you also send a dime and a Pep box stop, plus the names of the charms you want. So you start by sending for just the Scotty Dog or the football. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box stop and one dime. And for the bracelet, you also send a pep box stop and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. The address again is Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. An hour has gone by. In the dark stillness of the night, Batman and Robin, dressed now in their familiar costumes with their faces masked, have climbed to the roof of the front porch of George Latimer's big stone house. And silently raising one of the windows of his bedroom, have slipped inside. We find them now, hidden under the bed, waiting for Latimer to return from the meeting at the auditorium. What time is it, Robin? Uh, 11.30. He should be showing up soon. The sooner the better. This isn't my idea of comfort. Would you like me to reach up and get you a pillow? Mm, not a bad idea. A mattress and a couple of blankets, too, while you're at it. This floor is hard on my old and weary bones. The only old and weary bones you have are in your head. Oh, nice talk. And who saved Superman at the auditorium? Oh, I suppose I'll never hear the end of that. You heard the end of it right now. I can't take any credit because I didn't know what I was doing. All I had was a hunch that something was wrong. One of the best hunches you've ever had, boy. Keep having them like that, you'll save us a lot of trouble. Mm, I'll try. The only trouble oh, is... wait, wait, hold it. What is it? I heard the front door open and close. Oh, you've got cat's ears. I didn't hear a thing. Be quiet. I'm going up to sleep, Joe. I'm tired. Is that Latimer? I imagine so. Let Willie cover the front door and gust the back door. You stay inside and keep your eyes open. Okay, boss. Good night, Joe. Good night, Here he comes up the stairs, Robin. Don't move a muscle. Crouched under the bed, Batman and Robin literally hold their breaths as Latimer's heavy footsteps on the stairway come closer and closer. This is the big moment. Will they get the piece of kryptonite? And if they do... How can they escape with the house guarded front and rear by armed gunmen? Fellows and girls, tomorrow's episode in this exciting story brings you a thrill a minute. So don't miss it. Be sure to tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Superman's friends, Batman and Robin, in their efforts to protect the Man of Steel against the dire force of his one unconquerable enemy, Kryptonite, 
meet up with a strange and startling turn of events. Strictly for the girls, here's the big exciting offer from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Yes, today Pep comes through with a whopper of an offer for girls only. It's a bright, silvery, beautiful charm bracelet. A charm bracelet plus 12 fascinating charms to dangle from it. Here's a bracelet that looks delicate on your wrist, but those silvery links are actually strong. The catch holds firm. Just the kind of bracelet to show off Pep's collection of 12 charms specially designed. And you can choose any or all of these 12 charms. For instance, there's a tiny clock, a piano, a telephone, a trolley car, and every one of these 12 charms are actually small-scale models of the real thing. Just try to match this terrific offer. A beautiful charm bracelet and 12 silvery charms. Now then, here's how you get your charm bracelet. Just send in a pep box top and ten cents. It's that easy. And for each of the charms you want, you also send one pep box top and one dime, plus the names of the charms you want, like the clock or the piano. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box top and one dime. And for the charm bracelet, you also send one pep box top and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R... Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now the adventures of Superman. A small green glowing fragment of kryptonite, the strange metallic substance torn from the planet Krypton when it exploded in space, now seems likely to put an end to Superman's brilliant career. As you know, due to some mysterious chemical reaction, Superman loses all his strength and superhuman power when he comes within ten feet of the kryptonite. And the last remaining piece is in the hands of Big George Latimer, the ex-political boss exposed by Superman and sent to prison for a year. Unable to destroy the kryptonite himself, the Man of Steel has enlisted the aid of his famous friends, Batman and Robin. As we continue now... Batman and Robin are hidden under the bed in George Latimer's room. They have heard the front door open and close. They have heard Latimer's voice. Now they can hear his heavy steps ascending the stairs. Batman places his hand on Robin's tense arm. Here he comes up the stairs. Don't move a muscle. Until when? Until he closes the door. Then move fast. Supposing he doesn't close the door. We'll have to move anyway. Got men all over the house. Only three so far as we know. Watch it now. He's up here in the hallway. Oh, why can't he walk faster? This suspense is killing me. Patience, my friend. Patience, my foot. I like action. He's hiding under the... Under... What's the matter? I'm going to sneeze. Robin, no. I can't help it. Put your hand over your mouth. <laughs> Who's that? Who's in my room? No! Oh, he's not locked us in. Now we're in trouble. I can keep myself. It's too late now. Come on. We have to get out of here before those goons of theirs start shooting up the place. Come on, follow me. Where to now? One of the front windows. We can lay low on the porch roof till this blows over. I certainly messed things up, didn't I? You couldn't help it. This window's stuck. Try the other one. Okay. Go ahead. Climb out, but keep low. Good thing there's no moon tonight. You all right? Yeah. Come on. Right. Where are you? Over here. Better close that window again. Yes, I'm going to. Oh, just in time. Here they come. Well, the chances are they'll turn the light on in the room. We better go up a little ways. Right. Go ahead. On your stomach. Nothing like curling over a slate roof to keep your figure. We should do more of it. If you did less sneezing, we'd do less crawling. (laughs) All right. This is far enough. Now what? Now we just wait it out. Here goes the light in the room. Keep down. Don't move. I ain't nobody in here, boss. Who's that? Joe, I guess. I heard someone. Could have been mice, boss. He's running around. Good thing he didn't call us rats. Look under the bed. Yeah, take a good look, Joe. Cut the comedy, Robin. No, nothing. I'm sure I heard something. You sounded like a man coughing or sneezing. Oh, thanks, Mr. Latimer. What are you muttering about? He called me a man. 
I think I'll write a book from boy to man in one sneeze. Just be sure it isn't from boy to corpse in one shot. Well, what a cheerful thought. Hey, look out on the roof, Joe. The porch roof. Okay. Cut now, Robert. Now, relax. He can't see anything out here. It's too dark. Ever hear of flashlights? Watch it. The window's going up. Can't see nothing out here, boss. Too dark. <sighs> what did I tell you? Wait a minute. I've got a flashlight. What did I tell you? Now we're in trouble. Well, then let's get out of it. We can't move now, though, Harris. Not to gamble. Hey, Joe. Thanks, boys. Robin, yeah. He's bound to pick us up with the beam of that flashlight. It isn't even a gamble. The guards are stacked. Start moving. Which way? Down towards the edge of the roof. There's a rose trellis. The one we climbed to get up here. Thorns again. You can pick thorns out. Bullets are a little more difficult. Now go ahead, crawl. Joe, I hear something. Turn the light over there. He's got us. Quick, scramble down. There they are. Stop, we'll shoot. Ow. What's the matter? I cut my hand on the slate. Stop, I said. Down the trellis, Robin, fast. Good thing he never learned how to shoot. Oh, talk, climb down. Just hurry. Stop him. Watch out below, Robin. He's yelling for the other two. Well, if they shoot like dead-eyed Joe, I'm not worried. Don't be so smart. Bad shots are sometimes lucky. You're down far enough to drop, aren't you? I think so. Well, go ahead. Are you all right? Yeah, it's about six feet. You can make it. Stand back. Here I come. That was a long six feet. Well, it stretched after I dropped. Someone's coming. Duck behind that bush. Goodbye, baby. He's out, isn't he? Yeah, like a light. Do we take his gun? No, I don't like guns. I know, but sometimes they come in handy. We won't need it. Quiet, come on. Where to? The rear of the house. Keep close to the bushes. Any sign of them, Joe? Joe! Think we ought to answer him? Yes. With a sneeze. No, no fear. Watch it turning the corner of the house. I don't want to bump into any of them. Well, what do we want to do? Get back in. Back in where? The house. What do you think? Oh, boy, you sure are a glutton for punishment. We came here to get the kryptonite. We haven't got it yet. We're going back to get it. Simple enough. Yeah, like ABC. Come on. All right. Hold up. That door looks like the entrance to the basement. It isn't locked. We're in luck. Huh, it isn't. And I was right. There's a stairway leading down to the basement. Follow me, but watch your step. And close the door behind you. Right. Oh, sure is dark down here. Like the inside of a motorman's glove. The darker, the better. Yeah, sure, if you got eyes like Superman. Watch it now. Don't bump into anything. What's that? There it is again. What is it, Batman? I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't like it. Huddled in the pitch darkness of the basement, Batman and Robin hear a strange, spine-chilling sound like nothing they have ever heard before. What is it? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so keep listening. And now, fellas, you can string along if you like. But coming up are details of the exciting offer to girls only. Strictly for you girls, that's the silvery sparkling charm bracelet plus 12 silvery charms. Offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Yes, a beautifully made link bracelet, adjustable to fit your wrist, made of silvery, delicately designed metal, and just right to dangle Pep's wonderful collection of charms. And these are not just flat pieces of metal. They're actually small-scale models, all keen-looking and silvery. Small editions of a telephone for 
instance, a Scotty dog, a trolley car, a football, a clock. And you can get any or all of the 12. Just wait till you see them dangling from your wrist. Listen to them tinkle and jingle as you move. Wait till your friends get a look at them. You'll be a real sensation with your beautiful charm bracelet and 12 silvery charms flashing and dangling on your bracelet. And here's all you do to get in on this terrific pep offer. For your charm bracelet, just send in a pep box top and ten cents. That's one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pep for the bracelet. And for each of the charms you order, you also send a dime and one pep box top, plus the names of the charms you want. So you start by sending for just the Scotty Dog or the trolley car. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box stop and one dime. And for the bracelet, you also send a pep box stop and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And tell all the boys you know to listen for Pep's offer tomorrow. It's for men only, and it's mighty swell. Now back to the adventures of Superman. Attempting to re-enter Big George Latimer's house in another effort to lay their hands on the precious piece of kryptonite, Batman and Robin found themselves in the black darkness of the basement. Suddenly, and without warning, they heard what seemed to resemble a low, throaty growl. What is it, Batman? I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't like it. Where is it coming from? Somewhere in this basement. It sounds to me like it's getting closer. Yes, it is. I don't like things that I can't see. Neither do I. And it'll be on top of us in a minute. Wait. I'm going to strike a match. Get ready to move fast if we have to. Move where? How? I don't know. Just move. Oh, hurry up with that match. Here goes. But look. Great Scott. In the flickering yellow light of the flaming match held high over Batman's head, a strange sight meets their eyes. For a moment, both Batman and Robin are transfixed, motionless and soundless. What have they seen? Do you know? Have you any idea? Well, you can find out whether you're right by remembering to listen to tomorrow's exciting episode of this Superman-Batman story. There's a startling surprise in tomorrow's episode, so don't miss it. Yes, be sure to tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman's friends are confronted with the probability that they may never see him again. Afraid that the Man of Steel is the helpless prisoner of George Latimer, evil possessor of his one unconquerable enemy, Kryptonite. Now, lend your ears, 
borrow a pencil, and get in on this out-and-out terrific offer from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Kellogg's Pep offers you fellows a big silvery keychain, a real man-sized keychain over 17 inches long, the kind of keychain that's heavy enough to hold your pocket knife or watch. The kind of keychain your friends would give their right eye to own. And that's not all. To jingle on that handsome keychain, Pep offers you 12 lucky pieces, silvery small-scale models of a skull and crossbones, a piano, a Scotty dog, a clock, a locomotive, 12 lucky pieces in all. Not just flat pieces of metal, but actual small-scale models that make a hit from every angle. That's Pep's exciting offer, a handsome keychain and 12 lucky pieces. And here's all you do to get your keychain. Just send in a Pep box stop and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a Pep box stop. And for each of the lucky pieces you want, you send one Pep box stop and only one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want, like the skull and crossbones or the piano. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send one pep box stop plus one dime. Print your name and address clearly, and for both your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now, the adventures of Superman. In a valiant effort to retrieve a jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite, the one substance on Earth which robs Superman of his superhuman strength and power, Batman and Robin, the famous masked defenders of decency, visited the palatial fieldstone mansion of Big George Latimer. Trapped in Latimer's bedroom when Robin sneezed, the agile pair managed to escape through a window, over a porch roof, and down a rose trellis, knocking out one of Latimer's three gun-toting henchmen en route. Determined to make another try for the kryptonite, they re-entered the house through the basement. Cloaked in pitch darkness, they made their way carefully across the concrete floor, only to stop short as a weird, spine-chilling sound came to them out of the black. <laughs> Suffering catfish, what's that? I don't know, Robin. But whatever it is, I don't like it. <laughs> it's coming closer. What'll we do? I'd better light a match. You'd better do something. I don't like things I can't see. Neither do I. <laughs> Oh, Batman, hurry. Here goes. Sheepers, look. Great Scott. It's a dog, isn't it? Yes, but I've never seen an uglier one in my life. A bigger one. Uh, Hiya, fella. Be careful, Robin. His tail's as stiff as a ramrod. He's mean. A uh, uh, nice doggy, nice doggy. Uh-uh, not so nice doggy. Robin, back away slowly. He's getting ready to spring. Oh, if we only had a piece of meat or a pound of hamburger. He looks like it's settled for one of our hands. Or a choice morsel of throat. Oh, gosh. What's the matter? Match it. Burn my finger. Quick, light another. If he leaves now, we're... Robin! Robin! Get him out! Get him out! Get him out! Handicapped by impenetrable darkness and battling against a vicious crossbred master with tusk-like fangs, Batman and Robin face probably the greatest single danger of their lives. But meanwhile, concerned about his friends, Superman has returned to the Latimer Mansion. We find him hovering in curious flight high above the gabled roof, making use of his X-ray vision to determine whether Batman and Robin are still there. Suddenly, he stiffens in midair. Great Scott, they're in the basement, fighting with a dog. Down, down! This must be the basement door. Stand back, Batman. Let me at him. Superman! All right, Red Tin Tin. Fight with me for a while. All right, take it easy. Need any help? No, I don't want to hurt him. Just quiet him down. You two better get out of here. All right, gnawing on my arm won't help you, Rover. We haven't got the kryptonite yet. You won't get it now. Better get out before Latimer and his boys show up. I'll meet you at your house. Are you sure it's all right? Sure, go ahead. Come on, Robin. On the double. Now. Ten o'clock. Almost an hour since we left Superman at Latimer's place. Stop worrying about him, will you? He can take care of himself. How's your wrist? Okay. Not with that kryptonite around, he can't. Look, Worry Wart, if you're going to bite your nails down to your elbow, we better go back there and take a look around. Well, that suits me fine. I didn't want to leave in the first place. I told you I so. I know, but Superman was right. With the dog snarling all over the place, Latimer and his goons were bound to show up. Well, that's what worries me. I think they did show no, up. don't and... say it. Let's go back there and find out. Come on. <laughs> Oh, 
Everything looks peaceful. Too peaceful. It's only half past ten. Pretty early for Latimer and company to be asleep. Well, maybe Superman rocked them to sleep. A half hour ago, you were thinking something else. Come on. Let's go around to the back. Why the back? There's a balcony there. Maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Check on Superman and grab the kryptonite. Here we go again. Break out your rope. Oh, I knew that was coming. It's all set. Okay, here we are. Loop one of the balcony posts up there, and we'll make like monkeys. Yeah, no sooner said than done, I hope. Good bullseye. Go ahead, you first. Right. There they are. Come on, come on. Uh oh, we've got company. Lots of company. Make them welcome, Robin. Come on in, boys, and get a sure pile right in the way. Oh, yes. oh, oh, my God. Oh, nice going, Batman. Oh, your nose is showing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Robin, get under arrest. Break it up. Oh, Sergeant Healy. Uh, Robin, Robin, the fight's over. Well, well, blow me down. We've been battling the police. I'll say you have. I'll listen. Sorry, Sergeant. We couldn't see who you were in the dark. Well, I'm sure glad you're here. You see, we... Save it, Batman. Put out your hands. You too, Robin. What? what? Hey, what's the idea of the handcuffs? You're under arrest. What? Under arrest? That's right. Mr. Latimer tipped us off that you might try to break into his house. Huh? Inspector Henderson couldn't believe it, but he sent me out here when Latimer insisted he was in danger. Looks like he was right, too. I'm along now. We're going down to headquarters. Oh, but We've well, got to find a Superman first, Sergeant. He may be trapped in Latimer's house. Superman trapped? Are you kidding? No, no. You see, it's Save like it this. for the inspector. Come on. All right, now give it to me straight. What's the story? Here it is in a nutshell, Inspector. We did break into Latimer's house early tonight. Yeah? Why? To get a piece of kryptonite Latimer has. A piece of what? Kryptonite. You remember some years ago, a meteor landed in the cornfield just outside Metropolis? Yeah? Well, what about it? It was a fragment of the planet Krypton. And in the Earth's atmosphere, when Superman was exposed to it, he lost his strength. That's right. I remember reading about it in the papers. Well, Latimer's got the last remaining piece of the stuff. And he's trying to use it to get Superman to knuckle under. Yeah? We were just trying to help Superman out by grabbing it. On account of he couldn't do it himself, because when he gets close to the stuff, he's weak as a kitten. Now, wait a minute. So you broke in, huh? Then what? We hid under Latimer's bed, waiting for him. Yeah. But Robin sneezed and the jig was up. Uh-uh. We got out through the window with Latimer's goons shooting at us. We ducked around the side of the house and slipped into the basement. Then we ran into trouble. Yeah? What kind of trouble? A dog. An ugly, mean-tempered mongrel. He had Robin down on the floor and was angling for his throat when suddenly Superman showed up. Yes, and thank heavens he did. He got the dog off, Robin. And then he told us to go back to my house where he'd meet us. Yeah. That was about nine o'clock. At ten, we began to get a little nervous. We went out to Latimer's to check. That's when Healy grabbed us. We think Superman's in trouble, and we think Latimer is responsible. Well, uh, what do you suggest? That we get out to Latimer's place as soon as possible and search it from the basement to the attic. Okay, let's go. We'll be back in a moment to find out what Batman, Robin, and Inspector Henderson discover at Big George Latimer's house. So keep listening. Now, here's more about the super terrific offer to you fellows. All about the handsome keychain Kellogg's Pep is offering to send you. And 12 lucky pieces to jingle all along that chain. Just wait till you see yourself with this man-sized keychain hanging from your belt and curving down into the side pocket of your trousers. It's a bright silvery chain with good strong links, and it's over 17 inches long. One end fastens to your belt, and at the pocket end, there's a special ring to hang your scout knife or watch. And now, about those lucky pieces, you can hang one right after another all along your keychain. Jane, silvery small scale models, actual small editions of a skull and crossbones, a football, a locomotive, binoculars, a trolley car, 12 lucky pieces in all to twirl on your chain. Yes, sir. Here's an offer that is exciting a handsome keychain and 12 lucky pieces. Now, here's all you do to get in on it. To get your keychain, just send in a box stop from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep, and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime, plus a pep box top for your keychain. And for each of the lucky pieces you order, you send one pep box top and only one dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. Say you start by sending for just the football or the locomotive. 
When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box stop and one dime. Print your name and address clearly, and for your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. You ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And get your order in soon, because supplies on hand are limited. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Arriving at Big George Latimer's stone mansion, Batman, Robin, Inspector Henderson, and two uniformed policemen were admitted to an oak-paneled study, where shortly Latimer himself, attired in pajamas and a silk dressing robe, joined them. Briefly, Inspector Henderson told him what they were after. A puzzled expression flitted across Latimer's bland face. I'm sorry, Inspector, but I don't know what you're talking about. I have no kryptonite, and I haven't seen Superman. That's a lie. Easy, easy, Robin. It is a lie, and he knows it. Shouldn't that little boy be in bed? No, no, just a minute. I take it then, Mr. Latimer, that you have no objections to our searching the house? Why, uh, why no, none at all. Good. McGuire, you take the top floor. Yes, sir. Reed, you take this floor. Uh, We'll check the basement. Is the dog still down there? Dog? What dog? Are you kidding? I've never owned a dog. I was Skip a... Skip it. Skip it, Robin. You coming with us, Inspector? Yep. Take us to the basement, Mr. Latimer. Well, gentlemen, I hope now you're satisfied. I've searched my house thoroughly and have found no evidence of what you call kryptonite, a dog, or Superman. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yes, you can tell us the truth. Fix nay, Robin. But he's lying in his teeth. I suggest you take the boy home and put him to bed. He's overtired. For two cents, For two cents, you'll get those handcuffs slapped back on, Robin. Oh, okay. I know when I'm late. Evidently, you were wrong somewhere along the line, Batman. Superman isn't here. That's what worries me. We're too late. Too late for what? Too late to save him. Robin's right. Mr. Latimer is lying. Somehow he managed to get Superman and the kryptonite together. And I'm afraid that none of us will ever see Superman again. Gravely, Batman makes a statement that hits the assembled company like a bombshell. All but big George Latimer, who smiles faintly behind the expressionless mask of his face. Is Batman right? Has the ruthless, bigoted political boss somehow managed to put an end to Superman's career? Or is there some other reason for Superman's mysterious disappearance? Whichever it is, gang, it spells excitement. So don't miss tomorrow's episode to learn what happened to Superman. Follow Batman and Robin as they continue the adventures of Superman. Tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Superman's friends, Batman and Robin, race against time as they determinedly start their search for him, realizing that the deadly kryptonite may rob the Man of Steel of his strength, but temporarily cannot finish him. All right, fellas, here it is. Here's what's what on that super special offer from Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. What a big silvery keychain to hook into your pocket or belt 
I mean a man-sized keychain over 17 inches long and all-out good-looking. And wait, that's not all. To jingle on that keychain, Pep also offers you 12 lucky pieces. Silvery small-scale models of a skull and crossbones, for instance. A football, a Scotty dog, a locomotive, binoculars, a trolley car. 12 lucky pieces in all. Each an actual small-scale model that's fun to jingle around. Not just a flat piece of metal, but a small edition of the real thing. That's Pep's exciting offer. A handsome keychain and 12... 12 lucky pieces to twirl and jingle on your chain. Now then, all you do to get your keychain is send in a pep box stop and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a pep box stop. And for each of the lucky pieces you want, you send one pep box top and only one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want, like the skull and crossbones or the football. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send one pep box top plus one dime. Print your name and address clearly, and to get your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now, the adventures of Superman. In a desperate attempt to retrieve a piece of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance which has the power to rob Superman of all his strength, Batman and Robin entered the house of Big George Latimer, where they were attacked by the politician's huge dog. Superman arrived in time to save his friends' lives and arranged to meet them at their home in a few minutes. But when several hours passed and he failed to appear, Batman and Robin returned to Latimer's house with Inspector Henderson to search for him. However, neither Superman nor the dog nor the strange green glowing kryptonite could be found. All of which led Batman to make a startling statement. I'm afraid none of us will ever see Superman again. As we continue now in the oak-paneled study of Latimer's mansion, the burly, red-faced political leader, attired in a silk dressing gown, turns to Batman, Robin, and Police Inspector Henderson. Perhaps you'd like to tear up the floor to search for Superman. I may have him buried under it, you know. Now, wait a minute. Or maybe I burned him in the furnace. Why don't you look in there for his bones? Listen, Mr. Wise Guy. No, you listen, all of you. This joke has gone far enough. Waking me up in the middle of the night and accusing me of doing something to Superman. To Superman, mind you. Victor Henderson, have you lost your mind? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Latimer. I haven't accused anybody of anything, yet. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. Now, Batman and Robin say a dog attacked them in the basement of this house a couple of hours ago. Superman showed up and saved them. Ridiculous. Yep. I've never had a dog. What? That's not Why, true. You Hold it, both of you. Hold it. What about the gunman, Mr. Latimer? There were three. We knocked one out. You just searched my house, Inspector. Did you see any gunman? Well, no. They were here. We saw three of them. There may have been more. Rubbish. They must have left after Robin and I did. And maybe took Superman with them. Against his will? Superman? Yes, the kryptonite That should convince you these fellows are lying, Inspector. Imagine anyone taking Superman away against his will. It could be done if the kryptonite was used on him, and you know it. The what? Don't try to pull that innocent line on us. You know very well... Just a moment, Batman. Let me handle this. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Latimer... Kryptonite is a metal or mineral which fell to Earth several years ago as a meteor. For some unknown reason, Superman loses all his strength and power when he comes within ten feet of it. Possible. I don't believe it. Well, I admit it does sound screwy, but Batman and... Piece Robert... of metal makes Superman lose all his strength? That's a hot one. You're a good actor, Latimer, but you can't get away with it. Robin and I know you had the kryptonite. I had it. Yes, you. You got it from the laugher when he died in prison. Believe me, Inspector, I've never heard anything so fantastic in my life. These two are crazy. No way. I've heard enough. Take them away before I lose my temper, Inspector. I'm going back to bed. Good night. Oh, no, you don't, Latimer. Take your hands off me. That man. You're not leaving till you tell us what you did with Superman. That That man. I bet you're not. Where is he? Take your hands off me, I said. Let him go, Batman. He knows where Superman is. Let him go, I said, or you'll get in trouble with me. This is an outrage. In case you've forgotten, I have some influence in this city. I'll speak to the mayor about this in the morning. I'm sorry, Mr. Latimer, but, well, a serious charge has been made against you, and, well, it's my duty to invest. Your duty is to use the brains you are blessed with, Inspector. Don't you see why these fellows made this ridiculous charge against me? Well, they say... It. Never mind what they say. They're friends of Superman. They're trying to save what's left of his reputation by discrediting me. Now, wait a Superman second Superman didn't you... dare face man public platform and deny that he's a blackmailer, did he? And that he framed the evidence and sent me to prison? Did he? That was because you had the kryptonite. He couldn't come near you. Ridiculous. He didn't dare face me because he knew I was telling the truth. So he sent you two to threaten me and spread this fairy tale about my having this... this kryptonite, or whatever you call it. 
And you fell for it, Inspector. I didn't fall for anything. I'm just investigating. Just investigating. Rats. Just a minute, Latimer. Now listen. I won't listen to another word from either of you. This door will let you out to the street. Good night, gentlemen. Unless you care to arrest me, Inspector. No, 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 no. Of course not. I'm sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Latimer. Come on, Batman. Out to my car. You too, Robin. But, Inspector, We've you... got to make him talk. Come on, I said. You've got to listen, Inspector. Latimer knows... I'm all through listening. You and Robin got me in a jam. George Latimer pushes a lot of weight in this town, and he can make it hot for me with the mayor and the commissioner. But you're forgetting Superman. Latimer knows what happened to him and where he is. I don't believe anything happened to Superman. Something must have. He was supposed to come directly to our house from Latimer's. That was hours ago, and he didn't show up. So what? He might be any place. Up in the sky. He isn't. I'm sure of it. And so am I. Ah, you were sure he was in trouble at Latimer's place, too. So you drag me out there, and we don't find Superman or the kryptonite or a dog or any gunman. Yeah, a fine monkey you made out of me. Just a minute, Inspector. Ah, please. Skip it. Back to headquarters, Frank. Yes, sir. Oh, wait, Inspector. Oh, it's no use, Robin. Here in, we're on our own. Oh, what's the matter with Henderson? If he'd arrest Latimer and put the blocks to him, maybe he'd talk. I doubt it. Anyhow, how can he arrest him? We can't prove that Latimer did anything to Superman. I'm sure he did. Well, so am I, but... Say, wait a minute. We've forgotten something. What's that? We've been away from our house for a long time. Maybe, just maybe, Superman showed up while we were gone. Well, I hope you're right, but I doubt it. Did Superman show up while we were gone tonight, Alfred? Superman, sir? Why, no, sir. I didn't think so. Were you expecting him, sir? Yes, but uh, never mind, Alfred, thanks. You're welcome, sir. Well, that's that. Where do we go from here, Pappy? Oh, you got me, Robin. I hate to say it, but... Yeah, you, know, you said it before. I don't think we'll ever see Superman again. We've got to face it. Latimer accomplished everything he set out to. He revenged himself on Superman. And he built himself back into political power by saying Superman framed the evidence that sent him to jail. Ah, the rat. But Latimer knows that while Superman is alive, he's a constant danger to him. If Latimer ever loses the kryptonite, he's a dead pigeon. So... So you think he used the kryptonite to to get rid of Superman forever, huh? Yes, he... Say, wait, Rob. I just remembered something. What? Superman told me that while the kryptonite robs him of all his strength, it can't finish him. It can't? No. There's only one way in which he can be killed. What's that? Robin, I don't dare even breathe it. But it takes quite a while. And that means Superman is still alive wherever he is. Well, jeepers, we've got to find him then before Latimer discovers the way to finish him. Right. But how... Latimer's goons must have taken him to some hideout, and Inspector Henderson won't put the police force on the case. I know. We've got to let Latimer lead us to Superman. Latimer? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Latimer's guerrillas won't be able to finish Superman. It'll take brains to figure out how to do it. And that means Latimer himself. We'll trail him every minute of the day and night. Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Nothing. Out to the Batmobile. <laughs> Rushing from the house, Batman and Robin leap into their Batmobile and start back to Big George Latimer's mansion on Metropolis Heights. Have they figured Latimer and his plans correctly? And will they be in time? We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Here's more on how you fellas can get that good-looking keychain and the swell Lucky Pieces offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is a big time, a terrific offer. Just wait till you see what you get. This keychain isn't just any old keychain. It's a big man-sized keychain, all bright and silvery, over 17 inches long, with a clip to hook into your pocket or belt. And at the other end, a ring for your keys or watch or knife. And to jingle all along your keychain, Pep offers you 12 Lucky Pieces, 12 silvery small-scale models, including a football, a skull and crossbones, a piano, binoculars, a locomotive. And will you go for this collection? Yes, sir. Here's an offer that's strictly colossal. A handsome keychain and 12 lucky pieces. Enough to make any of your friends green with envy. And here's all you do to get in on this grand pep offer. To get your keychain, just send in a pep box top and 15 cents. That's all. A nickel and a dime plus a pep box top for your keychain. And for each of the lucky pieces you order, you send one pep box top and only one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. 
Say you start by sending for just the football or the skull and crossbones. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box top and one dime. Print your name and address clearly, and to get your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. Ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And tell all the girls you know to listen Monday for Pep's offer for girls only. And now back to the adventures of Superman. As Batman and Robin speed to Big George Latimer's mansion, a slight, round-faced, bald-headed man has stepped from a station wagon at Latimer's door and let himself into the stone mansion with a key. He is Blake, Latimer's secretary and Man Friday, and we join him now in the shade-drawn study, where the burly, red-faced politician, still in dressing gown and slippers, questions him eagerly. Well, tell me, how'd it go, Blake? So far, so good, Mr. Latimer. We got him out there all right. Fine, fine. But now what? He's Superman. If he ever breaks loose and gets his strength back, he could fight all of us. How can he break loose? You set the kryptonite near him, didn't you? Uh, just a few feet away, and I left Joe there to make sure it stays near him. But we can't keep him like that for the rest of our lives, Mr. Latimer. If anything ever happens, if somebody slips up and he gets loose... We're not going to keep him like that for the rest of our lives. We're going to get rid of him. Get rid of him? Yes. Finish him. Finish Superman? How? I've been thinking. Must be a way. I intend to find it. Right Now? Now? But the police... Inspector Henderson was here. I convinced him he was barking up the wrong tree. What about Batman and Robin? I got rid of them, too, for the time being. But I admit I'm worried about them. They saw the kryptonite here, and they'll hang on. We've got to finish Superman before they get on the trail. You wait here, Blake. I'll get some clothes on, and we leave at once. I'm going to find a way to finish Superman tonight. Set in a hard, cruel line, big George Latimer hurries from the room to dress, determined that tonight will mark the end of Superman. Batman did figure Latimer's plans correctly, but right now he and Robin are speeding toward the politician's stone mansion in their swift Batmobile. Will they arrive before Latimer leaves for the hideout where Superman is being held? Don't miss Monday's thrill-packed episode, fellows and girls. Be sure to tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual bro- Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman's life hangs in the balance as Batman and Robin fight a battle of wits with the Man of Steel's enemy, cunning, crooked George Latimer. Say, just wait till you girls hear about the beautiful bracelet you can get along with 12 bright silvery charms. Yes, that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. 
actually offers you a slick-looking charm bracelet with 12 fascinating charms to dangle from it. The kind of charm bracelets you've seen the high school crowd wear. A delicate-looking bracelet with strong silvery links to show off Pep's terrific collection of charms. Wait till your friends see that Scotty dog charm, for instance, jingling on your wrist. He looks so real you can almost see his tail wag, and he's actually got a cold nose. And you'll go for the little telephone charm, complete with a dial, and the tiny clock, and the piano, and you can order any or all of the twelve. Just try and match this terrific offer, the kind of bracelet and charms you've always wanted. Now then, here's how you get your bracelet. Just send in a pep box top and ten cents. And for each of the charms you'd like, you also send one pep box top and one dime, plus the names of the charms you want like the Scotty Dog or the telephone. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box top and one dime. And for the charm bracelet, you also send one pep box top and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. <laughs> Now, the adventures of Superman. Aware that Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, has secured possession of a piece of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance which robs Superman of all his strength when he comes within ten feet of it, Batman and Robin suspected that Superman, who has disappeared, had been exposed to the weakening power of the kryptonite by Latimer, and then spirited away. As we learned Friday, this is exactly what happened. And as Batman and Robin raced towards Latimer's house hoping to trail him to wherever Superman was being held prisoner. Latimer said to Blake, his secretary, There must be a way to put an end to Superman. And I'm going to find that way tonight. As we continue now, Batman with Robin beside him in their powerful bat-shaped car is speeding up a dark tree-lined street in Metropolis Heights, at the end of which, just ahead, is big George Latimer's palatial high-walled estate. Suddenly, Batman calls out, Hang on, Robin. Oh, talk about stopping on a dime. Snap up the lights quick. I'll kill the motor. Okay, what gives? Look, coming out of Latimer's driveway. Uh Uh-oh, a station wagon. Duck down low. We don't want to be seen. Check. Oh, never mind. It's turning up the side road. Can you see who's in it? I could see two men. One of them was Latimer. Uh, Looks like we got here just in time. Uh, On the nose. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get after them. Mm, Better give them a head start. I don't want them to know we're trailing them. But we'll lose them. Don't you worry. Okay, now we can go. It's about time. Turn right here. I know. There they are, up ahead. They're turning left. Huh? That's the highway. Come on, step on it. Relax, sonny boy. Relax? It's 2.30 in the morning. Latimer isn't going out to buy a sandwich. I know. He might be heading for wherever they've got Superman. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, now what? The highway. Stop at highways and stay alive. Oh. All clear. There they go. I see them. Say, what's the matter with you, Robin? You're hopping around like a flea on a hot griddle. I guess I got the jitters. I keep remembering what you said. About what? About Superman. You said he told you there was one way he could be killed. That's right, but I And you figured Latimer would try to finish him off now. Because while Superman's alive, Latimer and his dirty schemes are in danger. I also told you it takes brains to discover the one way in which Superman can be finished. Which is where Latimer comes in and why we're trailing him. I'm counting on him to lead us to Superman. Then we take over, Savvy. Yeah, I just hope Latimer is leading us to Superman. My hunch says he is. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, they're turning off into Mill Road. That's not so good. What do you mean? Mill Road winds like a snake. The moon won't help us either. Too many trees. Well, we'll have to use our lights. Oh, won't they spot us? We'll have to take that chance. Look, Robin, you handle the lights. Switch them on only for the turns, then off again. And just use the dimmers. Okay, give me the word when you want them. Right. Hang on, they're speeding up, and we're going with them. Wake up. I'm awake. I'm just thinking. What is it, Blake? Well, I'm not sure, but I think a car is following us. What? 
I don't see any car. I think it's running without lights. Without lights? In this corkscrew road? Well, every few minutes I seem to see a pair of dim lights in the rear vision mirror. They stay on a couple of seconds, then go out again. Could be fireflies. Oh, yes, I suppose so. But look, there they go again. Where? Oh, yes, I see them. Pretty far back and very dim. Can't be sure if they're car lights or not. They're gone now. Well, that's the way they've been acting, on and off, every little while. Do you suppose the police could be trailing us? Police? No. Like the Henderson almost bit Batman's head off tonight when Batman made him search my house for Superman and the kryptonite. I rubbed it into Henderson, made him feel like a fool. It won't bother me again. What about Batman and Robin? They know Superman was in your house early this evening and that you've got the kryptonite. They left with Henderson. They weren't around when we pulled out. Uh, they're clever, though. No, watch that turn the road. There are those lights behind us again. Mm hmm. Gone now. I think it's a car and it's following us. Just using lights when they have to, so we won't notice. We're going to find out. Do you want me to stop? No, keep going. Slow down a little. Okay. Now what? Keep going. I'll tell you what to do. Now, the ditch is pretty shallow here. Pull off the road and park behind those high bushes. Yes, sir. A little further in, Blake, so we won't be seen from the road. That does it. Stop and cut your engine. Now, turn off the lights. Yes, sir. Good. Sit tight now. That's a car behind us. It'll be along in a moment. I hear a car, Mr. Latimer. So do I. We should have cut our lights before we went off the road. They might have seen us. They couldn't. We're back behind that turn. They go their lights with the turn on the road. Yeah. That's why they winked on and off. They we're just using them on the curbs. That's what I Hold figured... It. Coming around the curb now. Keep low now. Let him pass. Did you notice the strange shape of that car, Blake? No, sir. I couldn't see much in the dark. Looked like the Batmobile. What's that? Batman and Robin, special car, shaped like a bat. Start the motor and get back on the road. But, Mr. Lamb... Do as I say. Yes, sir. Turn around. Head back to the highway. Pick up the river road to go out the, uh, to the old mill that way. It's longer, but we lose Batman and Robin. Time they realize we're not ahead of them and turn back. We'll be at the highway. Step in it, Blake. Give it all she's got. Yes, sir. Another hairpin curve. Likes, Robin. Coming up. Is the station wagon still in front of us? I've seen it for a couple of minutes. Road curves too much. Okay, dodge the glimpse. Check. Our trees are thinning out. You see the moon? We won't need the lights now, I don't think. Well, that's a break. We're getting a straight stretch of road for a change, too. We could be able... Hey, what the... What's up? I can't see Latimer station wagon. What? Hey, neither can I. Step on it. They must have gained on us. No, no. Well, what are you stopping for? The road's straight for at least two miles. Then it angles up that tall hill in full view, see? The moon's shining on it, but no station wagon. Oh, jeepers, they couldn't have topped that long hill in the couple of minutes they were out of sight. Well, they must have spotted our lights. Pulled off the road until we went by, then doubled back to the highway. Oh, and we fell for it, are we done? Take it easy. We're not licked yet. Wait till I turn around. We don't know where they went. Oh, well, they were headed north on this road. My hunch is they went back to the highway, figuring to pick up the next road north. That would be River Road. Now I'm going to open this wagon up. Hang on and keep your fingers crossed. Pressing the accelerator down to the floor, Batman sends his powerful car hurtling back over the twisting road in pursuit of Big George Latimer. Will he overtake him, or has the wily politician eluded him? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so keep listening. Hold everything, here's more about that slick-looking bracelet you girls can get, and the 12 bright silvery charms, all offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. How would you like a silvery little trolley car dangling from your wrist? A trolley car charm. Why, that trolley car looks so real, you can almost hear it clanging along the tracks. 
And there's a keen-looking football charm and a little cuckoo clock with a pendulum. Twelve out-and-out terrific charms and all, each one bound to make a colossal hit with your friends. Listen to them tinkle and jingle as you move. And the bracelet itself is all bright and silvery and adjustable to fit your wrist. The catch holds firm and the links are strong. Just the kind of bracelet you've always wanted to own. The kind of real costume jewelry the high school crowd loves. You'll be a real sensation with your beautiful charm bracelet and 12 silvery charms flashing and dangling on your bracelet. And here's all you do to get in on this terrific pep offer. For your bracelet, just send in a pep box top and 10 cents. That's one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pep for the bracelet. And for each of the charms you order, you also send a dime and one pep box top plus the names of the charms you want. Say you start by sending for just the trolley car or the football. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box top and one dime. And for the bracelet, you also send a pep box top and a dime. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Having doubled back to the highway in their station wagon, Blake, at the command of Big George Latimer, followed the highway for two miles and is now headed north once more on River Road, a dark, narrow thoroughfare which follows a tall bluff high above the river. I guess we gave them the slip all right, Blake. Yes, sir. And I don't mind saying I'm relieved, Mr. Latimer. (laughs) Brains can always win over brawn. I proved it with Superman. We'll be at the old mill in an hour. Good heavens. What's the matter? They're following us again. What? You mean... That man and Robin, they're just topping that hill behind us. They're running without lights again, but you can make out their bat-shaped car in the moonlight. Last at your right. What do we do now, sir? Let me think. I don't like this. Quiet. Look, Blake... Isn't Bill Anderson's farm near here? Yes, sir. About a mile or so back from the road. Why? I've got an idea. Listen now. As soon as you round that next turn by the trees, stop. I'm going to get Batman and Robin off my trail for good. Ominously, Big George Latimer directs Blake to stop the station wagon beyond a tree-hidden curve in the road and leave the car. Preparing a trap which he says will remove Batman and Robin from his trail for good. What is the trap Latimer is setting? And will Batman and Robin step into it? Superman's life may depend on the result of the next few minutes. So don't miss hearing tomorrow's exciting episode. Tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Superman lies a helpless victim of the green-glowing kryptonite, cruel and pitiless George Latimer makes final plans for the Man of Steel's complete destruction. Here it is, girls, just what you've always wanted, a charm bracelet, all a jingle with slick-looking charms. And now you can own and wear one thanks to the swell offer from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Yes, a bracelet with the kind of charms high school seniors would give a lot to own. For instance, there's a silvery little telephone with a dial that's so real-looking, you almost feel like using it to phone your best friend. And there's a little cuckoo clock. 
with a cuckoo that looks all set to pop out. And take a look at that Scotty dog and the piano and the trolley car. And one of the nice things about this swell pep offer is that you can order any or all 12 of these terrific charms. For each charm you order, just send a dime and a pep box stop, plus the names of the charms you want. Say you start by sending for just the telephone or the clock. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. And to get the bracelet itself, the bright silvery link bracelet to dangle your charms from, you also send in a pet box top and 10 cents. That's one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pet for the bracelet and a dime and a pet box top for each of the charms you order. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot that down. The address is Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And tell every boy you know to be listening tomorrow for the extra offer for men only. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Convinced that Big George Latimer, Superman's arch enemy, had exposed the Man of Steel to the power of kryptonite, a strange green glowing substance which robbed Superman of all his strength, and had then spirited him away, Batman and Robin trailed Latimer late at night. In their Batmobile, they followed a station wagon in which the politician and Blake, his secretary, drove far into the country. But Latimer became aware that he was being trailed and ordered Blake to stop in a curb of the road on a steep cliff above the river, out of sight of their pursuers. Now, as the burly, red-faced politician stands by, the slight, bald-headed Blake operates a jack which has been placed under the running board. Slowly, the station wagon lifts upward on two wheels, tilting over the edge of the road toward the river below. Listen. Just what's the idea of this, Mr. Latimer? Never mind. Hurry up. Get you back into it. Batman and Robin will be here in a moment. But what? Save your breath and lift the car. If I lift it much more, it'll go off the road and drop into the river. I'll tell you when to stop. Hurry. You can hear that car coming. Going as fast as I can. I wish you'd tell me... I told you. I'm going to get Batman and Robin off my trail. Hold it. That ought to be enough. Enough for what? One good push by both of us will topple this crate off the road. Why do you want to do that? There won't be anything left of the station wagon. I can buy plenty of station wagons. Batman and Robin will see plunge off the road into the river and think we're in it, see? Oh, you mean that... Quiet. Almost at the turn. They get a hold of the running board. When I give the word, heave. And get back off the road and into the bushes. Got it? Yes, sir. First chance we get, we'll slip over to Anderson's farm to borrow a car from him. All right, get ready. They're reaching the curve. Now, heave, Blake. That does it. Come on, Blake. Into the bushes. And look. Good heavens. The station wagon went off the road. Right smack into the drink. Oh, it's the end of Big George Latimer, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it. Come on. Where to? Down to the river. We've got to see what we can do for Latimer. What for? Good riddance, I say. Oh, I'd rather have him alive. He's the only one who can tell us where Superman is, remember? Oh, I forgot that. Okay, let's go. Careful now. Down this cliff. Yeah, careful yourself, Pabby. <laughs> Batman. Right here, Robin. Oh, boy. The river sure is deep. You're not kidding. I couldn't reach bottom. I got down. <laughs> Did you find the station wagon? Yep. What about Latimer and his sidekick? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> what do you mean? Now, here's the shore. Let's get out of this bathtub and I'll tell you about it. Oh, okay. Come on. Yeah. Okay, get that mysterious look off your face and tell me what gives, Pappy. Well, I found the station wagon. You've already told me that. What about Big George and his playmate? I couldn't find them, Match. Well, you mean they weren't in the car? You're beginning to catch. Well, they must have been thrown out. You saw the station wagon leave the road, fall through the air and hit the river. They weren't thrown out. Well, I mean after they sank. The doors must have opened. They didn't they... open. They were still closed. Oh? A couple of the windows were broken, but Latimer's a big man. His body wouldn't fit through one of those windows. It must have. Well, maybe. Unless... Unless what? A little bee is buzzing in my bonnet, Robin. And I don't like the sound it makes. Tune me in. I will. After we get back up the road. Come on. Dig in and start climbing. All right. Yeah. Phew. It's easier to go down a cliff than up. What are you doing, Batman? Looking for four-leaf clovers? Cut the comedy and take a gander at this. What is it? Oh, it looks like a car, Jack. It is. 
He's lying here in the weeds beside the road. Oh, well, isn't that ducky? But we're not collecting junk. It right? isn't junk. It's a brand new jack. It hasn't been lying here long either. No rust. Not even do. Okay, so we win a new jack. Now we've got two. You don't get it, Rob. Look, we're wasting time. We've got to report this accident to the police and then try to find Superman. And with Latimer drowned, that's going to be a job, too. Maybe Latimer isn't drowned. Now, that would be the miracle of the century. Would it? Come on over here, Robin. Now what? Right here. You see this deep dent in the road? Uh-huh. All right, watch now. You see how the heel of this jack hits the dent in the road? Sure, somebody had a flat here, changed tires, and then forgot the jack. Maybe. But do you remember remember the position of the station wagon when it left the road? The position? Yeah. Was it pointed front down or rear down? Neither. It fell sideways. Exactly. Flat on its side. And it stayed that way until it hit the water. They missed the turn and driven off the road that had fallen front down. Or if they skidded off, which they didn't because we'd be able to see the skid marks in this old road that have fallen rear down. All right, that makes sense, but what are you driving at? Just this. Latimer might have jacked up the station wagon and pushed it over the cliff. Pushed it over? What for? Oh, you're a little slow on the uptake tonight, Robin. Latimer evidently knew we were trailing him when we tried to lose us on Mill Road. He might have caught wires that were on his trail again and pulled this down to lose us for good. Cheapers could be, and then... <laughs> oh, come on, he must be around here someplace. Take it easy, Robin, take it easy. He's got at least a half-hour start on us. It's dark, and we don't know the country. We just can't go diving off into the woods after him. Oh, but he wouldn't get rid of his car and lose himself out in the middle of nowhere. Say, he might have a hideout around here and have Superman there. I'm thinking of that. Well, what do we do then? Wait until it gets light and then start looking? No. Come on back to the car. I'll radio Alfred and tell him to fly out here in the bat plane at once. It'll be dawn when he gets here. And we'll give this countryside a real going over. It's our only chance to find Latimer and Superman. Hurrying to the shortwave radio transmitter in their car, Batman and Robin make rapid plans to press the search for Big George Latimer and Superman. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. One girl told another, and now everybody's talking about a certain slick-looking bracelet and charms. The bracelet and charms being offered to you right now by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You've really got to see this terrific collection of 12 silvery, fascinating charms. You've seen something like these charms dangling from bracelets the high school seniors wear, but nothing exactly like this special Pep collection. For instance, take the Scotty dog charm. Why, this Scotty looks so real you can almost see his nose twitch and just feel his nose. It's actually cold. Or take the little locomotive, complete with wheels and smokestack, and the telephone and the piano with a keyboard. Each one of these 12 charms is a small edition of the real thing. And here's a beautiful part of this offer. You can order just one charm or as many as you like. For each charm you order, just send in a dime and a box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep, plus the names of the charms you want. Say you start by sending for just the Scotty Dog or the locomotive. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. And, of course, you'll want the bracelet itself. It's a keen-looking silvery link bracelet with an adjustable catch so it fits your wrist. And you can get this specially designed charm bracelet for only 10 cents, plus a box top from Kellogg's Pep. That's one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pep for the bracelet, and one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pep for each of the charms you order. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And tell all the boys to listen for tomorrow's pep offer to men only. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, it is dawn. Big George Latimer and Blake, his secretary, have arrived at an ancient mill set far back from a rutted, weed-grown country road and almost completely hidden by scraggly bushes, tall sunflowers, and two weeping willows on the bank of the stream. Inside the dim, dusty mill, Superman lies on the floor. The muscles in his arms and neck stand out like great cords as he tries and tries again to move only to groan and fall back helplessly. Three feet away on a small stool rests the jagged piece of kryptonite. It is the size of a large piece of coal and glows with a deep, unearthly, emerald green light. Big George Latimer, his thick lips spread in a gloating smile, regards the scene for a long moment. Then he nods his head to a rough-looking man who crouches tensely near the kryptonite. The man rises with nervous relief and steps outside. Waving his cigar... Latimer speaks to his secretary. Look at him, Blake. 
The great Superman lying helpless at my feet. <laughs> Go ahead. Laugh, Latimer. My time will come. Listen to him, Blake. Oh. He hasn't the strength to brush a fly off his nose, and he dares to threaten me. I'll remember all this, Latimer. You won't remember it for long. What do you mean? I don't mind telling you. You've served your purpose so far as I'm concerned. <sighs> And you couldn't appear and deny my charges that you framed the evidence that sent me to jail. You let me build myself back into power. I'm stronger politically now than I ever was. I'll take care of that. When I get free... But you're not going to get free, my friend. Use your head, Latimer. You can't keep me here for the rest of your life. Someone will find me. My friends or the police... They'll be too late. Or your guards will fall asleep. Or stumble against the stool... And knock the kryptonite across the room. Or any one of a dozen other things. Then I'll have my strength back. And where will you be? He's right, Mr. Latimer. Of course he's right, Blake. That's why he has to die. Die? Me? Yes. I'm going to finish you, Superman. (laughs) Don't make me laugh. Have you forgotten who I am? No, but you're a living thing. And all living things, trees, flowers, animals, men... ...can be destroyed. That means you can be destroyed, too. That's what you think. I know it. And I'm going to prove it. Now. Blake. Yes, sir. Tell Willie and Jennings to come in here. Yes, sir. This is the end of Superman. Although he seems unworried and disdainful of Latimer's threat... Superman hears a voice, his own voice, running through his mind. There is one way I can't be finished. Has Latimer thought of it? Will he think of it? He's smart. Too smart. Am I done for at last before I can stop him from spreading his filthy doctrine of hatred and intolerance? Will big George Latimer succeed in doing away with Superman? What do you think? Batman and Robin are searching desperately for the Man of Steel. Will they find the hidden mill in time? There's a thrill a minute in tomorrow's exciting episode, so be sure not to miss it. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman! Today, as Superman's friends continue their frantic search for his whereabouts, the Man of Steel struggles against insurmountable odds of sheer life or death. Now hold your breath, fellas, and hold your horses, because here's all about a swell silvery keychain you can get, and 12 of the keenest lucky pieces ever, all offered by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know the kind of keychain college men wear. Well, this is a handsome man-sized keychain. It's over 17 inches long and heavy enough to hold your pocket knife or watch. The kind of keychain your friends would give their right eye to own. And wait till they see the lucky pieces you're jingling on that keychain. For instance, that silvery little varsity football marks you as strictly a football man. And that skull and crossbones looks like a secret society badge. And there's a locomotive, binoculars, a Scotty dog. Order any or all of these 12 lucky pieces. Here's how. 
For each one you order, just send one pep box stop and one dime, plus the names of the ones you want, uh, like the football or the skull and crossbones. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future reference. Just remember, for each one you order, send a pep box stop and a dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. And now to get your keychain, send a pep box stop and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime, plus a pet box top for the keychain. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now, the adventures of Superman. By means of a jagged piece of kryptonite, a strange green glowing metallic substance which robs Superman of his amazing strength and powers when he comes within ten feet of it, Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, and Superman's arch enemy, trapped the Man of Steel. Bringing him to an old and deserted mill deep in the woods, Latimer is determined to find a way to end Superman's life. At the moment, he stands outside the open door of the old mill while preparations are going on inside where Superman is held in the powerful grip of the piece of kryptonite which glows with a curious cold green light a few feet away. The sun is high overhead, and standing beside Latimer, Walter Blake, his thin, stoop-shouldered secretary, mops his bald head and starts nervously as Latimer's harsh voice breaks the woodland silence. How's it coming, Gus? Be ready in a minute, boys. Good. It's no use. You're wasting your time. You can't kill Superman, Mr. Latimer. It's impossible. I can and I will, Blake. But you've tried everything and failed. Not everything. You tried stabbing him, but you just broke the knife blades. You tried to drown him. You even poured poison down his throat and he just laughed at you. I'm not through yet. It's no use. If you'll listen to me, you'll... All set, boys. Okay. Go ahead, Gus. What's that? Machine gun. But I'm a pissing bullet. Good heavens. <laughs> You see, he's just laughing at you. Shut up. <laughs> it don't wait, boys. The bullets bounce right off him. Got any more bright ideas, Latimer? We haven't tried fire yet. Use the blowtorch, Gus. Okay, but I don't think it'll work. This guy ain't human. Of course he isn't. If you'll give up this silly idea and listen to Shut me. Shut up, Blake. Go ahead, Gus. We'll wait right here outside the door. Okay. This is getting on my nerves. Mr. Latimer, please listen to me. You can't kill Superman. The thing to do is I've to... got to kill him, you blockhead. I can't count on keeping him chained to the piece of kryptonite forever. That's what I'm afraid Unless of. Unless Superman is dead, my career and my life is in danger. Don't you see that? Of course I do, but you can't kill him, so I say make a deal with him. Deal? Yes. Offer to let him go free on his promise never to bother or interfere with you in any way. Superman's word is his bond. Everyone knows that. Save your breath, Latimer. You'll never make any deals with me. There's your answer, Blake. What's holding you up, Gus? I had to get the blowtorch ready. I'm all set now. Go ahead, then. I'm going to watch this. Maybe you'll sing a different tune now, Superman. Go on, Gus. Give it to him. Okay. Here she goes. Good heavens. How do you like that, Superman? I always did like heat. Tell your goon to play it on my head. Maybe he can put a curl in my hair. Thank you see, Mr. Latimer? Blast him. Stop it, Gus. All right. Come inside, Blake. I tell you, it's no use, boss. Nothing can hurt this guy. Nonsense. I shoot 50 caliber bullets at him. Bullets that'll go through a tank. And he laughs. I put a blowtorch on him that'll cut through six inches of steel. And what happens? Nothing. I give up. I'm through. Oh, he tipped oh. over the stool. The kryptonite's rolling away. Gus, Mr. you fool. This is what I've been waiting for. Quick, no, pick it up. Give it to me. Here, here, take it. No use, Latimer. I've got you now. You've got me, eh? Here's the kryptonite. What are you going to do now, Superman? Oh, I can't. Oh. That's it. Fall down. Gravel at my feet. Oh, thank goodness. I thought that was the end of it. Me too. The next time that happens, you won't be so lucky, Latimer. There won't be any next time. You're going to die. Haven't you given up trying to kill me? No. I'll find a way. But in the meantime, I'll be a millstone around your neck. You'll have to watch me every minute of the day, and you won't be able to sleep at night. For fear that I'll get free and come for you. You won't be able to draw an easy breath. That won't last long. You're alive, and everything that lives can be killed, even you. There must be a way. There must be. Forget it, Latimer. I exposed you and put you in jail once, and I'll live to do it again. Or if I don't, the public will. The public are suckers. They believe what they're told. You tell it to them hard enough and often enough. I told them you'd frame me, and when you didn't dash you up and deny it, 
Thanks to the kryptonite, they believe me. They'll wake up eventually, and you'll be finished. Never. The only thing I have to fear is you. That's why I'm going to get rid of you. Huh. You hope. If hope were bread, you'd starve to death. I tell you... Wait. What did you say? I said if hope were... Bread. You said bread, of course. That's the way. Why didn't I think of it before? What? What are you talking about? Food. All living things need food to stay alive. Yes. Now I know the way to finish you. I'll starve you to death. Fighting to keep alarm from showing in his face, Superman shudders inwardly as he realizes that he himself has given Latimer the answer. Stumbled on it when I mentioned bread. The one way in which I can be finished. Starvation. Even I need food and water to stay alive. And I tipped him off myself. Oh, what'll I do now? What can I do? Held a virtual prisoner by the strange green glowing kryptonite, facing a murderous arch enemy in Big George Latimer, Superman sees nothing but doom ahead. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by! Now, here's more about those super slick lucky pieces and that handsome keychain offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Just wait till the other fellows see this silvery man-sized keychain hanging from your belt, curving down into the side pocket of your trousers. Wait till they see the skull and crossbones hanging from it. They'll think you've been elected to a secret society. And give them a look at the varsity football on your chain. All silvery, even to the lacings. The same kind of little football you've seen college men wear. You can hang one lucky piece right after another, all along your keychain. A slick little locomotive, binoculars, a trolley car, a telephone. Twelve in all, each a knockout. And here's all you do to get any or all of the twelve. For each one you'd like, simply send in a dime and a box top from that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep, plus a list of the lucky pieces you want. Say you start by sending for just the skull and crossbones or the football. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in a pep box top plus a dime and a list of the ones you want. And now to get your keychain, that handsome silvery keychain over 17 inches long and swell for carrying your scout knife or watch, here's all you do. Just send in a box top from Kellogg's Pep plus 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime, plus a pep box top for your keychain. And for both your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. Ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And get your order in today, because this terrific offer goes off the air day after tomorrow. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Big George Latimer has finally stumbled on the one way of taking Superman's life. In an old deserted mill, riddled and charred by shells, bullets, blowtorches, and other lethal weapons Latimer has used on Superman, the burly political boss grins wolfishly at the Man of Steel, who lies helpless under the weird power of the jagged piece of kryptonite, the element torn from the very planet from which he sprang, and which now, in the atmosphere of the Earth, proves his undoing. Food. All living things need food to stay alive. That's how I'll get rid of you, Superman. I'll starve you to death. Meanwhile, having trailed Latimer halfway to the old mill the night before, only to have the cunning politician slip away by a clever ruse, Batman is aloft in his bat plane, searching over the countryside. Below, cruising roads and highways in the Batmobile, Robin and Alfred, their trusted butler, are in constant communication with Batman by radio. Robin calling Batman. Robin calling Batman. Batman or Robin? Did you check on that farm? Yes. A farmer and his wife and their G.I. son. Nobody stopped at their place last night or this morning. And they've never heard of Big George Latimer. Latimer must have gotten a car someplace last night after he dumped his station wagon in the river to throw us off the track. Yes, unless his hideout was right near the river. I don't think so. I've gone over every inch of land within ten miles of the spot. You've checked every farm. Then where are we, Bobby? I don't know. But he was headed north, so I'm going to head north, too. What road are you on? Highway 12. Okay, cruise north on it. If I see anything on the ground that looks suspicious, I'll contact you. Check? Check. Oh, uh, Batman. Yes? You, uh, you said there was one way Superman could be, uh, 
You know, Finney. You didn't say what it was. I know I didn't. Well, what is it? Skip it. Oh, whenever I think Latimer might find out what it is before we locate him, I get a gone feeling in my middle. That's it. Huh? What do you mean? You figure it out. And hope as you never hoped before that we find Superman before Latimer figures it out. So long, chum. Batman sends his swift, oddly shaped plane zooming north, his sharp eyes searching the terrain below through binoculars. Steadily, he draws closer and closer to the old mill, which huddles almost hidden from sight beneath thick trees and scraggly overgrown bushes. And as Batman, unaware that he is soon to pass directly above Superman, draws ever closer... The keen ears of the Man of Steel register the sound of the powerful Batplane motors, and his X-ray vision pierces the walls of the mill, the trees, and the few intervening miles of space, and he sees his friend. What? Batman. He's going to pass directly above me. Oh, if only he spots the mill, it's my one chance. If I could just signal him, I... I... Oh, oh no, I... I can't move... You must see the mill, Batman. You must. Oh, oh, you must. Or I'm finished. Fairfully, his great muscles straining helplessly against the power of the green glowing kryptonite. Superman stares aloft into the sky to the bat plane, which drones closer and ever closer. Will Batman's sharp eyes make out the old mill through the thick trees and underbrush? Superman's very life may depend on it, with big George Latimer now aware of the one means by which the Man of Steel can be liquidated. What will happen? Never in all of Superman's career has the situation been so tense and exciting. So whatever you do, be sure to hear tomorrow's thrill-packed episode. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman lies a helpless prisoner of the evil politician George Latimer... The fate of his friends and rescuers, Batman and Robin, hangs by a thread. All right, fellas, this is it. This is where we deal out news about those terrific Lucky Charms and that handsome silvery keychain. Offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. How'd you like to sport a football on your keychain? A silvery little football that'll make you look like a big college athlete. Well, this slick football is only one of many lucky pieces you can get thanks to Pep's great offer. There's a skull and crossbones that looks strictly secret society. And a little locomotive, surreal looking, you can almost hear it sound its whistle and go tearing down the tracks. Twelve exciting lucky pieces. And here's all you do to get them. For each lucky piece you'd like, just send one Pep box top and one dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. 
like the football or the skull and crossbones. With it, you'll get a printed slip with pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send one pet box stop plus one dime and the names of the ones you want. And you're sure to want the keychain to hang them on. It's a man-sized keychain, over 17 inches long. Just the thing for carrying your scout knife or watch. To get your handsome keychain, simply send one pet box stop and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a pep box stop. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Did you get that? Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And now the adventures of Superman. A jagged piece of kryptonite torn from the exploded planet on which Superman was born. A strange green glowing metallic substance which in the atmosphere of the earth robs the man of steel of all his strength if it is placed within ten feet of him, is in the possession of Big George Latimer, a crooked politician, and Superman's arch enemy. After weakening Superman by exposure to the kryptonite, Latimer transported him to an old, deserted mill deep in the woods on the outskirts of Metropolis, where he finally hit on the one means by which Superman could be destroyed. Starvation. Meanwhile, Batman, hunting desperately for his friend, is cruising above the countryside in his famous bat plane, searching the ground through binoculars. At the moment, he is unaware that he is about to pass over the old mill in which Superman lies helpless and which is almost hidden by trees and bushes. But Superman is not unaware that help is close at hand. Although unable to move because of the kryptonite glowing on a stool only a few feet away, his X-ray vision pierces the ceiling of the shack and recognizes the approaching plane and its pilot. Well, it's Batman. He's going to pass directly overhead. How can I get him to spot this place and investigate? It's my only chance. Come inside, Blake. Uh Uh-oh, Latimer. Come on, Batman. Come on. You too, Gus. I don't want anyone in that plane to see us. They can't see us from up there, boys. Too many trees. I'm not taking any chances. That plane might be looking for Superman. You can bet your bottom dollar it is. It's going to pass directly over the mill, Mr. Latimer. Don't go out, Blake. Oh, goodness, no. Spot this place if you don't. I'm finished. Oh, the plane's going away, Mr. Latimer. Good. Sure is a funny looking ship. Take a gander at it, boys. Where is it? Ah, uh, too late. It just ducked into a cloud way off to the left there. But you should have seen the wings. They were. Never mind, it's gone. It's all that matters. You two can go out now if you wish. I'm gonna see how Superman is getting along. All right. Come on, Gus. Here he comes. I can only get my strength back just long enough to get my hands on him. Uh, Oh, it's no use. I can't. I owe you an apology, (laughs) Superman. You owe me more than that, Latimer. I thought of it just after I finished eating. I forgot all about your lunch. That's all right. And I forgot to bring you breakfast this morning or dinner last night. Don't let it bother you. I guess I'm not a very good host. Decent of you to apologize, but I'm not hungry. How would you like a nice, juicy steak? No, thanks. With French fried potatoes, broccoli, and hollandaise sauce. Crisp green salad. You don't tempt me in the least. Perhaps you're too thirsty to think about food. I'm afraid I forgot to give you anything to drink. No, thanks. How about a pitcher of clear, cold water? Fresh from a deep, cool well. Sound good? I hate to break your heart, Latimer, but you'll find out sooner or later, so I might as well tell you now. I don't eat or drink. (laughs) You bet you don't. Not anymore. I'm going to starve you to death. You don't understand. I never eat or drink. (laughs) Who are you trying to kid? I'm not kidding. You forget I'm Superman. You're still alive. Without food and water, you'll ultimately die. May take a week or a month, but sooner or later, it'll happen. You're going to be surprised, Latimer. Better think it over. You can't get rid of me. Oh, yes, I can. I mentioned this once before, but it's worth mentioning again. I'll be a millstone around your neck. You won't be able to sleep or draw an easy breath worrying about my getting away. Because you know what'll happen when I do. It's a good bluff, Superman, but it won't go. You're licked, finished, washed up. I'll keep you here until you're a bag of bones. Then I'll dump you into a hole in the ground. You'll never get in my way again. That's what you think. I know it. And so do you. 
I swore I'd get you. Mr. Latimer! Mr. Latimer! What is it, Blake? That plane, Gus, says it's the same one. It's coming back. Yes, eh? Let's see. It's the bat plane. Coming this way again. Maybe Batman will see the mill this time. See? There it is, Mr. Latimer, right up there. Yeah. I see it. It's the same one passed over before, boss. Are you sure, Gus? Yeah. Remember I said it was a funny-looking ship? See the wings on it? Look like a bird's wings and they're painted black. Batman's starting to circle and fly lower. Maybe he noticed the mill. Don't go away this time, Batman. Stick with it. Mr. Latimer, it's starting to circle. They've seen it. They can't see us. Trees cover the mill. Then why is it circling and dropping down? I don't know. Batman's seen something down here. He must have, or he wouldn't be hanging around. He's dropping, all right. Dropping fast. I don't like this, Mr. Latimer. Right I told you, you can't possibly. Good Lord. What is it, Mr. Latimer? That plane. It's shaped like a big bat. Like the car that followed us last night. Batman and Robin's car. They've got a plane, too. A bat plane. This must be it. Good heavens. Like Batman and Robin, huh? They're bad men to say. Certainly are. I warned you, Mr. Latimer. Right. Gus, where's the machine gun we used on Superman? Oh, oh. In the car. Get it. Bring my rifle, too. Hurry. Okay. What are you going to do, Mr. Latimer? What do you think? I'm going to shoot him down. Swooping low over the trees, crowding the old mill, the bat plane zooms up into the blue sky again. It resumes its lazy circling, slowly dropping lower and lower. In the cockpit of the plane, Batman snaps the radio switch and calls to Robin, his young companion, who is cruising along a dirt road in the Batmobile with Alfred, their trusted butler. Batplane to Robin. Batplane to Robin. Come in, Goldilocks. Oh, Goldilocks yourself. What's on the fire, Pabby? Maybe something, maybe nothing. I spotted an old shack. Looks like a deserted water mill. I'm giving it the once-over. An old mill, huh? Could make a good hideout. It certainly could. It's secluded enough. And all choked up with trees and bushes. I haven't seen anyone around, though. Well, how about Alfred and me totaling over and having a look-see? I don't know, Robin. I'm pretty low now. 500 feet. Right over it. And I still can't see any sign of life. Well, we might as well look it over. Can't afford to miss any bets. Anyway, we're getting bored. Where is this mill? Well, let's see. I passed over Broad River a few minutes before I spotted it. Hey, you know where the bend is? Uh-huh. We're just a few miles from it. Well, there's a dirt road. Turns off left from the highway just below the bend. I follow that, not having any better ideas, and ran it. Good Godfrey! What's up? Batman, come in! Two men just came out of the mill. They're shooting at me with a rifle and machine gun. Holy smoke! I'm sorry, Robin, I've got to sign off. I've got the engine. I'm in trouble. Stay with it until we get there, Pappy. We're on our way. I'll try, but make it fast! With this single engine missing, Batman works desperately at the controls to bank the plane out of range of a hail of rifle and machine gun bullets. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Don't miss out on getting your football and other swell lucky pieces. And don't miss getting your big handsome silvery keychain to hang them on. All offered to you by that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Sport a silvery football dangling on your keychain, just like a real college athlete. And the skull and crossbones could be a fraternity charm. And the binoculars are a small-scale model of the real thing. There's also a rugged little steam locomotive and a telephone. Twelve lucky pieces to jingle all along your keychain. And you can order any or all of them and then add to your collection. Here's how. For each lucky piece you'd like, just send one pep box stop and one dime plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. Let's say, for instance, that you start by sending for just the football or the skull and crossbones. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box top and one dime, plus, of course, the names of the lucky pieces you want. And don't miss out on that terrific slick-looking keychain. It's a handsome man-sized chain, bright and silvery, with good strong links, heavy enough to hold your scout knife and your watch and keys. And get this. It's yours for only 15 cents and a pep box top. That's all. A nickel and a dime, plus a pep box top gets you your keychain. And for your keychain and your lucky pieces, you send to Superman. Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll just repeat that address. Send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And hurry, get in your request today. Get your collection of lucky pieces started before this offer goes off the air tomorrow. 
And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In his bat plane, searching for Superman, Batman spotted the old mill almost hidden by trees and bushes, where big George Latimer held Superman prisoner. Circling lower, Batman was just reporting by radio to Robin that the mill appeared to be deserted when Latimer and Gus, a henchman, stepped out and began firing at the bat plane with a high-powered rifle and a machine gun. Some of the 50 caliber machine gun slugs tore into the engine, disabling it. Now, looking truly like a great wounded bat, the plane is attempting to flutter away. Outside the door of the mill, Latimer and Gus keep firing. While within the mill, helpless in the grip of the deadly kryptonite, Superman groans in anguish at his inability to go to the aid of his friend. Batman's in trouble. If I could only get free and help him. But I... I can't move. We got his engine, Gus. Get back. Bring him down. I'll bring him down if he doesn't get out of range. His engine's missing. He's having trouble with the rudder controls. And I have to watch it. I can't help him. He's getting away. He's getting away. Yes. Blast him. He got away. I don't think he'll get far. He's in trouble. He is. He's going to crash. Bail out, Batman. For heaven's sake, bail out. He's practically cleared the hills. No, wait. I think he's falling. He's crashing. <laughs> X-ray vision piercing the walls of the old mill. Superman writhes in helpless agony as he sees the limping bat plane falter over a low range of hills, then begin to plummet down to the earth. Why has Batman not yet bailed out of the crashing plane? Has he been wounded? And will he, too, now fall a victim to the murderous designs of Big George Latimer? And what of his young companion, Robin, who is racing toward the mill? The fate of all three of our famous friends, Superman, Batman, and Robin, hangs by the frailest of threads. To learn what happens... Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pet. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Superman's friends, Batman and Robin, fight against time to discover his whereabouts, the evil and relentless George Latimer has finally learned of a method to destroy the Man of Steel forever. Now, here's last-minute news for every girl on how you can get some of the slickest charms ever and a bright silvery charm bracelet. All offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. How would you like a silvery little telephone dangling from your wrist? A small model of a sure enough telephone. Looks so real it almost asks folks to dial your number. And there's a rugged little Scotty dog and a little cuckoo clock with a pendulum and a trolley car. Twelve out-and-out terrific charms and all. And here's how you get any or all of them. For each charm you order, send a dime and a pep box stop plus the names of the charms you want. Say you start by by just asking for the telephone or the Scotty dog. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the pictures of all 12 charms on it for future orders. Just remember, for each charm you order, send one pep box top and one dime. And you're bound to want that bright silvery charm bracelet. 
It's specially designed to show off these charms. And it's yours for a pep box top and ten cents. That's one dime and a box top from Kellogg's Pep for the bracelet. Print your name and address clearly and send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot that down. It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And send in today. This is the last time you'll hear this offer on the air. But keep watching the pep package for details on how to complete your charm collection. And now, the adventures of Superman. A strange, green, glowing, metallic substance known as kryptonite, which robs Superman of all his strength, is in the hands of his arch enemy, Big George Latimer, a dishonest political leader. After weakening Superman by exposing him to the kryptonite, Latimer took him to an old, deserted mill on the outskirts of Metropolis, where he finally hit on the only possible way in which the Man of Steel could be destroyed. Starvation. Meanwhile, searching desperately for his friend, the famous Batman spotted the old mill from his plane. But as he circled lower to investigate, Latimer and a henchman opened fire with a high-powered rifle and a machine gun. With his engine disabled, Batman radioed to his young companion Robin, who was several miles away, that he was in trouble. And as we continue now, Robin is in their powerful Batmobile, speeding toward the old mill with Alfred, the dynamic duo's trusted butler, at the wheel. Listen. That looks like the river bend just ahead, Alfred. Yeah, there it is. Keep your eyes peeled for an old dirt road. Batman said it leads to the mill. What, oh? I say, Master Robin. What? We haven't heard from Batman since he reported he'd been hit. I'm rather worried. You're worried. What do you think I am? Batman calling Robin. Listen, Alfred. Batman it's Batman. Robin. Robin to Batman. Am I glad to hear your voice? I thought maybe you'd departed this veil of tears. Not quite. Listen. Are you okay? Who shot at you? No time for chit chat, Robin. Get this. I'm sorry. Fire away. Don't go to the old mill. Don't go. That's right. Pick me up first. The bat plane cracked up about two miles north of the mill. Cracked up, I say. Watch for a line of low hills. I'm behind the tallest one, and don't waste any time. Right, I won't. Look, Pappy, are you hurt? Oh, just bunged up a little. Tell Alfred to step on it, Robin. There's work to do. Will do, Pappy. Give her the gun, Alfred. We've got to make time. There's the bat plane, Alfred, or what's left of it. But I don't see Batman. Neither do I, sir. We've got to find him. Come on. Batman! Batman! Over here, Robin. There he is, sir, behind the plane. Yes, I see him. You gave me a scare for a minute, Pappy. What were you hiding behind the plane for? I wanted to make sure it was you, not Latimer and company. Latimer? Yes, he and one of his goons shot me down. You mean Latimer's at the old mill? That's right. I say, sir, you're limping. Let me help you. That's all right, Alfred. I turned my ankle a little, bailing out of the plane. Come on back to the car. We're going places. Is Superman at the old mill, too? I didn't see him, but chances are he is. Why else would Latimer try to shoot me down? Did he know he hit you? Of course he did. Oh, you drive, Alfred. My ankle still hurts. Right, sir. Uh, hadn't we better summon the police? No time, Alfred. The mill's about two miles up this dirt road. Give it the gun, Alfred. Right, sir. Hang on to your hats. Here we go. Slow down, Alfred. Right, sir. I don't see them, though. Where is it? It's about a quarter of a mile into those trees and brush. Hey, stop here, Alfred. We'll walk the rest of the way. Come on, follow me. Uh, no, no, you stay with the car, Alfred. Oh, please, sir, let me come along. I'm jolly handy with my fist, you know. I know, but if anything happens to us, I want you to get the police. But, sir... If you hear shots and don't see us within ten minutes, make tracks for the gendarmes, got it? Yes, sir, but... Uh... You heard what the man said, Alfred. Let's go, Batman. I'm itching to see Superman and to get my hands on Big Noise Latimer. You and me both. Come on now. But quiet. Hold it, Robin. There's the mill. Just ahead of those bushes there. See it? Uh huh. It looks deserted. Looked deserted before when I spotted it from the air. When I circled down just above it, Latimer and another party popped out and opened up on me. Nice sociable lads. You figure they might be sitting in there with their heavy artillery, huh? That's what we're going to find out. How? Knock on the door and say we'd like to borrow a machine gun? Exactly. We'll walk right up to the door, knock, and when they open it, 
They'll see a couple of harmless young gents in street clothes who've lost their way home. In street clothes? Oh, I catch. It's about time. Now get busy and climb into Dick Grayson's clothes. No, no sooner said than done. You know, Mr. Wayne, sometimes you come up with a real good idea. Why, thanks. Yeah, but there might be a catch to this one. Like what? Like if Superman is in there, Latimer might decide to shoot first just to play safe and tell us the way home afterwards. He might, but I don't think so. Not until we have a chance to go into action, anyhow. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, wait till I snap my tie on. Okay. All set. Remember now, act natural. All right, let's go. Batman, uh, I mean Bruce, uh, or should I say Mr. Wayne? Cut the comedy. What is it? Uh, look into your crystal ball and tell me if Latimer is standing behind that door with a gun in his hand. I'm sorry. I left my crystal ball at home with my yo-yo. Quiet now. This is it. Here goes. Somebody, I say, somebody bang my pine. Quiet. Hear anything? Just my heart pounding against my ribs. Let's try again. Nobody home. Or is there? There is. They don't seem to want any company. Yeah, but they're going to get some regardless, right? Right. Now, listen. I'm going to try the door. If it's unlocked, we dive in fast and low. Take a deep breath. Get it. Here goes. It's unlocked. Get set. Ready. <laughs> oh, look, Robin. Look at what? I can't see anyone. That's just it. The mill's empty. Latimer must have gotten the wind up when I spotted this place and flew the coop. Yes, and took Superman with him. Uh-huh. But where? You've got me, but we have to find him. Come on. Where to? Back to the car. We've got to get help. Unless we find Superman and soon, Latimer will finish him. Come on now, on the double. <laughs> Breaking into a run, Batman and Robin race back to the Batmobile to summon help and resume the search for Superman. Where is the Man of Steel? We'll return in a moment to find out in the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Now for you fellows, here's what's what on that good-looking keychain and the swell lucky pieces offered to you by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Today's the very last time we'll be able to tell you about this great, this terrific offer over the air. So act fast to get in on it. The keychain is all bright and silvery. A big man-sized keychain over 17 inches long with a clip to hook into your pocket or belt and at the other end, a ring for your keys and watch and knife. And where do the fellows in your crowd see the lucky pieces you're jingling all along that keychain? For instance, with a silvery little football, you'll look like a varsity letterman. And that skull and crossbones lucky charm looks like a fraternity badge. And the binoculars, and the steam locomotive, and the trolley car. Will you go for them? And listen to this. You can get any or all 12 of these lucky pieces. For each one you'd like, just send one pep box top and one dime, plus the names of the lucky pieces you want. For instance, say you start by sending for just the football or the skull and crossbones. When it comes, you'll also receive a printed slip with the names and pictures of all 12 lucky pieces on it for future orders. Now, just remember, for each lucky piece you order, send in one pep box top and one dime. And to get your keychain, send in a pep box top and 15 cents. That's a nickel and a dime plus a pep box top for your keychain. Print your name and address clearly. And for your keychain and your lucky pieces, send to Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. Better jot down that address. Ready? It's Superman, Department 1R, Battle Creek, Michigan. And get busy right away. Remember, today's the last time we'll be mentioning this offer over the air. But keep watching the pep package for details on how to complete your collection of pep's exciting lucky pieces. <laughs> Back to the adventure, self Superman. Our scene is a large barn behind a freshly painted farmhouse. Above in the bare hayloft, Superman lies half propped against a wall. Two feet away, glowing with a deep, unearthly green light, the jagged piece of kryptonite rests on the floor, its strange power stealing every ounce of strength from the man of steel's bodies. Nearby, his eyes alert, sits Gus, big George Latimer's burly henchman. Below, in the doorway of the barn, Latimer himself is conversing with Blake, his slight bald-headed secretary. That man might have bailed out of his plane before it crashed, Mr. Latimer. He and Robin might be on our trail again. I doubt it, Blake. But even if they are, they'll never trace us here. You said they'd never trace us to the old mill either, but they did. They're clever. Or suppose Superman gets his strength back... He and... won't. Not with the kryptonite two feet away from him. I'm worried, Mr. Latimer. 
I read that a normally strong man can live a month or more without food or water. Why, it might take several months to starve Superman to death. I know. I don't like the idea of being cooped up with him all that time either. Too risky. That's why I drove into Metropolis to see Dr. Marsh last night. Who? Dr. Marsh, you remember. He's been to my house a couple of times. Oh, yes, the German. That's right. I never told you, but he was a brilliant physician and scientist in Germany under the Nazis. Performed some very interesting experiments in their concentration camps. Marsh isn't his right name, of course. Oh? Well, what did you want to see him about? Well, I got to thinking. There must be some faster way to finish Superman than by starvation. Like what? I don't know. It struck me. There might be some way to do it with the kryptonite. That only weakens him. It doesn't kill him. That's what I wanted to see Marsh about. I brought him a small piece of the kryptonite and told him what I wanted. He's indebted to me. You see, I could turn him over as a war criminal any time I wanted to. I see, he promised but... to analyze the stuff and get in touch with me. I've been expecting him out here all day. He... Wait. There he is now. Where? Just pull up in that car. Come on, Blake. Maybe he's got what we want. Well, Dr. Marsh, what about it? I have solved your problem, Mr. Latimer. You have? You mean... Yes. In a few hours, I can make you free of Superman. Forever. Anxiously, big George Latimer waits for Dr. Marsh to explain. What does the German doctor mean? Has he really discovered a quick method of ending Superman's life? Batman and Robin, who know that Superman is Latimer's prisoner, do not know his present whereabouts. Who then, or what, can save the Man of Steel now if Dr. Marsh is right? We'll find out whether he is or not in Monday's exciting and surprising episode. So don't miss it. Be sure to listen Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman's friends, Batman and Robin, pick up a slim clue to his whereabouts, the Man of Steel lies helpless at the mercy of the murderous George Latimer. You know, somebody in your crowd is going to be first. The first to collect a whole brand new series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pep is putting out. And that somebody could be you if you just look for the comic button in every pet package. Eighteen different comic strip characters to wear pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. So get in on the fun of collecting them all. Maul Winkle and Tiny Tim, Flat Top Superman and all the rest. Get the thrill of swapping duplicates with your pals. And be sure to be around for the surprise when it's time to open a new package of pet. You never know which button you're going to find inside, but you do know it'll be a true-to-life picture of a famous funny paper character. And here's the payoff. Here's how simple it is to get these pep comic buttons. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. They come only as exclusive prizes, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep you open. And remember, too, when you open a package of pep, that you're in for some terrifically good eating. Because these toasted whole wheat flakes are packed with catchy sunshine flavor that puts come on in every bite. So for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. 
And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, a crooked politician named Big George Latimer, who feared and hated Superman, obtained the last remaining piece of kryptonite in the world. A strange metallic substance torn from the exploded planet on which Superman was born, and which, in the atmosphere of the Earth, robs the man of steel of all his strength when it is placed within ten feet of him. Determined to destroy Superman forever, Latimer weakened him by exposure to the kryptonite and then transported him to a hideout where he set out to slowly starve him to death. But worried by the relentless pursuit of Superman's friends, the famous Batman and Robin, Latimer decided he must find a swifter way to finish his hated enemy. He called in a certain Dr. Marsh, a brilliant physician and scientist who had worked for the Nazis. And after analyzing the kryptonite, Marsh delivered his report. I have solved your problem, Mr. Latimer. I believe I can put Superman out of your way forever. As we continue now, in a farmhouse near Metropolis, Big George Latimer questions the German scientist. You mean you found a way to destroy Superman quickly, Dr. Marsh? If you are asking me, can I take his life, Mr. Latimer, the answer is no. But you just said... Let me finish, please. I cannot take his life. His body is indestructible. But I can, by means of the kryptonite, render useless a portion of his brain. His brain? Yeah, a portion of it. Uh, The brain, as you know, governs every action of the human body. When you so much as wiggle a finger, the command must come first from the brain. Yes, I know that. When a specific portion of the brain is blocked off and made useless, the individual can no longer think. Superman will be unable to remember anything that has gone before. He won't remember anything? Nothing. Not even his own name. Furthermore, he will be rendered weak for the rest of his life. You say you can do this to Superman? Yeah. I can do it with the kryptonite. But the kryptonite only weakens him. Once you move it more than ten feet away from him, he regains his strength and power. I know that, too. But this kryptonite has amazing properties. And for some reason, Superman is susceptible to them. Yes, I know. Well, once the kryptonite is introduced into his bloodstream, it will block off a certain portion of his brain. How are you going to get the stuff into his bloodstream? His skin is impenetrable, you know. So you told me. Fortunately, being a chemist as well as a physician, I discovered a means to liquefy the small piece of kryptonite you brought me. Liquefy it? Oh, you mean... I, I have it here, in this bottle. That stuff looks like water. The kryptonite is green. I was able to remove the color. It has no odor either. Six drops in a glass of water or milk, and Superman will never be able to detect it. Six drops in a glass of milk will do the trick? Six drops every two hours for 24 hours. If you're right, Marsh... I know I'm right. Try it and see for yourself. Give Superman these drops of liquid kryptonite for 24 hours, and you will never need to fear him again. Okay. We'll start right now. If it works, Marsh... I'll make you the head of the state health department. Wunderbar. But if it doesn't... It will. Come, I will show you. Where is Superman? Back in the barn, the haymo. Follow me. There he is, Marsh. The great Superman. Helpless as a newborn babe. Look at him. (laughs) <laughs> so this is Superman. Go ahead and laugh, Latimer. My time will come. I've got news for you, Superman. Really? Yes. I'm going to let you go. Let me go? That's right. I've had my revenge. I've ruined your reputation and built myself back into political power. You can't harm me now, so I'm going to let you go. I'll believe it when you move that piece of kryptonite away from me. I will, in a moment. And to show my good faith, Gus. Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. Bring that sandwich and glass of milk. Poor fellow. You haven't had anything to eat or drink for three days, Marsh. Oh, that is too bad. See ya, boys. Thanks. Here, Superman. Never mind the banquet. Just move that piece of kryptonite. Have your sandwich and milk first. Then I'll move the kryptonite. If you mean what you say, you'll move it now. Are you going to drink that milk? Oh, so it's the milk you're anxious about. I suppose you put poison in it. Don't be a fool. You're wasting your time, Latimer. You tried poison on me before and it didn't work. You're done for, whatever you do. 
Even if you could starve me to death, it would take months. By that time, my friends and the police would... Why, you've wasted enough of my time. Hold his head, Gus. We'll pour this stuff down his throat. Oh, you won't. Open your mouth. Give me the glass, Dr. Marsh. Yeah, here it is. Now, Superman, we'll see how you like this. Well, how about it, Dr. Marsh? It's 30 minutes since we gave him that stuff. You said in 30 minutes. Wait, Mr. Latimer. He has been asleep. He's just waking up. Now listen. You, mister, what is your name? Huh? Oh. Who? Who are you? Never mind who I am. Who are you? What is your name? Me? Oh, uh, that's funny. I can't seem to remember. You hear, Mr. Latimer? Yes. Uh, wonderful, Doc. Can't seem to. Oh. Oh, yes. I, I'm Superman. Yes, that's who I am. Superman. You remember, this stuff's no good. He saw his costume, the red cape. That recalled his name to him. You must remove his costume and place other clothes on him. Uh, perhaps those overalls hanging on the wall. All right. But are you sure that's what did it? I'm positive. His memory is already diminishing. Listen. This uh, gentleman beside me, who is he, Superman? He? Oh, it, uh, it seems to me I have seen him someplace before, but, but I... You don't remember who I am? Oh, I'm sorry. You look familiar. I, I have a feeling I ought to know your name, but I don't know. I, I can't seem to recall it. I... It is working, Marsh. Uh, yeah, I told no, you it would. Remove his costume and put on the overalls. Then give him the six drops of kryptonite in milk or water every two hours. And tomorrow at this time, he will be helpless. A man without a memory. Dazed, Superman stares from the swarthy, owl-eyed Dr. Marsh to the exultant George Latimer. Apparently, the ex-Nazi physician was right. And the liquid kryptonite is beginning to affect Superman's brain. What will happen? We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, do you know what Gravel Gertie's been doing lately? Have you seen B.O. Plenty in the funny papers? And have you got these familiar characters in your collection of comic buttons? That brand new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out? Well, here's a partial list of this new series. Maul Winkle, Mr. Bibbs, the uh, Winnie Winkle twins, Denny Dimwit, Daisy, Flat Top, Wilmer, and Superman, of course. Isn't that a gallery of comic strip favorites? Yes, sir, you'll get a kick out of collecting them all and, and swapping duplicates with your friends and getting a surprise comic button every time you open a new package of Kellogg's Pep. And remember, that's the only way you can get these Pep comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. But you just keep supplied with pep and look for your prize inside every package you open. Keep on the lookout for a grand breakfast dish, too. Kellogg's Pep is called the Sunshine Cereal. Toasted whole wheat flakes with a catchy sunshine flavor. Good for you with an extra amount of energy vitamin B1 to help keep you going through the day and added sunshine vitamin D. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, -E the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Having searched vainly through the day and preceding night for Superman, Batman, looking haggard and drawn, has received an urgent message from Perry White. And as we join him now, he is with the gray-haired editor in his office at the Daily Planet. We lost Latimer's trail completely after we got to the old mill, Mr. White. Candy Myers and Robin and I searched all never night. Never mind Latimer, Batman, and never mind Superman either. He can take care of himself. What worries me is that Clark Kent has disappeared. Of course he has. Haven't you been paying any attention to what I've been telling you? What do you mean? You didn't say anything about Kent? I said I was sure Latimer had him at the old mill, didn't I? But by the time I got there with Robin... You he... said Latimer had Superman. Well, well, well what? Superman isn't Kent, is he? Well, sure he... What? Uh, no, no, no. I, I I was thinking of Latimer, and uh, I was going to say, sure he had Kent. What? You mean Latimer's got Kent, too? Uh, that, that's right. Unless we find him in a hurry... Why is he holding Kent? Uh, why? Uh, well, uh, 
Well, Kent had a lot to do with sending him to prison, and uh, uh, Kent knows he used the kryptonite on Superman and, uh, and everything else. Why the dirty... I'll get the FBI after him. Abduction is a capital offense in this state, and I'll, I'll, I'll send him to the chair. We've got to catch him first. I'll catch him. Miss Backrack, get me the FBI. Then get me Inspector Henderson. Hurry. I'll fix Mr. Latimer's wagon. I'll... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Oh, sure, go ahead. Hello. What? Oh, who? who? Uh, yes. Yes, he's here. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Candy Myers, the private detective, wants to talk to you, Batman. Candy, eh? Yeah, I left him with Robin. Thanks. Hello, Candy. What gives? Yes? Yes? What? You did? What is it? Where? No kidding. You bet I'll be out there. I'm leaving right this minute. Right, so long. Well, what is it, Batman? What did Candy say? He thinks he picked up a clue to Latimer and Superman. He did? Where? No time to talk now, Mr. White. I've got to join Candy and Robin. So long. <laughs> Hurrying from Perry White's office, Batman races off to join private detective Candy Myers and Robin. What clue has Candy discovered? Will it lead Superman's friends to Latimer's hideout before the liquid kryptonite can complete its deadly work? We'll find out in tomorrow's exciting episode. So be sure to tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines that is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. How'd you like to learn about the birds that are around now that the weather is warmer? You know, like the flycatcher and the warbler? Well, start collecting the full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. Get set to collect all 24 in the series and to swap duplicates with your friends. And get a colorful album, too, so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. Just ask Mother for Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of whole wheat, Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, the Man of Steel miraculously effects his own escape from the evil clutches of George Latimer, unaware that the administered deadly kryptonite has made his mind a complete blank. Bet there are a lot of signatures I could get for this statement that the pep comic buttons of the new series are knockouts. Get yourself a package of Kellogg's Pep and see for yourself... See the way those bright colors stand out against the gleaming white background. The clear, sharply outlined pictures of familiar comic strip favorites and how true to life these funny paper characters are. Just like in the comic strips. Don't miss out on one of these 18 different buttons. Make sure that you collect Mama Destross and Fat Stuff, Little Joe, Superman, and all the rest. Get in on the fun when your friends swap duplicates and sport your jacket or dress or cap with your collection of pep comic buttons pinned on for everybody to see and stick around around when it's time to open a new package of Kellogg's Pep to find out which button's inside. That's the only way you can get these terrific prizes. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. But there's a comic button inside every package of that sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Pour yourself a bowl of those golden toasted whole wheat flakes every morning for breakfast and get a load of that catchy sunshine flavor, the crisp freshness of this super delicious cereal. For prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. By means of a jagged piece of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance which robs Superman of all his strength when brought within ten feet of him, Big George Latimer, a crooked politician, weakened him and then transported him to a hideout. Determined to destroy the Man of Steel, 
Latimer called in Dr. Marsh, a brilliant brain specialist who had worked for the Nazis. And after analyzing the kryptonite, Marsh determined that if Superman were given doses of it in liquid form, it would make him a broken wreck within 24 hours. To Latimer's delight, Superman became dazed after the first dose and was unable to recognize his arch enemy. Meanwhile, the famous Batman received word that Candy Myers, the private detective, whose aid he had enlisted in the search for Superman, had discovered a clue. And as we continue now, Batman has arrived at a village 20 miles from Metropolis, where he has been met by Candy Myers. Listen. All right, talk fast, Candy. What's this clue you picked up? It's a hot one, Batman. I think... Well, what is it? Give. A man named Wilkins, a small-time cattle dealer, saw three guys in a car come out of the lane from the old mill yesterday. Oh, when yesterday? About 3.30 in the afternoon. Robin says that's just about the time Latimer and his goons shot the motor out of your plane and sent you into a spin. That's right. Robin picked me up and we got to the mill a little after four. But Latimer had flown the coop by that time. And unless I'm wrong, they had Superman with them. Could be. But where'd they go? To another hideout, I figure. Sure, but where? Doggone it, Candy. I thought you had a hot clue. Keep your shirt on. The kid thinks his old man knows where they went. What, kid? What, old man? For heaven's sake, Candy. The Wilkins, kid. The cattle dealers. Oh? I got this information from him. Like I say, he thinks his old man knows where Latimer, if that's who it was, went. Well, what are we waiting for? Where's Wilkins? Let's find him and get... Take it easy, will you? He's out in the country buying some cattle. He's due back here any time now. Robin went with a boy to meet him and bring him here. Well, I stuck around to meet you. Okay, this may be the break we need. Wilkins might be the answer to our prayers. Keep your fingers crossed. Batman and Candy Myers wait anxiously for the cattle dealer. Big George Latimer has just climbed to the hayloft of the barn in which Superman is imprisoned. Lying half-propped against a wall, his blue costume and red cape replaced by a grimy suit of overalls. The man of steel looks about him blankly, a dazed expression in his eyes. On the floor, less than two feet away, is the jagged piece of kryptonite, a bit smaller now, but glowing with a deep, unearthly green light and draining every ounce of strength from Superman's body. Watching him intently is the swarthy, owl-eyed Dr. Marsh. Gus, one of Big George Latimer's henchmen, sits nearby. How's it going, Doctor? Excellently, Mr. Latimer. I've just given our muscular friend a second dose of the liquefied kryptonite. Well, what happened? He is now in a state similar to what may be called amnesia. He has no memory of the past or even of his own identity. He hasn't, I will say. You, mister... Huh? What's your name? My name? Yes, your name. What is it? I... I don't remember. You see? How do you like that? He don't even know he's... Shut up, Gus. Come over here a minute, huh? Certainly, Mr. Latimer. You are satisfied with the results? Not sure. You say he's in a state of amnesia? Yeah. The two doses of liquefied kryptonite have numbed a section of his brain. I've yes. heard of people with amnesia being cured. Sometimes a good shock will snap them out of it. That is true, but we have just begun the treatment. As we continue the doses every two hours, Superman's brain, or rather a specific section of it, will become permanently blocked off, paralyzed. Permanently, you say? Yeah. For the rest of his life, he'll be unable to remember anything. Look here, I hope what's you're right. I would stake my life on it. You are staking your life, Doctor. Make no mistake about that. Well, you don't need me around here for a while. I'll be leaving you. Leaving us? Why? Don't worry. Nobody will find this place. And I'll be back. I have to go to Metropolis for a while. Gus. Yeah, boss. You stay up here and don't let him out of your sight till I get back. And make sure that kryptonite doesn't move. Understand? Sure. Okay, boss. Go on, Mr. Wilkins. You said you were driving to Metropolis yesterday with a truckload of cattle when these three men in a car came out of the lane leading from the old mill. Uh, that's right, Batman. Uh, like I told Mr. Myers, the old mill has been shut up for years. So I wasn't expecting nobody to be coming out of the lane. Well, of course. Did you get a look at the man in the car? Uh, not much of a look right then, Mr. Myers. But I got a pretty good look at him later, though. Uh, when was this, Mr. Wilkins? About half an hour later, I'd say. I just come over the long hill outside this village when I noticed a car parked half off the highway. Yes? Three fellas were out of the car, and they flagged me down. <laughs> 
Seems like they had a flat, and their jack wasn't no good. They wanted me to lend them mine. They were the same fellas almost turned me over back at the old mill road. You're sure they were the same ones? Yep. I recognized a big red-faced fella. He was smoking a cigar, and he did all the talking. Latimer to a T, Batman. Sounds like him, Candy. Uh, what about the other two men, Mr. Wilkins? Well, one was kind of a tough-looking fella. The other was a little bald-headed squirt. Nervous as a coat, getting his first bridle on. That's Blake, Latimer's secretary. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, did you notice anyone else? Or uh, anything in the car? No, I didn't. They must have had Superman on the floor. Hmm? What's that? Did you say Superman? Never mind, Mr. Wilkins. Just tell us what happened. Now, you said they wanted to borrow your jack. (laughs) Yeah, but I told them I didn't have no jack with me. Oh, then you just left them on the road. You don't know where they went afterwards. Sure I do. You do? Where? Hey, hear that thunder? They're in for some more rain. You say you know where they went, Mr. Wilkins? Well, I know where they turned off the highway in. So they must have... Well, they must have gone just beyond Maple Creek. Maple Creek? Where's that? Oh, about 20 miles north of here. Jump and Jemima step on the starter and let's get going back there. Okay, Candy. We'll pick up Robin and go after Latimer. This may be the payoff. Backing the powerful Batmobile away from the curb, Batman sends it surging up the street to pick up Robin and to take up the trail of Big George Latimer. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. And now here's a call for fellows to help on a really important job. This is the time of year when you like spending your holidays picnicking and hiking in the woods. And it's also the time of year when the danger from forest fires is greatest. So you're really Johnny on the spot when it comes to protecting our woods and forests. You can appoint yourself a guardian of the valuable trees and lumber, and in that way you'll help save that lumber for needed homes. And here's what to watch out for. Keep an eagle eye out for careless, thoughtless folks who travel through our forests, either motoring or on foot, leaving in their trail a lighted match carelessly thrown away, a cigarette left burning near twigs, a campfire left unguarded. That's the kind of thing that causes nine out of ten forest fires. So here are some rules to guide you on your job of protecting our forests. Crush out all cigarettes and cigars that you see carelessly thrown away. Break matches in two after using them and drown all campfires. Then stir the embers and pour on still more water. Remember, when you're out in the woods, you're Johnny on the spot to prevent forest fires. And that's an important job. It's a man-sized job. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, rain beats steadily on the roof of a deserted barn in the country where Superman, garbed in grimy overalls and not knowing who or where he is, lies helpless in a hayloft, unable to move because of the green blowing kryptonite a few feet away. He shakes his head dazedly as Gus, who is guarding him, taunts him. Look at you. Used to be the strongest guy in the world. Now I can smack you in the face and you can't do nothing. Who did you say I used to be? Don't you wish you knew? No, tell me now. <laughs> Tell me, please, who am I? Sandy Claus. Oh? Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, no, look, that... That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Boy, ain't this something. Uh, Doc Marsh is a whiz, that's what. Doc Marsh? Who's he? He's your hoodoo, stupid. My what? Please, I don't... Reek was listen to that thunder. Look at that lightning. Real summer storm, all right. Now, tell me, please... Who am I? You're uh, Hey! Hey, that one was close. What the... Jeepers, what's happened? A tree fell on the roof. It shook the whole building. A tree? Yes. Why, this is strange. I I feel much stronger suddenly. Look, I, I can stand up. What the... Holy smokes, the hunk of grip tonight. Where is it? The what? Look, I, I can walk. Stay away from me. No, wait a minute. Stay away. Wait, please Stay don't away. go. No, I want to talk to you. No, no, don't please. Push me. Wait a minute. Help. It's funny, he's screaming for help and running out of the barn. Did he think I was going to hurt him? Huh. Something strange has happened to me. A moment ago, I felt so weak, I, I couldn't move. Now I, I feel strong, as if I could move mountains. This is only one trouble. I don't know who I am. 
got to find out, but... But how? Freed from the deadly strength-draining influence of the piece of kryptonite which has rolled out of range when a tree fell on the barn roof, Superman has once again regained his enormous strength and curious powers. But something is missing. His memory... He does not know who he is, or why, instead of being attired in the red cape and blue costume of Superman, he is wearing ragged overalls. He is suffering from what Dr. Marsh called a form of amnesia. Where will this lead him? Not knowing he is Superman, remembering nothing of his past, where will he go? What adventures will he encounter? Fellows and girls, we're about to begin the most amazing and exciting of all of Superman's adventures. So be sure to hear every thrill-packed episode from today on. Tune in tomorrow and every day, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines that is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Can you identify a yellow-headed blackbird? Well, you can if you're collecting those full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. You'll want to collect all 24 in the series, and you'll want the fun of trading duplicates with your pals, and you'll want the colorful album, too, so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of good whole wheat. Ask Mom to get Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Superman's enemies leave no stern unturned to recapture their escaped prisoner, the Man of Steel aimlessly roams the countryside... His mind a complete blank. For prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. That's right, Pep's the prize package that brings you comic buttons of a brand new series to collect and to swap duplicates with your friends. Don't miss out. Here's just a few of the 18 famous comic strip characters in this new series. Little Joe, A Breath of Breeze, Tiny Tim, Tilda, Mama Destross, Fat Stuff, Auntie Blossom, Uncle Avery, and Superman. You've followed them in the funny papers. You've talked about them, heard about them, read about them. Now, Pep puts their pictures on gleaming, colorful buttons to wear pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. Get busy today. Give your collection a head start. Start off by making sure there's plenty of Kellogg's Pep in the house. Because that's the only way you can get these comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. They come only as exclusive prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Pep is in the exclusive class when it comes to good breakfast eating, too. It's called the Sunshine Cereal, loaded with catchy sunshine flavor that keeps your spoon digging in for more. Get a load of those super delicious whole wheat flakes tomorrow. For prize eating and exciting prizes, always get P.E.P., the Sunshine Cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. Holding Superman a prisoner by means of a jagged piece of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance which robs him of all his strength, Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, called in Dr. Marsh, a former Nazi brain specialist. Marsh turned a small portion of the kryptonite into a liquid and said that the solution given to Superman for 24 hours would make him a mental and physical wreck. Following the first two doses, Superman lost his memory, not even knowing who he was. Meanwhile, Batman Robin and Private Detective Candy Myers picked up a clue to the farm where Superman was being held and drove to it in a violent thunderstorm. 
But before they arrived, something startling happened. We learn what it was now as we join Gus Latimer's henchman in the farmhouse with Dr. Marsh. Gus has just dashed in from the barn. He is drenched with rain and his eyes are wide with fear. For a moment, he stands panting, unable to speak. Listen. What are you doing here, Gus? The, the, the tree. Superman got loose. He what? He got loose. He got his strength back. That, that is impossible. The piece of kryptonite is about two feet from him. He cannot move, even lift a finger. That's what you think. The storm knocked the tree down onto the roof, shook the whole barn. The kryptonite rolled across the haymow. Next thing I knew, Superman was standing up. He started to walk toward me. Boy, did I get out of there. Oh, you fool. Don't come. Why did you not pick up the kryptonite and bring it close to him again? I wasn't taking any chances. That guy is Superman. He does not know who he is. He remembers nothing. They might remember. We'd better get out of here. Ridiculous. Where is he now? I don't know. I left him in the barn. Creepers, if he follows me Gus, in here... take that lantern and come with me to the barn. Hurry! Where can he be? I don't know. He wasn't on the ground floor, neither. He must have walked out of this barn into the rain. He must have tried him. Here. Here's the kryptonite. The lead box for it is over there by the wall. Get it, Gus. Quickly. Okay. Well, how are we going to find him? It's dark outside and rain is catching dogs. It's only a few minutes since he left. He cannot be very far away. Uh, give me the lead box. Hey, uh, Doc. But... Now, come. Hurry. This the ladder. I'll be here. Well, listen, Doc, how are we going to find him? That guy can fly, you know. He has forgotten. He can fly. Have I not told you he has forgotten everything, even who he is? Well, he has amnesia. But it is possible to recover from amnesia. Therefore, we must find him and bring him back here to continue my treatment for an additional 20 hours until the sinking portion of his brain will cease permanently to function. Uh, watch it. One more step. Yes. Ah. Now, come now, Gus. We must find him quickly. If we do not... I know. It'll mean our next. Hold it, Doc. Don't go out there. Why do you go out the lantern? A car just pulled up to the house. See it? A car? Yeah. I see it. Get back in here. Yeah. What is it? it? It's Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin? Are you sure? Yeah, I can see their costumes. How'd they ever trace us here? I do not know. Here, take the kryptonite and hide somewhere until I can get rid of until them. Until you get rid of them. Listen, those two could lick their weight in wildcats. I have no intention of fighting with them. I am a man of brains. Do as I say. Hide until I get rid of them. Then we must find Superman. As Dr. Marsh walks through the rain to beat Batman and Robin, Editor Perry White and Police Inspector Henderson have just arrived at Big George Latimer's palatial estate in Metropolis Heights. A butler ushers them into the library where the burly politician smoking his inevitable cigar greets them. Good evening, Mr. White. Inspector Henderson. What can I do for you? Well, you see, Mr. White... What have you done with Clark Kent? I beg your pardon, Mr. White. I said, what have you done with Clark Kent? Clark Kent? Yes, my reporter. You were holding him in an old mill out near Remsen. But he's gone now, and Now, you... now, wait, please, Mr. Wait, White. Wait, for what, Henderson? This man abducted Kent. He's holding him a prisoner someplace, and he's going to tell me where... Oh, wait, wait, calm hit. down, Mr. Let White. Let go of my arm, Henderson. I said calm I down, down this back, please. You see, Mr. Latimer... Uh... I'm starting to see, Inspector. The other night you barged in here with Batman and Robin and accused me of doing something to Superman. To Superman, mind you. You insisted on searching my house. Well, And I... now you accuse me of abducting Clark Kent. Just what in thunder is going on around here? I'm not accusing you, Mr. Latimer. Well, I am. Batman said he saw you at the old mill and you had Kent with you. Batman said that? Yes. He said you grabbed Kent because he helped send you to jail last year and because he knew you had the kryptonite. He knew all about your plot against Superman. Bobby so... Cox, stop and nonsense. Now you listen to me, Larry. Now, just a minute, gentlemen. I won't listen to another word. Unless you're prepared to make a formal charge against me, Inspector Henderson. Are you? Why? Why, no. Then get out of my house, please, and take this madman with you. Madman? Now you look here, Latimer. And get this, Don't Inspector. You... I warned you the other night that if you bothered me again, I'd speak to the mayor and the commissioner. In case you've forgotten, I have some influence in this city. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Latimer. Don't let him bluff you, Henderson. He knows where Kent is and probably where Superman is, too. Come along, Mr. He... White. No, 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 nothing doing. He's going to... I'm going to stay here until he tells me... Please, what he... Mr. What White. He did to Kent and let, let go of my arm, Henderson. Oh, come let along. go, I say. Please, Mr. Take White. Take hand off my arm. Good night, Mr. Latimer. I am just on stage. Sorry, Good night. I... I don't... Good night. Wait. Get the car out of the garage. I'm going back to the farm. 
Do you think it's wise? I've got to. Things are getting too hot. I'm going back to the farm and see that Dr. Marsh rushes the job on Superman. Hurry and get the car, Blake. I'm leaving at once. You say Superman got away, Marsh? And you haven't been able to find him? Yeah, Mr. Latimer. After Batman and Robin left, Gus and I, we looked everywhere. In the woods, in the fields, everywhere. You idiots. You blundering fools. It was enough for boys. Shut up, Gus. I'll attend to you later. Marsh. Yeah, Mr. Latimer. What are the chances of Superman recovering from his amnesia? No one can say. Time and care may restore his memory or a sudden shock might do it. On the other hand, he may never recover. Mm, If he ever recovers his memory, my name is Mud. Mine too. He's got to be found and brought back here. And you've got to continue your treatments and... and Till his mind and strength are gone forever. Of course, but how can we find him? No, who knows where he's gone? Yeah, the cops might find him before we do, or Batman and Robin. They'll be looking for Superman, not for a man in ragged overalls who's suffering from amnesia. In that way, we've got to jump on them, and we've got to make the most of it. I'll put some private detectives on the trail. Men I can trust. They'll find Superman. They've got to. Stepping to the telephone, Big George Latimer sets a relentless search underway for Superman. Where is the Man of Steel? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so stand by. Are you in the race? Are you winning out over your friends collecting that new series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep? Don't let anybody get ahead of you, fellow or girl. Get in on the fun when your pals are swapping duplicates. These new Pep comic buttons are real eye-catchers. Eighteen of them, including Flat Top. B.O. Plenty, Mr. Bibb, Superman. Every picture is clear, cut, and bright. Every button is a smart decoration for your jacket or dress or cap. Count yourself in on the fun of collecting this new series of Pep Comic Buttons and get set to collect all 18. All you have to do is to make sure that you're stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's Pep and look inside the package for your prize. That's right. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy these comic buttons anywhere. They're a prize for you from that sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And is Pep a super dish for breakfast? Golden toasted whole wheat flakes, crisp and fresh as can be. Full to the brim with that catchy sunshine flavor. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Rain is still falling from leaden skies as a heavy truck rolls through the night on a glistening black highway. Beside the driver sits Superman, clad in ragged overalls. His forehead is furrowed in deep thought as he tries vainly to remember who he is and what has happened to him. Where are you going, bud? I don't... What did you call me? I didn't call you anything. I just said, where are you going, bud? You called me bud. Somebody else back there on the road called me bud, too. Maybe that's Maybe that's your what? Oh, nothing, nothing. But. But. Hey, you're a funny guy. Hiking along a country road at night and in a rain at that. You don't look like a tramp. You don't talk like one either. I don't? No. Say, uh, where are you headed for? I don't know. You don't know? No, you see, I... I look, uh, but... I'm taking the turn up ahead into Central City. That's as far as I go. Oh. Now, unless you want to go to Central City, you'd better get off at the fork and hitch another ride. Central City. I don't recall ever hearing of it. Then I guess you don't want to go there. Well, here's where I turn. Turn? Oh, oh, yes. Get out here. Thanks for the ride. You're You're welcome. And take it easy, bud. Yes, I will. Thanks again. Good night. So long. Sure am glad to be rid of him. That guy's off his trolley. Shaking his head sympathetically, the truck driver shifts gears and roars off into the night leaving his strange passenger standing in the middle of the road, bareheaded, in the rain, looking about him blankly. What will happen to the man of steel while he gropes vainly for his name and his past? Will Big George Latimer and his henchmen, who alone know how he is dressed and that he has lost his memory, find him and complete their fiendish work? 
Strange and amazing adventures are in store for Superman and for you, fellows and girls. So keep listening. Tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Want to learn to identify birds? Then start collecting those full-color bird pictures that come, one in every package, of Kellogg's Crumbles. 24 different birds in the series with a full description of each one. You'll want to collect them all and trade duplicates with your pals, too, and get the colorful album so you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, the crinkly, sort of sweet and meadow-rich shreds of real whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman's friends and enemies are engaged in a desperate search for him, the Man of Steel quietly sits in jail, a victim of total amnesia. I bet almost every fellow or girl on your block is racing to get all 18 of those terrific new comic buttons in the new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Everybody wants to win out. And so most everybody already has a start on the collection. These new pet comic buttons are real humdingers. Bright colored, clear and sharp looking. They do a swell job of dressing up your jacket or your, or your cap or dress. But don't take my word for it. Get yourself a package of Kellogg's pet and give a look-see. Get a load of Flat Top and Denny Dimwit, Tiny Tim, that rugged picture of Superman, and all the rest of the 18 new and different comic buttons. Then get busy on your collection. It's easy to get these prizes, no trouble at all. You don't have to spend any of your allowance. Don't even send in a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these pet comic buttons anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. That's P-E-P, the sunshine cereal. Pep, the golden toasted whole wheat flakes with that catchy sunshine flavor. Kellogg's Pep, so good for you. Extra amounts of energy vitamin B1 plus good old sunshine vitamin D that helps build strong bones and teeth. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, always get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, a dishonest politician named Big George Latimer and a former Nazi brain specialist named Dr. Marsh tried to cripple Superman's mind by feeding him liquid kryptonite, a strange green glowing metallic substance from the exploded planet on which Superman was born, and which, in the atmosphere of Earth, robs him of all his great strength and power. After the first two treatments, Superman lost his memory, but managed to escape during a violent thunderstorm. And when last seen, he was riding in a truck clad in ragged overalls, not knowing who he was or where he was going. Unaware that Superman and Clark Kent are one and the same person, our friends on the Daily Planet have been searching frantically for Kent. And as we continue now, Editor Perry White is speaking on the phone to Police Inspector Henderson as Lois Lane, girl reporter, enters his office. Listen. Now, look here, Henderson. You've got to arrest Latimer. What do you mean you can't arrest him? He knows where Kent is, and I say so. And Batman says so. The trouble with you is you're afraid of Latimer. Easy, and Chief. Now, just a minute. You listen to me for a change. Henderson. 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 Oh, come. 
confounded he hung up. Well, no wonder the way you talk to him, you shouldn't tell him that he's afraid of Latimer. Well, if he isn't, why doesn't he arrest him? Answer that. Because there's no real evidence that Latimer abducted Clark. Well, Batman says he did. Batman I'm... said he thinks so, and that isn't proof. Oh, no? Well, if Latimer wasn't holding Kent, and maybe Superman, too, in that old mill, why did he shoot down Batman's plane when he was flying over it? Look, Chief, I'm not trying to say that Latimer didn't abduct Clark. Of I'm course you are. I'm just telling you why Henderson can't arrest him. He hasn't got anything on him. Latimer is too clever. Now, now, don't you worry. We'll find Kent, or Batman and Robin will, or, or Candy Myers, or, or the police. They haven't been able to find him yet, and it's almost a week since... I know, I know, I know, but we'll find him, I tell you. Now, come on, Lois, fix your face and put your hat on. Where are going out? Where? Well, first to see the mayor and then to the police commissioner. And then, if necessary, to see the governor. The governor? Latimer may be a big shot in state politics, but I've got some influence around here myself. I'll find Kent if it's the last thing I ever do. Come on. Determined to get action, Perry White starts for the mayor's office to set all possible machinery in motion in the search for the missing Clark Kent. Meanwhile, Big George Latimer is speeding his own machinery in the hunt for the man he knows only as Superman. In the locked library of his palatial estate in Metropolis Heights, the burly politician chews savagely on his cigar as he listens to the report of Al McGuire, head of the McGuire Confidential Detective Service. Now, here's the dope, Mr. Latimer. When this fellow left the farm, he, uh... Oh, by the way, you didn't tell me his name. I know I didn't, McGuire, and I don't intend to. And I think you ought to. I don't think so. He doesn't know his name because he's lost his memory. You don't have to know it either. Well, that's the way it has to be. That's the way. You said you picked up a trail after he got away from the farm. That's right. He was walking along Highway 22 in the rain when a truck driver picked him up and drove him to the fork outside of Central City and let him off. You're sure it was, uh, our man? Positive. The time checks, and the driver says this fellow was tall, well-built, wearing ragged overalls. Says he uh, spoke like an educated man, too. Only kind of crazy. He didn't know where he was going, and he kept asking the driver if he was sure he never saw him before. He's our man, all right. Go on, McGuire. Well, another truck, a milk truck, picked him up at the fork. The milk truck driver tells about the same story the other one did. Our man didn't know where he was going or where he came from. And he kept asking the driver if he'd ever seen him before. He was trying to find out who he was. Where did the truck take him? To Bensonville. A lawyer picked him up in his car there and drove him to Ferndale. Yes? Then what? Well, we uh, had a hard time picking up his trail from there. But I got good detectives working for me, Mr. Latimer. I hire only the best. Yes, I know you've got good men and that you can be depended on to keep your mouth shut. I wouldn't have given you this job. Stop patting yourself on the back and get on with your report. Okay, okay. And now, now, let's see. Your man hitched a ride on a truck doing long-distance hauls. A few miles out of Ferndale, that was. We checked all the trucks and cars that went through Ferndale last night and then contacted all the drivers. I had a man fly all the way to Willow Falls to talk to the driver we wanted. You're getting paid for it. What did this fellow tell you? Well, he said he took our man as far as the state line, then he lost him. Lost him? You mean you haven't been able to pick up his trail again? No, sir. He just disappeared at the state line. That's impossible. You've got to find him. This means everything to me, McGuire. Well, we're doing all we can, You've but You've got I... to find him, I tell you. Put more men on the case. I don't care how much money it costs. Find that man and bring him to me. Yes, sir. I'm doing everything possible, You've but... got to find him quickly. Other people are looking for him, and I can't take the chance of his falling into the hands of the police. If he's brought to Metropolis and identified, I'm sunk. Okay. Now, look, I got a little idea. It might work. It's going to cost some money, though. Maybe $5,000. It'll be okay? Of course. And I tell you, I don't care how much money it costs. Okay, I'll get right on it then. I'll contact all the local cops around where our man disappeared. The cops? Are you crazy, McGuire? I told you I don't want the cops to find him. No, but they might, whether you want them to or not. And if they deliver him to us, that'll be okay. They won't. They'll contact all the missing persons bureaus. Not after they hear my story, they won't. Now, just leave this to me, Mr. Latimer. I know what I'm doing. I hope you do. I do. And I think this stunt will get our man. i got to work fast, though, so I'll be going. Report to you later, Mr. Latimer. <laughs> As Big George Latimer's private detective prepares a trap which he believes will net the missing Superman, the Man of Steel stands on the quiet main street of a small village. Clad in the ragged overalls Latimer and Dr. Marsh put on him, he stares about him blankly, not knowing who he is or where he came from. Constable Toomey, elderly, wiry, coatless, the large star in his vest gleaming in the noonday sun, approaches him. Uh, Howdy, mister. What? Oh, hello. Visiting friends in this village, maybe? Why, no, I, I don't think so. What you doing here, then? I, I don't know. You don't, huh? What's your name? My name? Yeah, your name. Why, you got one, ain't you? Uh, you sure, I, I must have. I, those men in, in the trucks, they, they, they called me Bud. That's it, Bud. Bud what? Why, uh, uh... Got any means of occupation? 
Occupation? You mean that Bad I... job. Got a job. Why, I don't know, Constable. I, I can't seem to remember. I... I thought not. You're a vagrant. I'm going to lock you up. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. You can't arrest me. I, I didn't do it. That's you just see... it. You're a vagrant. You going to come along peaceable like, or do I have to put the handcuffs on oh, but you? But you can't arrest me, Constable. Please, I, I've got to find out who That'll I am. That'll be all I... out of you. Come along. But this isn't going to do oh, a bit. Oh. Please. Protesting vainly, Superman is led to the village jail by the constable. What will happen now? Something startling happens, as we'll discover in just a moment. So stand by. Say, if you like knowing what's what and what's fun, take a look at those brand new pep comic buttons that you can get, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Because unless you start collecting them, you're going to be cut out of the running when your friends are working up their collections and swapping duplicates, and you'd sure hate to miss out. These new pep comic buttons are real eye-catchers, for one thing. The colors are bright, the pictures of familiar funny sheet characters are clear and true to life. The buttons are one grand way to dress up your jacket or your dress or cap. And here's something else. There are 18 new and different buttons in this new series. That means that your fun keeps on and on. You get the excitement of collecting a breath of breeze, Mr. Bibbs, Uncle Avery, Superman, and all the rest. So hop to it. Get busy right now. Make sure that you're stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's Pep and go to town on your collection. That's the only way you can get these comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. They come only as prizes, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Pep's a prize when it comes to good eating, too. Gold and toasted whole wheat flakes that are loaded with catchy sunshine flavor. So for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now back to the adventures of Superman. In his small police station, Constable Toomey is telling his deputy, Ed North, about the vagrant he has just locked in the station's single cell. What do you think about that feller I just locked up, Ed? He don't seem like no vagrant. He looks like one of those turn over hours. He said he didn't have a job, didn't he? Yeah. He talks like educated young fella. Claims he can't remember nothing. Where he comes from, why he was hitchhiking, nothing. It's so? Yeah. I've heard about cases like that. Fellas losing their memories. Am, uh, uh, amnesia, I think they call it. It's right. Yeah. Tell you what, Ed, I'm going to call the county sheriff's office. Have a description of this fellow. Go to the missing persons bureaus all over the country. Now, wait till I see who this is. Village Jail, Constable Toomey. Uh, this is Frank McGuire of the McGuire Confidential Detective Agency in Metropolis, Constable. A uh, detective agency in Metropolis, you say? That's right. You may be able to help me, Constable, and at the same time, make yourself $5,000. 5000 What are you talking about? I see. I'm looking for a young man who disappeared from his home in Metropolis last night. He was suffering from amnesia. That means loss of memory. Oh, I know what that means. Tell me more about this fellow. What's he look like? He's tall, dark, well-built. Uh-huh. What is it, Constable? Oh, and when he disappeared, he was wearing a suit of ragged overalls. Ragged overalls, eh? Yeah, they belong to his gardener. Uh-huh. You see, Constable, this young man belongs to a rich and very fine family. Uh-huh. They're anxious to keep this out of the papers. Oh, yeah, sure. They feel that the publicity might embarrass the young man when he recovers. You understand. Yeah, right? I... Well, that's why I've been authorized to offer $5,000 for his apprehension with the understanding that it will be given no publicity. Uh-huh. Now, he was last seen about 40 miles east of your town. Yeah. So in case you happen to run across him, let me know, and you'll be $5,000 richer. Goodbye, now. Uh, wait a minute, mister. I've got this fella. What? You've got him? Yeah, I've got him in my jail this minute. You see, I Does was... anybody else know you got him? No, 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 not yet. I was just going... Fine, now you wait right there, Constable. I'll be there in two hours with the young man's father and with $5,000 in cash for you, okay? Oh, I'll say it's okay. Hurry right along, mister. That young fella will be right here waiting for you. Wow! $5,000, Ed! I am rich! <laughs> Chortling gleefully, Constable Toomey visualizes the $5,000 soon to be placed in his hands. Unaware that the prisoner he has promised to deliver is Superman. Apparently, Private Detective McGuire's clever trick has worked. And Superman is about to be returned to Big George Latimer and the Nazi brain specialist, Dr. Marsh. What will happen? A great deal happens in tomorrow's thrilling and surprising episode, fellows and girls. So be sure to be with us. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman.
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, what goes with the kids in other countries? What do they look like and how do they dress? Well, Kellogg has the answer with the cutout Dolls of All Nations on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. It's swell fun cutting them out and changing their costumes and collecting all six countries in the series, like uh, Norway and Holland and China. Two cutout dolls with native costumes on every package. And only on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles, the only cereal made in crinkly, sort of sweet and mellow rich shreds of real whole wheat. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Crumbles, and be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman continues to evade his captors, as Clark Kent, he provokes a startling and sensational course of events. Who's in the know? Who's in the swim nowadays? Why, the fellow or girl who's got a good start on a collection of comic buttons. That new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out. This is something that nobody wants to miss. Eighteen new and different pictures of real funny paper characters. Done up in full color on eye-catching buttons that look terrific. Pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. Eighteen of them in all, including Wilmer and, and Tilda, B.O. Plenty and Superman. Eighteen bright-colored, gleaming pep comic buttons to collect and swap duplicates with your friends. That's something to look forward to. Getting a, a new comic button, I mean. You know, every time you open a, a new package of Kellogg's Pep. So get a good start on your collection of this brand new series of Pep comic buttons. First off, see to it that there's plenty of Kellogg's Pep around. That's the only way you can get these exciting prizes. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere, but in every package of Pep you open, there's your brand new comic button. And there's something else, too. A terrifically delicious dish for breakfast. Golden toasted whole wheat flakes, delicious enough for any morning appetite to latch on to. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pap. And now, the adventures of Superman. In an attempt to damage Superman's brain and make him helpless... A dishonest politician named George Latimer and a former Nazi concentration camp doctor fed the man of steel liquid kryptonite, a strange element which has the power to rob him of all his strength. After two treatments, Superman lost his memory, but managed to escape from Latimer's hideout before the treatments could be continued. Wearing ragged overalls, not knowing who he was or where he was going, Superman wandered until he found himself in a small village where he was arrested and locked up as a vagrant. Private detectives employed by Latimer located him there. And as we continue now, Al McGuire, head of the detective agency, and Big George Latimer have arrived at the little village police station and are talking with Constable Toomey. Latimer is posing as Superman's father. Listen. Please, Constable, where is my son? Well, I got him locked in a cell, Mr... Um... Latham, George yeah. Latham. Will you take me to him, please? I'm terribly anxious to see him. Sure, I'll bet you are. Well, come this way, Mr. Latham. Thank you. Come along, McGuire. It's in the bag, Mr. Latimer. This fellow is a uh, man. I'm sure he is. It's a good thing Mr. McGuire called when he did, Mr. Latham, because I was just going to phone the county sheriff and have your son's description wired to all the missing persons bureaus. That would have got it in all the papers. Mr. McGuire says you uh, want to keep this quiet, like. Yes, I do, Constable. Yeah. You see, my son is very sensitive, and the publicity about his temporary loss of memory would embarrass him afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Sure, I know. Poor fella. Well, here we are. I'll just open the cell door. Where is he? Why, he... Jerusalem, he ain't here. Now, look here, Constable. If you're trying to put something oh, over no, on me... Oh, no, why, he's helped me. 
I locked him in here myself. There ain't no way he could have got out. Holy mackerel, look at this. Uh, what? What is it, McGuire? These three end bars, look at them. Pull up. Suffering catfish. Why, they're twisted like pretzels. And that's how he got out. He bent the bars and... Hey, no, wait, these bars are iron. They're at least three inches thick. Uh, ain't no living man could twist them bars that way. Listen, it was that fella Superman. Superman? Nonsense. This fellow, uh, my son, is very strong. Exceedingly strong. You're not kidding, Mr. La- Mr. Latham. He must be the strongest man in the world. I can't believe it. Look at them bars. I, I ain't seen nothing to beat this in all my born days. Never mind, Constable. We're wasting time. We've got to find my son, McGuire. Now, just a minute. What's this? What? There's something written on the floor. It looks, looks like it was scrawled with a nail. Oh? Listen to this. Sorry, I... Had to break out, but I didn't do anything wrong, and I have to find out who I am. The well, young fellow must have written that. Yes. Get busy and look for him, McGuire. He can't be far away. Right, I'm on my way. You too, Constable. I'll pay you $10,000 if you find him and bring him to me. $10,000? That's right. Now get busy. I must find him. I must. <laughs> As Big George Latimer urges on the hunt for Superman, a friendly motorist has driven the Man of Steel to the town of Gainesville, 50 miles north. Clad in his ragged overalls, a blank expression in his eyes, Superman wanders the streets, hoping someone will recognize him. Finally, as he saunters beside a high board fence, he sees a police officer approaching. Fearing he will be arrested again, he turns swiftly to the high fence, vaults over it, and finds himself at the edge of a baseball field on which some 20 men in uniform are practicing before a small, empty wooden grandstand. Two men, their backs turned to Superman, stand watching the practice. One, stocky, bow-legged, and gray-haired, wearing a uniform, is talking. Look at them guys. They think they was at a tea party. Now, why do we can't win any ball games? Come on, you guys! Show some pepper out there! The Colts need more than pepper, Shorty. You fellas could use a good pitcher, too. You reporters know everything, don't you, Harris? Maybe you can tell me where to find a good pitcher. Wish you could, Shorty. I'm getting tired of beginning every story where the Colts lost again last night. Oh, rub it in, wise guy. Sorry, didn't mean to. This Bush League club is getting me down. Unless we start winning some ball games and get the fans coming to the park again, I'll be out on my ear. Hope not. Hey, look out, Shorty! <laughs> Shouting a warning, the reporter ducks as a ball driven by a batter screams on the line straight at the unseen shorty's head. Quick as a flash, Superman leaps forward and catches the ball in his bare hand, an inch in front of the startled little manager's face. Holy smokes! Thanks, partner. You saved me a busted nose. You sure did. That was some catch. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I would. That ball was going a mile a minute. Hey, where'd you come from? Wish I knew where I came from. Huh? What'd you say? Uh, nothing. Hey, I... you! Give me the other arms! Let's have the ball! Oh, God, excuse me. I've got the ball still. Here you are! Jeepers, shorty. Did you see that? Oh, hey, snakes! Hey. I never saw a ball thrown so hard in my life. What are you trying to do? Kill me? Look, son. Where'd you learn to throw a ball like that? I don't know. Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Are you kidding? I played a lot of ball in my day. I was even up in the big leagues for a spell, and I saw all the stars. Ruth, Johnson, Imagine, all of them. But I never seen anybody throw a ball as hard as you do. Hey, that goes for me, too. Really? Look, mister, do you ever play professional baseball? Who, me? Why, I don't know. You see... I... Oh, hold everything. I got a hunch. Come on with me, bud. Oh, wait. Uh, what's your name? Well, everyone seems to call me Bud. Okay. Come on, bud. Where to? Out of that pitching box. I'm going to let you throw a few of those fireballs to my players. If my hutch is right, no, I don't even dare think about it. Come on. Holy smokes. I tell you, that guy's got a cannon up his sleeve. I never saw a ball pitch that fast, Shorty. Why, you can't even see it travel. It's just a blur. Uh-huh. I can't believe my eyes. He's twice as fast as Bobby Fallon. He's got perfect control. Want me to pitch some more, Mr. Taylor? I want more, bud, just to make sure I'm not dreaming. Okay, I'm enjoying this. Here goes. Wow! Did you see Hafey swing at that? Before he was halfway around, the ball was in the catcher's mitt. Yeah. That enough, Mr. Taylor? I'll say it's enough. That's all the game tonight, boys. Go get your showers. Look, but, uh, put me out of my misery quick. How'd you like a job pitching for the Colts? Why, I don't know. I'll pay a hundred a week. And unless I'm crazy, I'll sell you to the big lids before the season is over for a hundred grand. 
and I'll split the hundred grand with you. What do you say? That's a very fair offer, bud. Well, is it a deal? Yes, yes, it's a deal. Oh, boy, this is terrific. Just terrific. Shaking the outstretched hand of the delighted Shorty Taylor, Superman, having no idea of his real name or his past, accepts a job as pitcher on the minor league Gainesville Colts. What will this lead to? We'll return in a moment to find out, so stand by. Don't get left. Don't be the only fellow or girl in your crowd who hasn't got a good start on his collection of comic buttons in that new series Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Be sure that you're in on the fun, because you wouldn't want to be left out of the cold when your friends are all trading duplicates. Besides, these new pep comic buttons are something that you'll really want to have. Bright, colorful pictures of familiar comic strip characters like Daisy and the Winnie Winkle twins and Little Joe and Superman himself. Every single one of these 18 different buttons looks just as real as in the funny papers. But don't take my word for it. Open up a package of Kellogg's Pep. Find your new comic button, and you'll see what I mean. That's how easy it is to get these exclusive prizes. You don't have to spend any of your allowance. Don't even have to send in a box stop. And you can't buy these pep comic buttons anywhere. But every package of pep you open is a prize package for you. Gives you a load of prize eating at breakfast, too. Kellogg's Pep is called the Sunshine Cereal. These golden toasted whole wheat flakes are full to the brim with catchy sunshine flavor that sure hits the spot in the morning. For prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the Sunshine Cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Suffering from loss of memory, Superman accidentally became a pitcher for a small-town minor league baseball team. And a week later, in Metropolis, Cub reporter Jimmy Olsen rushes excitedly into the office of editor Perry White. Mr. White, Mr. White, it's him. What? Oh, it's you, Jim. What's the idea of rushing into my office like a wild man? It's him, I tell you. It's him, Leaping Lizard. Stop shouting! Who's who? This Bush League ball player. Ball player? Yeah, Bud Smith. The one who pitched three no-hit, no-run games last week and hit all those home runs. Will you pull he, yourself together he, and make sense? Well, I, now look I, at you. So excited you can't talk. But listen... I'm ashamed of you, Jim. But, Mr. Uh, Clark Kent missing for almost two weeks. We might never see him again. But look, And I, you go crazy about some Bush League ball player. But, but... It's Mr. Kent. Who's Mr. Kent? This this ball player, Bud Smith. He's Mr. Kent. Are you out of your mind? No, I... I no, no, wait, wait. Take it easy. Sit down. Bud Smith is Mr. Kent, I tell you. Here, see for yourself. Our local correspondent in Gainesville just sent in this picture. It's from the Gainesville Bugle. Look at it. What? Why, it does look like Kent. It is Mr. Kent. Jeepers, Mr. White. No, no, it can't be. Well, it is, I tell you. Well, he hasn't got his glasses on, but you can wait, see... Wait, Bud Smith, sensational new pitcher for the Colts, set a world's record last night when he hurled his third consecutive no-hit, no-run game. Beside this amazing feat, Smith hit three home runs and three times at bat. No, no, this is ridiculous, Jim. Kent's not a ball player. It's him, I tell you. I mean, he... Nonsense. I'll admit there's a startling resemblance between this fellow Bud Smith and Kent. He, but... He's Mr. Kent. I know he is. I can't understand it, but the fellow in that picture is Mr. Kent. I'm going right out to now, Gainesville. Now, wait. And... No, you can stay here if you want, but I'm going out to Gainesville. Now, wait, I said. I'm going with you. You are? Yes. It's ridiculous. It's impossible. The longer I look at this photograph... Jim, where till I get my hat? We're going to Gainesville and see this Bud Smith face to face at once. Grabbing his hat, Perry White leaves the Daily Planet with Jimmy Olsen en route to Gainesville to see the sensational baseball pitcher, Bud Smith. Will the sight of his closest friends restore Superman's memory? Apart from his loss of memory, there is one great difference between this Clark Kent and the one Perry White and Jimmy Olsen knew. Do you know what that difference is? And will it fool White and Jimmy? And what of Big George Latimer and his relentless detectives? Have they picked up the trail of the Man of Steel? Don't miss Monday's thrill-packed episode, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. 
Now that the weather is fine and the birds are back, how's about starting your collection of full-color bird pictures that come, one in every package, of Kellogg's Crumbles? You'll learn to identify all 24 in the series, like the Oriole and the Scarlet Tanager, and you can trade duplicates with your friends. And look on the side of every Crumbles package for instructions on sending in to get the colorful album so that you can paste in your collection. Tell Mom that you want Crumbles, the only cereal made in crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, McGuire, the villainous George Latimer's private detective, is convinced he has identified Superman beyond question of doubt. On your mark, get set, go! Yes, on your mark for the slick comic buttons you can collect, a brand new series of 18, one button in each package of Kellogg's Pep. Get set to be champ over all the other collectors in your crowd. Remember, 18 of these comic buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap mean that you've had a successful campaign. Are you ready? Then go! Go after characters that are making comic page history, all in bright color on sturdy white enamel buttons. Characters like B.O. Plenty... Flat Top, Denny Dimwit, and the Winnie Winkle Twins, and the one and only Superman. All big wigs of the comic strip world. And it's a load of fun due to swap duplicates with your friends. Helps you complete your collection. Now, you might think that these swell comic buttons would be hard to get or, or maybe expensive. But they don't cost you a single penny. Not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But you'll find your exclusive prize in every package of Kellogg's Pep. That's P-E-P. The cool and catchy tasting whole wheat flakes. All crisp and fresh, all keen tasting with cool milk. Good for you, too, with an extra amount of energy vitamin B1 to help you keep going through the day and added sunshine vitamin D. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, George Latimer, a crooked politician, enlisted the aid of a former German concentration camp doctor in an effort to destroy Superman by feeding him liquid kryptonite, a strange element from the exploded planet on which he was born, and which, in the atmosphere of Earth, robs him of all his strength and curious powers. Superman escaped before the treatments could be completed, but not before suffering a loss of memory. Dressed in ragged overalls, not knowing who he was or where he belonged. He wandered about until finally, in the little town of Gainesville, he found himself on a baseball field. And under the name of Bud Smith, became the star pitcher for the local team. News of his sensational playing reached the Metropolis Daily Planet, where cub reporter Jimmy Olsen saw his photograph and insisted it was the missing Clark Kent, who, as we know, is really Superman. With their fingers crossed, Jimmy and Editor Perry White caught the first plane to Gainesville. And as we join them now, they are sitting tensely in the small wooden grandstand, which is filled to capacity. It's almost game time, and the crowd is impatiently awaiting the appearance of the teams. Listen. Gosh, Mr. White, why don't the players come out? They'll be out in a minute, Jim. Relax. Relax? How can I relax? No, here they come. Hey, I don't see Mr. Kidd. He's scheduled to pitch today. You mean that man, Bud Smith, the one who looks like Kent. Well, this Bud Smith is Mr. Kent, I'm sure. Well, I'll admit it's a remarkable resemblance, but... Oh, wait, Jim. Here comes an announcement. The batteries for today's game for Central City, Hanson and Barry. For Gainesville, Smith and Olenski. Oh, Smith had a point, Look, Mr. White, there he is. Where? Walking out to the pitching box. See him? Oh, oh. Oh, yes. Hey, he does look like Kent at that. It is Mr. Kent. Where are you going, Jim? I'm going down to the field. No, no, you're not. Now you sit down. 
You want to get thrown out of the park? But, but I... Sit down, I said. In the first place, that fellow couldn't be Kent because, well, Kent's a reporter, not a professional baseball player. I know, but just the same. Quiet. The umpire's dusting off the plate. They're going to start the game. That pitcher moves. Everything about him. He's just like Mr. Ken. Quiet. Great Caesar, what speed. I couldn't even see the ball. Jeepers. I never saw a ball travel so fast. Neither did I, Jim. Nobody can hit that speed. See a kind of blur that time, but that's all. That's incredible. What? Why the ball travels as if it were shot out of a howitzer. Here comes the next batter. Watch this. Whoa! Did you see that, Jim? By the time the batter swung, the catcher was throwing the ball back to Smith. Yeah, he's sensational. Look at that. Amazing! Absolutely amazing! One like a rusty gate. Be Mr. Ken? Bud Smith has struck out 20 men in a row, Jim. He strikes this one out. He did it, Jim! He did it! He sure did. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now, what's this? Bud Smith has just struck out his 21st straight batter. That means he has set two new world records. One for consecutive strikeouts, and the other for most men struck out in a single game. Leaping lizards! As you know, as you know, Bud Smith set another world record here the other night when he pitched his third consecutive no-hit, no-run game and hit a home run each time at bat. Oh, what a pitcher. Well, Jim, are you satisfied now? Or do you still think that Bud Smith is Clark Kent? Yeah, I don't know, Mr. White. Maybe it is impossible, but I still say that man is Mr. Kent. But, but... Oh, no. How could you even think of Kent as the greatest pitcher in the world? He's no athlete. Why, the whole thing's ridiculous. But, come on, Jim. Where are you going? The game isn't over yet. It's almost over. I want to be down at the gate when the players leave the field. I want a close look at Bud Smith. But why? You just said he couldn't be, Mr. Kent. Never mind what I said. Are you coming along, Olsen? Yeah, just a minute. He's just coming to bat. I want to see him hit again. Never mind that. Come on. Follow me to the dressing rooms. Players have to come through this door to go to the dressing room, Jim. You stand right here. Okay. Cheapers. Smith had 26 strikeouts. Yeah. And he would have had 27, mm-hmm. all that's possible. The last guy hadn't dodged and popped the ball up by accident. Yes, I know. Seems crazy, but... Golly, Chief. Do you think this Bud Smith could be Mr. Kent? Well, frankly, Jim, I don't know what to think. Doesn't seem possible, and yet... Well, we'll know in a minute. Yeah. Gee whiz, it seems kind of like a dream. Oh, wait, here come the players. Uh-huh. And there's Bud Smith. Chief. Chief, it is Mr. Kent. I'd swear it is. So help me, I think you're right, Jim. I know I am. I just know it. Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent, look who's here. Their faces beaming, Jimmy Olsen and Perry White hurry forward to greet Clark Kent, who, unknown to them, has lost his memory. Will Kent recognize White and Jimmy and so regain his memory? We'll return in a moment to find out, so stand by. Say, you know how after you've been reading the funnies for a while, you get to know those funnies characters to work up a real fondness for some of them? Well, that's why there's such a big welcome for the brand new series of comic buttons you get, thanks to Kellogg's Pet. Yes, there's a different comic strip character on the button you'll find in every pet package. And there are 18 different characters in the new series. Folks that you know real well, like Little Joe and Fat Stuff and Tiny Tim and Superman. Now, you never know which button you'll find inside a package of pet, but you can always be sure it's one of those gleaming white enamel jobs with a true-to-life picture of a famous funny strip character in full color. And it's always fun to swap duplicates with your friends till you get the complete set of 18 to pin on your jacket or dresser cap. Now, remember, to get those swell pet comic buttons, you don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. They come only as exclusive prizes, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep. 
And here's another point about Pep that's worth remembering. Those toasted flakes of good whole wheat, those flakes with a wonderful sunshine flavor, are a prize treat in themselves. So for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now back to the adventures of Superman. At the entrance to the players' clubhouse of the Gainesville Ballpark, Editor Perry White and Jimmy Olsen are hurrying forward to greet Clark Kent, who, under the name of Bud Smith, has just pitched a sensational shutout game. Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent, look who's here! Kent! It is you, Kent! By George, it is you! For a brief moment as he sees the beaming faces of his two close friends, the clouded, dazed look in Superman's eyes begins to clear away. He starts to smile, almost to remember. And then... The cloud closes down on his mind again. He looks at White and Jimmy as if they are total strangers. Uh, hello. Oh, what's the matter, Kent? Don't you know us? Why, no, I, I don't think... It's I... me, Mr. Kent. Me, Jim Olson, and Mr. White. Wait. What did you call me? Well, Mr. Kent. You mean you aren't... No, look here, Kent. I'm afraid you made a mistake. My name isn't Kent. It's Bud Smith. I think... You think? You must be, Mr. Kent. I know you are. Jimmy. Gosh, look at me, Mr. Kent. You must know me. Sorry, son. You made a mistake. No, I haven't. I'm sure. Listen. Oh, it's no use, Jim. I'm afraid this is a case of mistaken identity. But, but I'm sure. Oh, can't you tell by his voice? That isn't Kent's voice. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Guess you're right, Chief. Sorry, son. Got to run along now. So long. So long. Uh, Goodbye, Smith. Wonderful game you pitched today. Thanks. See you again sometime. Well, that's that, Jim. Just an amazing resemblance, that's all. Yeah. And I thought he... Gosh, now what are we going to do, Mr. White? I was sure we'd found Mr. Kent at last. Yeah, so was I until I heard his voice. But, well, there was something familiar about his voice. Did you notice it, Jim? I don't know, and I don't care. All I want to do is find Mr. Kent, but... Now, I... I don't think we're ever going to. Well, we won't find him around here, that's certain. Well, come on, son. Let's go back to Metropolis. This trip's turned out to be a wild goose chase. Turning for one more look after the tall, broad-shouldered Bud Smith, Jimmy Olsen tears in his eyes, shakes his head, and follows Perry White toward the airport. But although White and Jimmy think their trip was a wild goose chase, another man who witnessed the game does not feel his time was wasted. This man, tall, thin, unobtrusive-looking, hurries from the ballpark to the telegraph office. And a few moments later, as White and Jimmy are disconsolately boarding their plane for the return trip to Metropolis, an urgent telegram is speeding over the eastbound wires. To George Latimer, Poplar Road, Metropolis Heights. Believe I have located our man. Come to Gainesville at once and identify him. Signed, McGuire. McGuire, Big George Latimer's detective, believes he has found Superman in Gainesville. And in a very short time, Latimer, the one man who has the means and the desire to cripple Superman's mind and body forever, will be flying to Gainesville. What will happen now as Perry White and Jimmy Olsen return to Metropolis, fooled by Superman's voice, which is different from the voice he uses as Clark Kent? Don't miss tomorrow's excitement-packed episode, fellows and girls. Tune in. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. When you see a cardinal or a hummingbird, can you identify it? Well, you can if you're collecting the full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. You'll get a kick out of swapping duplicates with your friends and collecting all 24 pictures in the series. Get yourself the colorful album, too, to paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and mellow-rich shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. 
And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the world's largest network serving 400 radio stations. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman has Bud Smith, the new and amazing baseball find, and trains for Metropolis. Unaware that George Latimer, his arch enemy and possessor of the deadly kryptonite, has picked up his trail and is at the very door of his compartment. You know, some fellows and girls get in on all the fun, and being one of those yourself, you want to get in on the fun of collecting that swell new series of pep comic buttons in packages of Kellogg's Pep. It's a game that's full of surprises because you never know which comic button you'll find in your next pep package. All you know is that you'll find a gleaming white enamel button with a picture of one of your favorite comic strip characters to pin on your jacket or your dress or cap. And collecting these swell buttons gets more and more exciting as you get closer and closer to the full lineup of all 18. For instance, have you got your Winnie Winkle Twins button? And Gravel Gertie and Tilda and Superman? Well, get in on the fun of swapping duplicates and help complete your collection that way. And remember, you can't buy these buttons anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. Just keep supplied with pep and look for your prize inside every package you open. Keep on the lookout for a grand breakfast dish, too. A cool treat. Cool, crisp flakes of delicious whole wheat in your bowl with cool milk. Really something to cheer about. And good for you with an extra amount of energy vitamin B1 plus sunshine vitamin D that helps build strong bones and teeth. For prize-eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. Hating and fearing Superman, a dishonest politician named Big George Latimer, tried to damage his mind and make him forever helpless by forcibly feeding him kryptonite, a strange element which robs Superman of all his strength and superhuman powers. Although the Man of Steel managed to escape before the treatments could be completed, his memory was gone. Wearing ragged overalls, not knowing who he was, he became the star pitcher for a small-town baseball team, and under the name of Bud Smith, performed so sensationally that news of his exploits reached Metropolis. Editor Perry White and cub reporter Jimmy Olsen almost identified him, but when Superman failed to recognize them, they decided they had been mistaken. However, Al McGuire, a detective hired by Latimer, was on Superman's track. And as we continue now, Latimer has arrived at the hotel in the small town of Gainesville, where he has come in response to an urgent wire from McGuire. Listen. I got here as fast as I could, McGuire. Where is he? He's not far from this hotel, Mr. Latimer. And I think he's the man you want. You think? Well, I'm practically certain, but I want you to identify him. I never saw him before, you know. That's right. Well, show him to me. I'll tell you in a second if he's the man. Now, take it easy. We'll have to wait a few minutes till the game's over. What game? The baseball game. He's pitching tonight. He's what? Oh, I forgot you didn't know. Your man's pitcher for the Gainesville Colts. That's a Bush League team in this town. Baseball pitcher? That's ridiculous. This fellow isn't a professional ball player. You've made a mistake, McGuire. No, I don't think so, Mr. Latimer. Your man's trail led to this town. He was wearing ragged overalls when he got here, and he answers the description you gave me to a T. You're sure? Positive. Look, uh, he uses the name of Bud Smith. That mean anything to you? No. Nothing at all. The baseball pitcher. Brother, what a pitcher. Out of this world. You know he pitched four no-hit, no-run games in a row, set a world's record. He did, eh? Yeah, I saw him work yesterday. I never saw such speed in my life. It's where he had a cannon up his sleeve. The batters couldn't touch him. I see. Terrific hitter, too. He knocks out a home run every time at bat. Yesterday he got four, and did he wear those balls? Wow! I think they're traveling yet. Hmm. You know, McGuire, maybe you haven't made a mistake. I'm beginning to think he is our man. I'm pretty sure he is. Come on. 
Take me to him, McGuire. I've got to make sure if he is. But, Mr. Latimer, like I told you, we've got to wait till the game is over. Why? Because there are thousands of people at the ballpark. We can't get near them. But we might lose them. Don't worry. i got a man watching them. He'll phone us as soon as the game is over and he finds out where Smith goes. Okay, if you insist. But I tell you, we've got to work fast, McGuire, because if he is our man, he should recover his memory. I guess that would be bad for you, huh, Mr. Latimer? Yes. Worse than you can imagine. Hey, look, Mr. Latimer, just who is this guy? As I told you before, that's none of your business. Maybe. Just the same, I'd like to know. Forget it. I can't help being curious about a guy who can bust out of a jail by twisting iron bars three inches thick like pretzels. Look, McGuire. You can throw a baseball twice as fast as Walter Johnson or Bobby Feller ever threw it. McGuire, there's an old saying you might remember. What's that? Curiosity once killed a cat. Oh, now listen, Mr. Latimer. The phone. Maybe it's our man. Answer it. Okay. Hello? It's him, all right. Yeah, John, what's the dope? Oh, it is, huh? Now, what about Smith? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, swell, John, stick around. So long. Well, is the game over? Yeah. Where's Smith? He went home to the rooming house where most of the ball players live. Do you know where that is? Sure, over on West Elm Street. Let's go. Uh, just a minute. I want to take this box along with me. All right, let's go. Hey, what's in that box? That's my business. Looks heavy as a lead box. It is lead. Come on. But look, what... I warned you before, McGuire. Don't get too curious. Now let's go see this Matt Smith. That's Smith's room and house over there at the corner, Mr. Latimer. Good. Let's... Now wait. My assistant ought to be around here someplace. Oh, here he comes. Seems to be in a hurry. Hope nothing's wrong. I will know in a minute. What's up, John? I was just going to the corner to phone you, Mr. McGuire. Uh-oh. Why? Bud Smith's gone. What? Gone where? He's on his way to Metropolis. To Metropolis? Yeah, the Colts sold him yesterday to the Metropolis Titans for $100,000. I just got the dope from the local newspaper reporter. I'm not surprised. This is disastrous. Charlie Taylor, he's the manager and part owner of the Colts. He left with Smith just a few minutes ago. But for where? I told you, Metropolis. Yes, but how are they going there? By plane? By train? How? Well, I don't know that, sir. I... You don't know? What's the matter with you, John? What kind of a detective are you? Well, I didn't wait to find out. As soon as I saw Smith and Shorty leave and heard what happened, I ran out to phone you. Great Lucifer. Now, how are we oh, going wait, to... Mr. Latimer. Look, John, there are a couple of ball players sitting on the rooming house porch. Maybe they know how Smith and Taylor are traveling. I'll beat it up there and ask them. Go ahead, step on it. Okay, Mr. McGuire, hold everything. Well, John? They're going by train. It's midnight limited. Midnight? What time is it now? Let's see. Eight minutes to twelve. There's a taxi at the corner. Come on, McGuire. Wait with you. Hey, but look. What's the rush? We can have a minute. If Smith gets to Metropolis, he might be recognized. Then I'll be done for. We've got to get him before he gets there. There's a limit. Come on, McGuire, hurry. I'm afraid we'll, we'll never make it, Mr. Latimer. We've got to make it. Gotcha. Come on. With goes. We're too late. No, we're not. Keep running. Yeah, but the, the doors are closed. Never mind that. Swing out of the observation car. Come on. Racing madly down the platform, big George Latimer and Al McGuire seize the iron grill of the observation car on the departing limited and pull themselves pantingly aboard. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, the news is traveling like lightning. That good news about the brand new series of comic buttons in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Superman listeners tell their friends until everybody's in on the excitement. And no wonder collecting these new pep comic buttons is like a swell new game. Eighteen new and different comic strip characters done up in full color on gleaming white buttons that look mighty slick pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. And all the while, you get the surprise of finding out which button's inside every package of pep you open. And you get the fun of swapping duplicates with your pals. You'll want to collect Mama Destras, Gravel Gertie, the Winnie Winkle Twins, Superman, and lots of other big wigs in the comic strip world. Which is why you'll want plenty of packages of Kellogg's Pep. 
Because that's the only way you can get these new comic buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a buck stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. But there's an exciting prize in every package of Kellogg's Pep. There's good eating, too, because these are the crisp whole wheat flakes with the keen, catchy flavor that gives breakfast a lift. Yes, sir, you'll like Pep, and you'll like the prizes in packages of P.E.P. The sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. In a compartment on the Limited, en route to Metropolis, Superman, wearing a new business suit, sits with Shorty Taylor, the stocky, gray-haired manager and part owner of the minor league Gainesville Colts. As we join them now, Shorty is in high spirits, but Superman, still vainly searching his clouded mind for the secret of his real identity, seems far away. <laughs> yes, sir, what? First time I saw you pitch, I said I'd sell it to the big leagues before the season was over, remember? Huh? I said I'd get $100,000 for you, too, and I'd give you half of it. And that's just what happened. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. It was a lucky day for both of us when you walked out of the Colts field, wasn't it? Huh? Uh, what's that? I said it was a lucky day. Say, what's the matter with you, bud? Huh? Who, me? Yeah, You. Yeah, I've been listening to a word I've been saying. Oh, yes, I... You come I, to think but you haven't cracked a smile since I gave you the big news. Well... Aren't you glad you're collecting 50 grand and going up to the big time? Oh, sure, sure I am, shorty. Well, you certainly don't act it. You just keep on sitting there like you always do, as, as if you're a thousand miles away. I'm sorry, I, I, I guess I was just thinking. Thinking? About what? Oh, who I am and... Who you are? I'll tell you who you are. You're Bud Smith, that's who. The greatest pitcher and home run hitter that ever lived. I wish I could be sure of that. Take my word for it. Well, I've seen all the great pitchers in the last 30 years. Matty Alexander, Johnson, Hubble, all of them. And I'm telling you, you're better than any of them in their best days. Well, thanks, Shorty. You're very flattering, but I wasn't referring to my pitching. I was talking about my... my name. Your name? What do you mean? Well, you see, Shorty, I... Oh, what's the use? I'll just have to work this out by myself. Work what out? Look, bud. Just what is eating you? Oh, nothing. Forget it, Shorty. I'm just tired, I guess. Sure, sure, yeah. And I'll bet inside you're pretty excited about going up to the big time. Even if you don't show it. Huh? Look, I'll go back to my compartment and you go to sleep now, bud. I'll wake you up in the morning before we get to Metropolis. Okay. I am rather sleepy. Sure, see you in the morning, pal. All right. Good night, Shorty. Good night, bud. Closing the door of Superman's compartment, Shorty Taylor walks down the aisle of the train to his own compartment. And as he enters it, big George Latimer and Al McGuire step from the smoking compartment at the end of the car and start swiftly and quietly up the deserted aisle. As they approach Superman's door, Latimer takes the lead box from under his arm and slips the catch from the lid. The lurching of the train jars the lid up for a brief instant, revealing the jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite within. A strange metallic substance torn from the exploded planet on which Superman was born and which, when brought within ten feet of him in the atmosphere of Earth, robs him of every ounce of strength. Once more, Superman's two arch enemies, Big George Latimer and the Kryptonite, are about to strike. What will happen? We'll find out in tomorrow's thrill-packed episode, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, here's how you can learn to identify the birds that have come back with a fine weather. Start collecting the full-color bird pictures from packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. Boy, is it fun. You'll get a kick out of collecting all 24 in the series and trading duplicates with your pals. And send for the colorful album so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. Ask Mom to get you some Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg Scrumbles, and be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the world's largest network, serving 400 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System.
The mutual broad... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman comes face to face with George Latimer, his arch enemy and sole possessor of the deadly kryptonite. Say, if you got seven or eight or nine of the new series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Or maybe you're even closer to having your complete collection of all 18 comic buttons in the new series. Everybody's in on the race to see who can get most of these comic buttons first. And everybody gets a kick out of collecting the characters that are making comic strip history. Like Maul Winkle and Daisy, B.O. Plenty and Flat Top, Tiny Tim and a Breath of Breeze, and Superman. Each in bright color on a gleaming white enamel button. If it's brand new in your collection, you pin it with the others on your jacket or your dress or cap. Or if it's a duplicate, you know, like one that you already have, why, that's even more fun because then you have the business of swapping with your friends. It's like some wonderful game where the fun goes on and on. And here's one of the best things about it. To get your comic buttons, you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. They come only as exclusive prizes, one in every package of Kellogg's Pep you open. And remember, too, that every package of pep on hand at your house puts you in line for some terrifically good eating. Fact is, there's nothing to match the keen, catchy flavor of these golden flakes of whole wheat. So for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal. And now, the adventures of Superman. Suffering from complete loss of memory brought on by doses of liquid kryptonite fed him by Big George Latimer, a crooked politician and his arch enemy, Superman became the star pitcher for a little minor league baseball team. Using the name of Bud Smith, he played so sensationally that he was purchased by the big league Metropolis Titans for $100,000. As Superman boarded the train for Metropolis that night, Latimer and Al McGuire, a private detective who had been hunting relentlessly for him, boarded the same train. As we continue now, Superman is in his compartment, preparing for bed. In the deserted corridor outside his door stand McGuire and Latimer. The politician carries the lead box containing the deadly kryptonite. Drawing a deep breath, the burly Latimer places his hand on the doorknob and slowly turns it. Wait, Mr. Latimer, somebody's coming. What? Oh, oh, the porter. Quick, McGuire. Back to the smoking room. We'll wait till he's gone. Making up the berths in the compartment next to uh, uh, Bud Smith's. I wish you'd hurry. Oh, we might as well sit down and relax, Mr. Latimer. He'll be out of there in a few minutes. I suppose so. Blast it. Have a cigar? Thanks. Don't care if I do. Right. Thanks. Ah. Say, uh, Mr. Latimer. Yes? This might be a good time to tell me what I'm supposed to do when we get into Bud Smith's compartment. Told you before to stop prime, McGuire. You're getting paid to do as you're told and keep your mouth shut. Incidentally, you're getting paid very well, I might add. Maybe I'm not getting paid enough. I mean, for a job this size. Just what are you driving at? Well, I've been doing a little thinking, Mr. Latimer. And, uh, well, I think I can guess who Bud Smith really is. And why you've been so all-fired anxious to find him. I don't like guessing games, McGuire. This isn't exactly a guessing game, Mr. Latimer. You see, I've been thinking about a guy who can bust out of jail by bending iron bars three inches thick like the putty. You're making that sound too important. I've told you this man, uh, Bud Smith, is very strong. Hey, you're not kidding. He pitches a ball so fast nobody can see it. Twenty-six strikeouts in one game, four no-hit, no-run games in a row, a home run each time at bat. That guy ain't human, Mr. Latimer. Well? Well, I can think of only one man in the world who can twist iron bars into pretzels and play ball like that. You know who I mean, Mr. Latimer. His name is... Shut up. Now listen, Mr. Latimer. No, you listen to me, McGuire. I warned you before to keep your nose out of my business. And what I told you about curiosity killing a cat? Uh Uh-huh, but I... Well, the same thing applies to men, too. And that could mean you, 
Understand? Look, save the tough stuff for your political ward healers, Mr. Latimer. You don't scare me. You know I got too much on you. You have, eh? You bet. And I got this whole setup figured out now, too. Really? Suppose you tell me what you think, you know. Okay, here it is as I see it. After you got out of jail where Superman put you, you built yourself back into political power by claiming Superman framed the evidence against you. Because you said you wouldn't let him blackmail you. That's right, and it's true. Baloney, Superman's no crook, and you know it. And why didn't he meet me face-to-face in the Metropolis Auditorium and deny my charges? My guess is it was because he didn't dare get close to the stuff you got in that lead box. What? Yeah, that's kryptonite. That's what it is. Stuff that makes him weak when he comes close to it. All the nonsense. Listen. I remember now reading all about it. The time it was stolen from the Metropolis Museum. I got a look at it before when you were opening the catch on the box. It glows with a green light, just like the paper said. Pretty clever, aren't you, McGuire? Kinda. But you're not so dumb yourself, Mr. Latimer. You knew Superman would trip you up eventually unless you got rid of him for good. So I figure you doped out some way to wipe him out. But he must have scrammed somehow before he could finish the job. He lost his memory, but you're afraid he might recover it and come after you. McGuire, I warn you. So you hired me to find him so you could finish the job, and I did find him. Will you be quiet, you fool? Yeah. I'll be quiet. If you declare me in. For how much, you blackmailer? <laughs> Look who's calling who a blackmailer. Go on, talk. How much do you want to keep your big mouth shut? Well, let's see. I'd say a quarter of a million dollars is fair. A quarter of a million dollars? Why, you... Now don't tell me you haven't got it, Mr. Latimer. Why, you dirty double-crossing guns, you... You think you can hold me up? Now, take your hands off me. What are you trying to... I'll teach you to try to blackmail me. I'll fix your wagon right now. Let go, I said. I got a gun, and if you make me use it, I take the lead. What's going on in here? Porter. Uh, 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 Nothing, Porter. Uh, Nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We are just fooling around. Looked to me like you two gentlemen were trying to kill each other. (laughs) Ridiculous. I was uh, just showing my friend a few... uh, you do just a tricks, that's all. Sure, sure, that's all. Well, uh, if you say so, what? Uh, by the way, you gentlemen have reservations in this car. Why, well, uh, uh, no, we don't. No, uh, we, uh, we're in the car up ahead. That's right. Uh, we were just walking through from the club car, and we stopped to smoke a cigar before turning in. I see. Well, sorry I bothered you. That's uh, perfectly all right. Good night. Good night. Watch where he goes, McGuire. Never mind him. We got some business to finish, and this time I'd suggest you take it easy because I'm holding a gun in my pocket. You won't need it. Okay. Now, how about our deal? I still say it's a holdup, but... Well, I guess I can afford it. I'm sure you can. All right, then. It's a deal. Now let's get to work. Support a gun? Wait, I'll see. Well? I can't see him, and that compartment door is closed. He must have left the car. Good. Let's go. No, wait. What are we going to do? Get Super... Put Smith off the train. Get him off the train? Yes. I can't let him get to Metropolis because he's too well known there. He may be recognized and taken to a doctor might be able to restore his memory. I understand, but suppose he doesn't want to get off the train. We can't handle yes, Superman. Yes, we can. This piece of kryptonite. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. But even so, how can we get him off the train? We'll be seen and stopped. I've thought of that. I'll put the kryptonite in his pocket to keep him from moving. Then we'll smash a window in his compartment and dump him out just before we stop the next town. We'll get off the train for first depot and go back for him. Ah, uh, it's risky. I know that. But I'm playing for big stakes, McGuire, for my life. Come on now. Let's go. Are you sure this is Superman's compartment, McGuire? Yeah, yeah, 3B. See if the door's unlocked, Mr. Lennon. Yes, it's locked. Hang it. Uh-oh. What do we do now? Knock, of course. Oh, wait. Doesn't he know you, Mr. Lerner? Not anymore. He's lost his memory, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, here he goes. Maybe he's asleep. I'll wake him up. Yes? Who is it? I have to see you, Mr. Smith. Okay. Just a minute. Get the cook tonight, man. Don't worry. I've got it ready. Get set. He's unlocking the door. His eyes burning under their shaggy brows, Big George Latimer waits for the unsuspecting Superman to open the door, ready to snap open the lead box in which rests the jagged, deadly kryptonite that will render the Man of Steel helpless. What will happen? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so keep listening. 
Say, everybody, the heat is on in more ways than one. Everybody's hot after all 18 of those exciting comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Think how proud you'd feel if you'd be the first in your crowd to have all those bright-colored, gleaming buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. So if you have a duplicate of one of your comic buttons, hurry and trade it with one of your friends for one that you don't already have. Round out your whole collection of 18 in the new series. And be sure to be Johnny on the spot whenever it's time to open a new package of Kellogg's Pep. Maybe you'll get just the button you need. Tiny Tim, or Little Joe, or Fat Stuff, or Superman himself with his red insignia on that bright blue jersey. Yes, sir, everybody's in on the fun because these new pep comic buttons are really terrific and so easy to collect, too. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere, but you get your prize button in every package of pep you open, and you open up some mighty good eating at the same time. Those crisp, cool flakes of whole wheat, all delicious with cool milk, are just about the keenest, catchiest tasting dish you ever ate. So for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, Superman has just opened the door of his compartment on the limited train and admitted Big George Latimer and his henchman, Detective Al McGuire. Swiftly, McGuire closes the door behind him and locks it. As Latimer, holding the lead box containing the piece of deadly kryptonite, faces the man of steel who stares back at him blankly. You wanted to see me? That's right, Smith. Remember me? I know. I'm afraid I don't. Who are you? What do you want to see me about? Maybe this will remind you. What? What's that? What's that green glowing stuff? Don't you recognize it? No, I... I... Look at him, McGuire. Uh, and now they stand up. Holy smokes, this is unbelievable. Oh, what's the matter, Smith? I don't know. I... I feel so weak suddenly. I... I... Oh. Well, I'll be... Oh. That stuff works. He went down like a log. Look now, McGuire. Smash the window. We'll be getting into Phillips Town in a few minutes. What happened? Get set to dumb Superman out just before we get into town. Hurry! Shaking his head in wonder, Al McGuire moves to the compartment window while Superman lies on the floor helpless under the strange spell of the jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite while Big George Latimer gloats, his lips curled back in a wolfish smile. Once more, Superman is in the hands of his arch enemy, who is this time determined to complete the job of making the Man of Steel helpless forever. Will his fiendish plot work? We'll know tomorrow, gang, so whatever you do, don't miss the next excitement-packed episode. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, who's in the know about kids in other countries, how they look and how they dress? Well, Kellogg has the answer with the cutout dolls of all nations on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. Boy, what fun to cut them out and, and change the costumes and collect all six countries in the series, like Switzerland, China, and Sweden. Two colorful cutout dolls and costumes on every package of Crumbles. Kellogg's Crumbles, the only cereal in crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. Sort of sweet and metal rich. Ask Mom to get... Kellogg's Crumbles, and be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the world's largest network, serving 400 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep! P-E-P Pep! Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman! Today's... 
Superman faces a supreme test as evil George Latimer focuses the jagged piece of deadly kryptonite on the helpless man of steel. Everybody is doing it. I mean, everybody's collecting those swell brand new comic buttons you get, one in every package of Kellogg's Pet. And if you're in on the race, you might be the first one in your crowd to collect all 18 buttons in Pep's great new series. The characters on these comic buttons are straight from the latest 20s, pictured in full color on gleaming white backgrounds. Characters like Ma Winkle and Denny Dimwit from the uh, Winnie Winkle Funnies and Uncle Avery and Auntie Blossom from Gasoline Alley and the one and only Superman. Everybody's doing it, swapping and trading and, and trying to complete this latest comic button series. Why, a Pep comic button is, is just like a badge of membership in the great Pep Button Collectors Club. And here's how you get in. Just open a package of Kellogg's Pet, and you'll find one of the new series of comic buttons to start you off. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. But from every package of Kellogg's Pep, collect one of those keen prizes. Always remember, for prize-eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And you're in for a big surprise tomorrow, a super exciting offer, something really terrific. Just wait till you hear it tomorrow. And now, the adventures of Superman. Suffering from loss of memory caused by doses of liquid kryptonite forcibly fed to him by Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, Superman became the star pitcher for a little minor league baseball team. Using the name Bud Smith, he played so sensationally that his contract was purchased by the big league Metropolis Titans. But as he and Shorty Taylor, his manager, boarded a train for Metropolis, Latimer and Al McGuire, a crooked private detective, boarded the same train. Late at night, carrying a lead box about ten inches square and accompanied by McGuire, Latimer rapped at the door of Superman's compartment and was admitted by the Man of Steel who failed to recognize his arch enemy. Latimer opened the, the lead box, revealing the jagged green glowing kryptonite which, when brought close to Superman, robs him of all his strength. Affected by the rays, the Man of Steel staggered, then fell to the floor, unable to move. As we continue now, Superman lies helpless, his eyes blazed, as Latimer snaps an order to McGuire. Listen. Oh. Break the window, McGuire. We throw him out just before we reach the next town. Then get off in town and go back for him. Okay, Mr. Latimer, I'll use my gun. What happened? I feel so strange. Hurry, McGuire, hurry. Okay, here I goes. Can't move. Come on, break it. The shatterproof glass is awful strong. Oh. Now bust it this time. Oh, oh help McGuire. me. Somebody's at the door. Oh, no, no strength. Help me up, please. Somebody must have heard me banging at the window. Yes, hang it. Please. I figured the sound of the train would cover that. Somebody. Keep help quiet. Me. You might go away. Oh. Mr. Smith! Oh, Mr. Smith! Smith. Wake up, please! This is the conductor! Wake up, Mr. Smith! You hear that, Mr. Latimer? It's the conductor. This isn't so good. Mr. Smith! Somebody! Mr. Smith! He's not going away. What do we do? Only one thing to do. We've got to let him in. But we can't. We've got to. Otherwise, you'll think something is wrong and break in. Watch it. Quiet! Uh, One moment, Mr. Conductor. One moment. Please. Kryptonite back in its box and shut the lid. Listen, do as I say and leave this to me. Hurry. Okay. But be careful. That kryptonite burns. Anything wrong? Uh, coming, Conductor. Let him in, McGuire. Let me do the talking. You're the doctor. Oh. But I don't like this. Well. Hi. Feeling better, Smith? Yes, yes. Much better. I'm in, Oh, conductor. that's fine. Here, let me help you out. Thanks. Yeah. I'm all right now. Thanks. Hey, what happened, Mr. Smith? Why, I don't know exactly. He had us all a payment spell, Conductor. Painting spell. Well, fortunately, we were here at the time and uh, could help him. How are you feeling now, Smith? Well, fine. I can't understand what came over me. All my strength seemed to drain away suddenly, and everything went sort of blank. Oh, poor chap. I'm certainly glad Mac and I were here. Yes, yeah, so good thing we were here. Uh, who are you two gentlemen, may I ask? Uh, my name is Latimer, George Latimer, Metropolis. You've probably heard of me. Can't say that I have. And this is Mr. McGuire. He's a business associate of mine. Hi. These men friends of yours, Mr. Smith? I no. At least I don't think so. Uh, you see, conductor... Just a minute. May I see your tickets, please, Mr. Latimer? Uh, tickets? Yes, your reservations on this train. Uh-uh. Uh, why, uh, uh, we don't have any. I thought not. You're the two we're looking for. Well, I'm looking for what us. do you mean? The porter on this car reported seeing two men fighting in the smoking room a little while ago. Oh, no, we weren't fighting. Of course not. You told him your compartment was in the car forward of this one. But it so happens this is the front car. 
The only thing forward of it's the mail and baggage cars and the engine. Oh, uh, well, listen... We knew uh, you didn't belong on this train. We've been hunting you ever since. Now, you'll have to get off the next stop. That's Phillipsburg. Get off? Uh, just a moment, Conductor. We didn't have time to buy tickets in Gainesville. We barely caught the train. But I'll be happy to purchase tickets and reservations from you. Sure, sure. Any price. All right, can't do that. This train's filled. Oh, but look, here, you'll help. I'll be glad to put them up in my compartment, Conductor. They can have my bunk. I, I won't mind sitting up. Oh, I thank Oh, say, that's mighty decent of you, uh, Mr. Smith. Not at all. Sorry, gentlemen. Can't do that on the limited. Company rules say no passenger may ride unless there's sleeping accommodation for him. Oh, but see here, Conductor. It's important that Mr. McGuire and I get to Metropolis as soon as possible. I'll pay our fares. I'll even pay extra. That ought to do it. Sorry, Mr. Latimer, but rules are rules. There's a train carrying coaches following us an hour back. You can get on that in Phillipsburg. Oh, but I can't be delayed an extra hour. I must get to Metropolis as soon as possible. On this train. I'm sorry, oh, but... Oh, now, see here, Conductor. I told you who I was. Look, mister, I don't care I happen who to be the are. head of the political party now in power in the state. I have friends on the governing board of this railroad. I warn you. If you put me off this train, it'll mean your job. Better think that over, Mr. Conductor. I'm not paid to think like that. My job's obeying the rules, and they say nobody rides on the limited without a sleeping accommodation, no matter who they are. But We're but getting you... into Phillipsburg now. You and your friend will have to get off, Mr. Latimer, or it'll be the duty of myself and my crew to put you off. Now, what shall it be? Guess we'll have to get off, Mr. Latimer. All right. We'll get off. But you'll regret this, Conductor. Come on, McGuire. I'll see you again, Mr. Smith. I hope so. Awfully sorry, Mr. Latimer. Superman, Mr. Latimer. What do we do now? We've got to get to Metropolis first, McGuire. Superman is well known there. He's recognized and taken a brain specialist that might be able to restore his memory. If that happens, my goose is cooked. Yeah, but how are we going to get to Metropolis ahead of him? I don't know yet. We'll get there. We've got to. Come on. Where? I want to talk to that cab driver. Cabby! Yes, sir? Where to, sir? Is there an airport in this town? Sure, we got one. Good. But there are no flights scheduled until 6 o'clock in the morning, though. Eastbound. Uh-uh, that's too late. Now, wait, McGuire. Uh, look, Cabby, uh, do you know if we could charter a plane to take us to Metropolis? Well, I wouldn't know. Small town, you know. Pretty small setup out there at the airport. Uh, take us to the field. Come on, McGuire. And uh, hurry, please. Okay. Limited gets to Metropolis at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's worth $1,000 to me if you can get us there ahead of the Limited. $1,000, huh? Yes, what do you say? You got a deal, Mr. Latimer. There's my crate over there. Come on. Smiling triumphantly, Big George Latimer and Al McGuire climb into the charted plane behind the pilot. Apparently, Superman's escape from Latimer and the kryptonite was only short-lived. What will happen now? We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, you know how in the mile run, it's the four-minute man who's champ? Well, in the comic button game, the champ is an 18-button man. Sure, 18 of those brand-new series of slick comic buttons that you can collect from packages of Kellogg's Pet. And are these buttons a sight to see? They're all bright colored on gleaming white enamel with pictures of your favorite funny paper characters standing out clear and sharp. Characters that are making history in the comic strip world. Like Wilmer, for instance, from Gasoline Alley. And Uncle Avery and Auntie Blossom and Superman himself. A regular gallery of comic strip favorites to pin on your jacket or your dress or cap. You'll get a bang out of collecting them all and swapping duplicates with your friends and getting a surprise comic button every time you open a new package of Kellogg's Pep. And remember, that's the only way you can get these Pep comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. But you just keep supplied with Pep. <laughs> <laughs> 
and look for your prize inside every package you open. Remember, for prize eating and exciting prizes, get P-E-P, the Sunshine Cereal, Kellogg's Path, and here's a tip-off. Be sure and be around tomorrow to hear the best surprise of your life. Pep's offering you... No, no, I better keep that secret until tomorrow. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In his compartment on the Limited, en route to Metropolis, Superman, garbed in pajamas and bathrobe, sits on the edge of his bunk, a deep frown on his face. Shorty Taylor, stocky gray-haired manager and part owner of the Gainesville Colts, who is escorting the sensational pitcher to his new team in Metropolis, has just entered. When the porter told me I had a fit and smell, I came in on double. You sure you're okay now, bud? What? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I'm fine, Shorty. Uh, you must have had too much sun yesterday. It was hot on that old ball field. No, I don't think it was the sun. You don't, eh? No. I think it had something to do with... With... Uh, with what? That green glowing stuff those men had. Green glowing? Uh-huh. What are you talking about, bud? No, no, it was about the size of a large piece of coal. And it glowed with a strange, deep green light. What? Yeah, I've seen it before, Shorty. Hey, right, look, Somewhere. Bud. Look, maybe I'd better try to find a doctor, huh? There may be one on the train. Uh, you just no, no, wait a minute. I, I don't need a doctor, Shorty. I've just got to remember... If I could, I'd... I'd know. You'd know what? Everything. Where I came from and... Wait! <laughs> that strange green glow. I have seen it before. I saw it. I saw it. Shorty, I think... I think... You think what? Now look, no, wait, kid. Wait a minute, please. Don't talk to me. I've almost... I've... Almost got it. His fists knotted, beads of perspiration standing out on his face. Superman hovers on the brink of memory, on the verge of recalling his name and his past. Will he succeed? If he does, he may save himself from the destruction planned by Big George Latimer, who is speeding closer and closer to Metropolis with the deadly kryptonite. What will happen? Whatever you do, gang, don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode. Yes, be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. How'd you like to learn about the birds that are around now that the weather's warmer, like the flycatcher and the warbler? Well, start collecting the full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. Get set to collect all 24 in the series and swap duplicates with your friends. And get a colorful album, too, so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. Just ask Mom for Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as the famous Bud Smith arrives in Metropolis, Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen await him, as well as Big George Latimer, who carries the deadly kryptonite. Say, here's the big surprise I was telling you about yesterday. 
Listen closely, because this is something no Federal girl will want to miss. You've seen Army money belts like the G.I.'s wore. Well, you can get the same thing from Kellogg's Pet, a real genuine Army money belt with three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones. You can carry your secret codes in them, your identification, your money, secret papers, letters, notes, all your valuables. And there's a special flap that folds over on the inside, keeps the pocket secret. This is the real thing, a genuine army money belt in real G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable, so it'll fit you slick, and it's the genuine article. G.I.'s paid a dollar for it, but all you do is mail ten cents and one box stop from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that? Send one dime and one box stop from Kellogg's Pet, along with your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Get your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments from P.E.P., the sunshine cereal Kellogg's Pep. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. When Superman lost his memory from the effect of liquid kryptonite fed to him forcibly by Big George Latimer, his arch enemy, he became a pitcher for a little minor league baseball team, and under the assumed name of Bud Smith, performed so sensationally that he was sold to the big league Metropolis Titans. Fearing that Superman might recover his memory, Latimer, after an unsuccessful attempt to capture him on a train, flew to Metropolis by plane, planning to intercept the Man of Steel and then complete the destruction of his mind and body. But meanwhile, in his compartment on the Limited, Superman, en route to Metropolis, is making a terrific effort to recover his lost memory. The jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite which he had seen again that evening in the hands of Big George Latimer has jogged his mind, half lifting the thick fog which clouds it. Leaning forward tensely, he speaks to Shorty Taylor, his manager, who believes him to be Bud Smith. That, that green glowing thing, I've seen it before somewhere. Not long ago, I... I... What are you talking about, Bud? Wait a minute, Shorty. I think I'm starting to remember. Oh, now, listen. I see a man. Yes, and he's he's wearing a strange costume. His face. His face. Oh, why can't I see his face? Now, now, look, look, but uh, uh, try to calm down. He's in a barn. That green glowing thing is right near him. And it's... it's... Jeepers, you've got it bad. Listen, fella, I think I'd better... He's trying to move. But he can't. Another man at... Oh, no, it's going away. Oh, I can't see it at all anymore. You can't, huh? No. Can't see anything anymore. Oh, forget it. Go to bed and get some sleep. You've yeah. got to be in good shape when we hit Metropolis. Okay, Shorty. I might as well. For a minute, I was sure I was going to remember everything. I'll wake you up before we get to Metropolis. Good night. Good night. Bud? Huh? Good morning, Shorty. <sighs> Time to get up? Yep, we'll be in Metropolis in 20 minutes. Oh, good. Here, look. All the papers came aboard the last time. Oh. Take a gander at your handsome face on page one, see? What? <laughs> You're famous, Bud. Oh, let's famous. See. Look at that headline. Bud Smith joins Titans today. Baseball's new Superman may pitch against Dodgers this afternoon. How do you like that? Calling you Superman. Superman? Who's that? Look, are you kidding me? No, Shorty, really. I never heard of him. So where have you been all your life? I wish I knew, Shorty. You wish it? Ah, <laughs> go on. You're a great kidder, bud. You know, I'm just wising up to it. No, I'm serious, Shorty. Except for the last few weeks when I've been with you and the Colts, my whole life is a blank in my mind. <laughs> Cut it out, will you? Come on, now, get dressed. Make yourself look sharp. We'll be in Metropolis in a few minutes. And unless I miss my guess, every reporter in town and half the fans will be at the station to meet you. Okay. I'll be ready for them. As 
Superman and Shorty Taylor stand in the milling throng of reporters, cameramen, and admiring baseball fans. Big George Latimer, his hat brim snapped low over his eyes, stands at the edge of the crowd with Al McGuire, his private detective and henchman. And under Latimer's arm is the lead box containing the jagged piece of deadly green glowing kryptonite. Wow, look at that crowd around Smith. No chance to get at him here, Mr. Latimer. I'm afraid you're right, McGuire. We've got to get at him. And soon, before somebody realizes he is Superman. Relax. There's not much chance of that. Superman always wore a costume and red cape. Now he's wearing an ordinary business suit like everybody else. Yes, but this is the city where he's best known. So there's still a chance that somebody might recognize him. Someone maybe like his friends, Batman and Robin. They get to talking to him and realize he's lost his memory. It'll be all over for me. Hey, I never thought of that. Well, I have. That's why we've got to get hold of him and feed him the rest of the liquid kryptonite. Boy, what a shame we couldn't get him on the train last night, huh? Yes, but there's no use crying over spilt milk. You've got to... Wait, McGuire. What's the matter? Look. That girl over there. What about her? That's Lois Lane. She's a reporter on the Daily Planet. Well, so what? Well, the planet is supposed to have some sort of official contact with Superman. Uh-oh. Now do you see why I'm worried? Suppose Miss Lane recognizes him. Ah, relax. I still say without his costume, there isn't much chance of You it. hope. Let's not take chances, McGuire. Keep your eyes on that girl. <laughs> Jim, he does look like Clark Kent. Didn't I tell you, Miss Lane? I know it sounds crazy, but I still say he is Mr. Kent. Oh, nonsense, Jim. This Bud Smith is a great baseball pitcher. Clark isn't an athlete, not by a long shot. Uh, just the same. Only... I... Well, the longer I look at him... Now, come on, Jim, I want to talk to him. That's the only thing that stops him. His voice isn't like Mr. Kent's. It isn't? No, it's deeper. Oh, here he is now. Uh, Mr. Smith, yes. I'm Jim Olson, reporter for the Daily Planet. I met you down in Gainesville, remember? I, yes, I think I do. How are you? Fine, thanks. Uh, this is Miss Lane. She's a reporter on the planet, too. How do you do, Miss Lane? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Beg your pardon? Come on, Uh, bud, let's get moving. uh, Wait a minute, Shorty. What were you saying, Miss Lane? Well, uh, you look exactly like a friend of ours, but exactly. Didn't I tell you? I do. Now, look, bud, we gotta get... Wait, hold it, Shorty. Who is this friend I look like, Miss Lane? Clark Kent. He was a reporter, too. Was? You mean he passed away? Oh, gosh, I hope We don't know what happened to him, Mr. Smith. He, well, he just disappeared. Disappeared, you say? Yes. For a moment, I was sure you were Clark, but, well, now I see I was mistaken. I sure, sure you were. Your voice is different from his. Only... Only what, Miss Lane? Well, there's something very familiar about your voice. Have you noticed it, Jim? Well, yes. Now that you mention it, Mr. White noticed it, too. But will you please come out? We got to get up. Shorty, wait. This is very interesting. Who does my voice remind you of, Miss Lane? Well, I I can't quite place it, Mr. Smith. It's very familiar, though. Tell me, have you ever lived in Metropolis? Why, I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, you see... For the last time, but come on, we got to get up to the ballpark. Okay, Shorty. Sorry, Miss Lane, I've got to go to the ballpark and have some pictures taken of my new uniform. I'd like to see you again, though. Why, thank you. Look, look, Mr. Smith, I have my car outside. Jim and I can drive you to the ballpark. I'm sure if we talk some more, I'll be able to place your voice. Swell idea. How about it, Mr. Smith? Sounds fine to me. What do you say, Shorty? Well, it's mighty kind of you, miss, but uh, I'll bang you. We'll go like... get them. Swell. We'll meet you outside the main entrance of the station in five minutes. Good. We'll be there, Miss Lane. Let's go, Shorty. Okay. Come on, Jim. Isn't he a dead ringer from Mr. Kent? It certainly is. And his voice. If only I could remember where I heard it. Yeah. I know that voice, too. And that strange thing he said, Jim, about not knowing whether he lived in Metropolis or not. Jimmy, I have a feeling this is going to be a very interesting ride. Her cheeks flushed with excitement, Lois Lane hurries from the station to her car with Jimmy Olsen, failing to notice that she is passing within a foot of a big man she would have recognized. A man who stares after her sharply, Big George Latimer. We'll be back in a moment with the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Gee, can I get that for only 10 cents? Yes, that's what you'll say when you see the genuine army money belt that Kellogg's Pep has for you with three secret compartments to carry your codes, spending money, identification, and swell to keep your own secret personal belongings hidden. Keep them from getting lost. No chance of anybody finding out what you've got in those three secret pockets because there's a special flap that folds over on the inside, hides them so that you're the only one who knows what's there. You can wear it under your coat or jacket or on the outside. 
Mighty handy when you boys and girls go on hikes this summer or to camp. It's exactly the same money belt G.I.'s wore. The genuine army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable, so it's sure to fit you. Now, don't miss out. Send for yours today. Although G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, you get yours for only ten cents. And one box top from a package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep. Send your name and address to and mail to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Mail one dime and one box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. And today and every day, eat P-E-P, the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Hey, did you hear what Miss Lane said, McGuire? But she and that young fellow are going to drive Superman to the ballpark in their car. Yeah, I heard him, Mr. Latimer. This is the chance we're waiting for. Bring your car to the main entrance of the station and wait there for me. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to make a phone call. When I'm through, Miss Lane and that kid will never see the ballpark or any place else again. And what's more important, I'll have Superman under my thumb where I can finish him. Yeah, hey, but what are you going to do? Don't waste time asking questions, McGuire. Get the car while I make my phone call. Yes, sir. This works out perfectly. Perfectly. His cold eyes gleaming under their shaggy brows, Big George Latimer hurries into a phone booth, and a moment later is issuing rapid instructions over the wire. How does he plan to arrange for Lois and Jimmy never to see the ballpark or any place else again? Just as Lois Lane seems on the way to discover who Bud Smith really is, are she and Jimmy Olsen and Superman, too. Doomed to disaster by Big George Latimer. What will happen? Monday's exciting thrill-packed episode tells the story, fellows and girls. So don't miss it. Be sure to tune in again Monday. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Can you identify a yellow-headed blackbird? Well, you can if you're collecting those full-color bird pictures that come one in every package of Kellogg's Crumbles. You'll want to collect all 24 in the series. You'll want the fun of trading duplicates with your pals. And you'll want the colorful album, too, so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, those crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of good whole wheat. Ask Mom to get Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the world's largest network, serving 400 radio stations. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual Broadcasting System. The Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman is about to reveal to Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen that he does not know who he is, the evil forces against him have marked Lois's swiftly moving car for immediate and ruthless destruction. Hey, there's excitement in the air, and here's the reason. Kellogg's Pep, that super delicious cereal, has something for you that packs thrills with a score. It's terrific. It's genuine. A money belt just like the G.I.'s wore. Yes, sir you can get the exact same article. It has three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones to carry your club passwords, secret codes, letters, identification, money. The flap that folds over on the inside keeps the pocket secret. Why, this money belt will come in mighty handy this summer when you boys and girls go on hikes or to camp. 
It's the same kind of money belt your big brother wore when he was in service. The genuine army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable, so it's sure to fit any size waist. G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, but you can get yours for only ten cents and a box top from those crisp, fresh whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pet. Send the Pep box top and a dime, your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll repeat that for you. Mail one dime and one box top from Super Delicious Pep, along with your name and address, clearly printed, to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Get busy. Send for your genuine Army money belt today. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, a dishonest politician named Big George Latimer, who hates and fears Superman, conspired with a former Nazi concentration camp doctor to cripple the mind and body of the Man of Steel, liquefying a small portion of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance which robs Superman of all his strength. Latimer and the German doctor fed it to him, and although Superman managed to escape after only two treatments, he had lost his memory. Believing his name was Bud Smith, he became a sensational baseball pitcher, and was purchased by the Metropolis Titans. Latimer, however, feared Superman might recover his memory, and he laid plans to abduct him and complete the Man of Steel's destruction. As we continue now, the famous Bud Smith has just arrived in Metropolis and is being driven to the ballpark by Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen, who are fascinated by his amazing resemblance to their missing reporter friend, Clark Kent, who, as we know, is really Superman. Following them in another car are Latimer and Al McGuire, an unscrupulous private detective. Listen. Don't get too close to the McGuire. I don't want them to suspect they're being followed. Don't worry, Mr. Latimer. My business is trailing people. Now tell me what you got in mind. Who did you phone back there in the railroad station? Blake, my secretary. I told him to have a few of the boys in a big truck on Dunno Road. That's the direct road to the ballpark. Yeah, I know. But what's that got to do with Miss Lane and Bud Smith? I mean, uh, Superman. I told Blake to have everyone cleared off Dunno Road except a few of our own boys and close it to traffic. That means all cars will have to detour around it, except Miss Lane's car and ours. I think you I see, get Dunno it. see, Road was built over the old shore railroad tracks, so there's no houses on it. Just right. Now, wait a minute. If the road is closed, how is Miss Lane's car going to get on it? Easy. I ordered all approaching cars to be flagged to a stop at this end of the road and then directed to the detour. Uh-huh. Blake and Gus will be there. They both know Superman. When they see him in Miss Lane's car, they'll say the road work was just finished and send the car through on Dunno. I get it. And there's a little hold-up or accident or something, huh? <laughs> something is right. We'll be right behind him, and I've got the piece of kryptonite with me to weaken Superman, so we won't have to worry about... Hey, watch that turn. I see it. Look, I can figure out what happens to Superman, all right. We load him into the truck, take him to some nice, quiet place where you and that Nazi doctor finish up the job you started on him. Right. This time he won't get away until the job is finished. Well, that part's okay, Mr. Latimer, but what about the other two in the car, Miss Lane and the kid? You can't just let them go after they see what happens? Naturally not. We'll take care of them. What do you mean, take care of them? That's what worries me. You'll see when the time comes. Now, wait, Mr. Latimer. I said I'd go along with you on the Superman angle, but I don't want to get mixed up in any more kidnappings or killings or anything like that. Hmm. What's the matter, McGuire? Getting chicken-hearted? No, just careful. But I got a business, Mr. Latimer, and a family. You should have thought of that before you pulled that blackmail on me. Now you're in this up to your neck, McGuire. And you're going to win with me or hang with me? Understand? Sure, sure, but look, Stepping I... Up. Getting close to Dunno Road, and I want to be right behind Miss Lane and Superman when Blake and Gus flag them down. Okay, Mr. Latimer. Hang on. You've been listening to Jim and me talk for quite a while now, Miss Lane. Have you been able to identify my voice yet? Frankly... No, I haven't, Mr. Smith. Oh, I know good. I've heard it before. I'm positive I have. So have but I. But I can't quite place it. Can you, Jim? No. What bothers me most is how Bud... You, you mean Mr. Smith, Jim. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. That's okay. You can call me Bud, Jim. Most of the players and fans do. Now, uh, what are we going to say? Well, I can't understand how you can look so much like Clark Kent. His twin brother couldn't look more like him. Really? Yeah, and you move just like he does and, and seem exactly like him and... Yet you're not. It is remarkable. Oh. I wonder if... The only thing different is your voice. Yes. If not for that, nobody could make me believe you weren't Mr. Kent. As a matter of fact, I still can't make myself believe it. I wonder if it could be possible that... What? Well, I, 
I don't know if you'll understand this. I can't quite understand it myself, but... Well, they call me Bud Smith, but I'm not altogether Excuse sure Excuse me. That... I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I just noticed another difference. Oh. What's that, Miss Lane? Clark wore glasses. Mr. Smith doesn't. Say, that's right. Well, I guess that ends that possibility, then. I don't think I ever wore glasses. You don't think? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. You don't remember? My eyes seem quite strong, so I don't... But Mr. Kent's eyes couldn't have been weak, Miss Lane. I tried his glasses on once when he forgot them on his desk, and they were just like window glass. They were? Are you sure, uh-huh. Jim? I couldn't even tell I had them on. Oh? Uh, look, Mr. Smith, you said something very strange just now. Strange? What do you mean? Well, a little while ago, I asked you if you'd ever lived in Metropolis, and you said you didn't remember. That's right. I don't remember, Miss Lane. You don't? But how no. could that be? And how could you not remember if you ever had to wear glasses? Well, uh, uh, you, you see... Look, I, I haven't known you too long. At least, I don't think I have, but... Well, I like you. We like you too, bud. Yes, we... What's think... more, I feel I can trust you. Of course you can. What are you driving at? Well, you may be able to help me. Help you? Uh-huh. What do you mean? I'll tell you. I've got to tell somebody, so here it is. You see... Wait a minute, Mr. Smith. What's There's up? There's something wrong up ahead. We're being flagged down. Huh? Oh, yes. Looks as if the road we're coming to is closed. Well, that's Dunhill Road, the direct way. Now we'll have to detour about five miles. What's the matter, mister? Is Dunhill closed? Why, uh, uh... Well, is it or isn't it? I can see the roadblock, but I don't see any men working on the road. What are you staring at me for? Answer the lady. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. The road was closed, lady, but it's open again now. You can go through. I'll pull the block out of your way. Well, thank you. Gee, that's swell. It's odd the way that fellow stared at me, wasn't it? As if he knew me. Well, he must have seen your picture in the papers, Bart. Yes, you are a celebrity, you know. Oh, yes, maybe that was it. Okay, lady, go ahead. Thank you. Here we go. Now you can go on with what you started to say, Mr. Smith. Everything okay, Gus? Yes, sir. The car with the dame and you know who just went through, Mr. Latimer. Fine. Get that roadblock back as soon as we pass now. You bet, Mr. Latimer. Okay, McGuire. Get going. This is it. Shifting into high gear, Al McGuire drives onto the blocked off Dunhill Road after Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Superman. And Gus, big George Latimer's henchman, quickly closes the road behind them. What will happen? We'll return in a moment to find out, so keep listening. Say, did you ever get burnt up because brother or sister got hold of your secret papers? Well, that won't happen if you send for the money belt Kellogg's Pep has for you. It's the genuine article, just like the G.I.'s wore. A real army money belt with three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones. You can carry your secret code, money, important papers, anything you may be collecting. A swell hiding place for your personal things. Now, there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret. It's exactly the same money belt G.I.'s wore. The genuine Army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it's sure to fit you. You can wear it under your coat or your jacket or on the outside. And is it a bargain? Although G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, you can get yours for only ten cents. And one buck stop from a package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pet. Send your name and address to and mail to Superman, Box 2... 5-1, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that now? Mail one dime and one box stop from a package of Kellogg's Pep, along with your name and address clearly printed, The Superman. Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Today, right now, send for your genuine army belt with three secret compartments. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Unaware that she is headed for danger, Lois Lane, accompanied by Jimmy Olsen and Bud Smith, is driving on Dunhill Road en route to the Metropolis Ballpark. Following in another car, 50 yards behind, are Big George Latimer and Al McGuire. Good. Just close the road behind us and it's blocked to the other end, too. Everything's all set, McGuire. What's the play, Mr. Latimer? You'll see in a moment, as soon as we get around the turn. There. See that big truck moving up the road? That of Miss Lane's car? Yeah. Well, keep your eyes on it. And in just about a minute, 
You'll see the end of Miss Lane and that youngster with her. And the beginning of the end for Superman. Go on with what you were telling Jim and me. Oh, yes, Miss Lane. As I say, I like you and Jim, and I feel I can trust you, and, well, maybe you can help me. Oh, we'll sure try. What's on your mind, Mr. Smith? Well, it's like this. I'm known as Bud Smith, but I'm not at all sure that's my name. What do you mean? For this past month, as you know, until I was sold to the Metropolis Titans the other day, I've been pitching for the Gainesville Colts. And I mean pitching. Boy, no hit, no run. Hi, Jim. Jim. Go on, Mr. Smith. Well, everything that's happened in this past month is clear to me. But I have absolutely no recollection of anything that happened... Miss Lane! Be- Watch the truck ahead, Miss Lane. It's cutting in front of us. I can get by. No, no, look out. Give him a horn, Miss Lane. They're trying to push us off the road into the ditch. Swing hard. They're going to hit us. Look out. Look out. Practically blowing her horn, Lois Lane swings her car to the very edge of the road, sees the huge truck loom upon her, and realizes that she, Jimmy Olsen, and Bud Smith are about to be rammed and hurled into the ditch below. Superman could save Lois and Jimmy in this scant second remaining and save himself. But Superman, his memory lost, believes he is Bud Smith and is unaware of his extraordinary strength and powers. Can anything save our friends now? What will happen? We'll find out in tomorrow's thrilling and surprising episode. So be sure to listen. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Want to learn to identify birds? Well, then start collecting those full-color bird pictures that come, one in every package, of Kellogg's Crumbles. Twenty-four different birds in the series with a full description of each one. You'll want to collect them all and trade duplicates with your pals and get the colorful album, too, so that you can paste in your collection. Full instructions for sending in are on the side of every Crumbles package. That's Crumbles, the crinkly, sort of sweet and metal-rich shreds of real whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow... For the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. Pep, the Sunshine Serial presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as the great pitcher Bud Smith, or Superman, stands by for the leading game of the season, his friends strive to check his true identity while his enemies prepare for his final and complete destruction. They're concealed. They're hidden. They're secret. Yes, your most confidential papers and messages are secret when you carry them in the genuine army money belt Kellogg's Pep has for you. It's the very same money belt that G.I.'s wore. It has three concealed compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones, covered with a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret, a swell hiding place for your secret codes and messages. This genuine Army money belt is adjustable so that you can buckle it right on to fit you. It's real Army khaki color with a full-sized buckle. Maybe you'll wear it under your coat or your jacket or on the outside. You can wear it around your waist or slung over one shoulder. G.I.'s paid a dollar for their army money belts, but all you do is to mail ten cents plus a box stop from a package of Kellogg's Pep and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now, don't put it off. These belts are going fast, so get yours while the getting's good. 
Today, send 10 cents with one Kellogg's Pep box top and your name and address clearly printed to Superman Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. You'll go for this swell army money belt, and you'll go for the swell cereal Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. Suffering from complete loss of memory caused by doses of liquid kryptonite which were forcibly fed to him by Big George Latimer, Superman became a sensational baseball pitcher under the assumed name of Bud Smith and was purchased by the big league Metropolis Titans. On his arrival in Metropolis, he was met by reporters Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen who were fascinated by his amazing resemblance to their missing friend, Clark Kent, who, as we know, is really Superman. Lois offered to drive him to the ballpark, unaware that Latimer, fearing that Superman might recover his memory, was following in another car and had arranged for an accident to happen to them. As Lois, with Jimmy and Bud Smith beside her, drove her car along deserted Dunhill Road, a heavy truck suddenly swung in front of them, crowding them toward a deep ditch and threatening to smash the car like an eggshell. Hey, look out! You're going to be killed! Seeing instant death loom over them, Lois is frozen with terror. As Jimmy cries out in horror, Bud Smith, having forgotten he is Superman, instinctively thrusts out a hand to ward off the huge truck which, which is about to crush them. At the thrust of Superman's hand, propelled by the strength which can move mountains, the giant truck rocks back violently on two wheels, almost overturns. And in the instant before it careens back, Lois's car sweeps safely past and speeds away up the road. <laughs> Pale and shaken after their miraculous escape, Lois and Jimmy cannot speak. Bud Smith, not realizing that it was his superhuman strength that saved them, finds his voice first. Was that close? Oh, dear. That's putting it mildly, Mr. Smith. And how? I thought sure we were done for. Frankly, so did I, Jim. One moment that truck was practically on top of us, and then it then it just seemed to tip backwards and let us pass before dropping again. Yeah. I wonder what did happen. Well, I don't know, except, well, maybe, I guess the driver just managed to swing away in time. But the way the truck tipped back, as if a, a pile driver or something had hit it. Why, hey, I thought... what's the matter with your forehead, Jim? Well, I don't know. What... Why, there's a lump on it as big as an egg. Jim, you're hurt. I am. Watch the road, Miss Lane. Here, let's have a look at you, son. I, I do feel kind of groggy. Oh. I think I must have bumped my head on the windshield back there. Oh, oh Jimmy. Oh. It'll be all right, Miss Lane. we better get him to a doctor for a checkup. Step on it. All right. Oh, dear. As our friends speed away, the car carrying Big George Latimer and Al McGuire has jolted to a skidding stop not far behind. At the wheel, McGuire mops his pale face with trembling hands. Impatient Latimer frets at the delay. Won't you stop for McGuire? Go after them. No, sir, not, not me, Mr. Latimer. Did you see what happened? Yes, I don't care. Judge Smith, I mean, Superman just stuck out his hand and pushed that truck away as if... as if it were made out of cardboard. Yes, I saw it. Blast him. Go after him, you fool. This is our chance to get him. Oh, no, nothing doing, Mr. Latimer. I'm not tangling with guys who juggle ten-ton trucks like cardboard boxes. But I have the kryptonite with me. He loses strength when it's brought within ten feet of him. Yeah, maybe so, but... Anyhow, it's too late. We'll never catch up to them now. Why, you, you sickly coward. I ought to... Take it easy, Mr. Latimer. You're not Superman, you know. I'm not afraid of you. In case you've forgotten, I got a gun. I haven't forgotten, McGuire. And I won't forget it's your fault that Superman got away from me again, either. Now, listen. I'll be recovers his memory, I'm done for. My only chance is to make sure he never recovers his memory. And I can do that with the li- liquid kryptonite. I've got to get hold of him again. Okay, now if you'll listen to me... Well, I think I've got it. Oh, yeah? How? I'll tell you what, my house. Right back there. But look, Get I... started. We've got to work fast. Okay, you're the boss. Making a U-turn, Al McGuire heads the car back toward Big George Latimer's house. A short time later, wearing a strip of adhesive tape across his forehead, but otherwise none the worse for his recent experience... Cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, accompanied by Lois Lane, enters the office of Candy Myers, their private detective friend. Quickly, Lois brings Candy up to date. And just before that truck almost hit us, this Bud Smith said something very interesting, Candy. Yeah? What was that, Miss Lane? He said he isn't sure his name is Bud Smith. Huh? 
He isn't sure. That's right, Ken. Yes, and he went on to say that he remembers perfectly everything that happened during the last month. That is, while he was pitching for the Gainesville Colts. Then the truck cut across in front of us. Yes, and that, of course, stopped him. But I think he was going to say that he couldn't remember anything before last month. Are you kidding? Well, I don't know if he was going to say that, Miss Lane. I'm sure he was, Jim. Don't you remember how he said he couldn't remember if he'd ever worn glasses or if he'd been in Metropolis before today? Well, yes, but... Hold it, Jim. Didn't you ask him more about this later, Miss Lane? I didn't get the chance. First, we had to rush Jim to a doctor, and as soon as the doctor said Jim would be okay, Mr. Smith had to rush off to the ballpark because his manager and the photographers and a lot of people were waiting there for him. I see. Look, I know it sounds crazy, Candy, but this Bud Smith looks exactly like Clark Kent. He's a dead ringer for him. And if he has lost his memory, well, well, maybe... maybe he is Clark. Could be, could be. Sometimes I'm sure he is, but then when I hear... Wait, Jim. You both said his voice was different from Kent's, isn't that so? Yes. It's much deeper. But in every other way, he seems just like Clark, the way he walks, all his mannerisms. A- and if he's got amnesia, well, well, maybe whatever caused it, a shock or an accident, affected his voice, too. Jeepers, maybe that's it. Well, I never heard anything like that, but... Well, it could be, I guess. Certainly it could. Nobody knows very much about amnesia, Candy. What about the glasses? Kent always wore them, but you say Smith doesn't. No, but listen he to this. He couldn't be the great ball player he is, playing without specs if his eyes are weak. I know, but, take my word but for it. But listen to this, Candy. Jim said he tried on Clark's glasses once, and they were like window glass, didn't you, Jim? Is that so, Jim? Yeah. You wouldn't even know you had glasses on. Then why would Kent wear them? Well, Clark had a lot of... Um, eccentricities, Candy, like, well, like disappearing suddenly without telling anyone where he was going. Yeah, and then popping up again where you never expected him to be. Yeah, but how could Kent be a terrific pitcher and hitter like this Smith when we know he couldn't even throw a bean bag? Yeah, that bothers me, too. I don't know about that, but, well, if you just see Bud Smith for yourself, Candy... Don't worry, I'm going to see him. I'm going to find out if he's Kent or not tonight. You are. What's your plan, Candy? There's one sure way that can't miss. Bud Smith is going to pitch for the Titans tonight against the Dodgers. Yes. We three will be at the game, and right after it, I'll prove without question whether or not Bud Smith is Clark Kent. Tonight, Private Detective Candy Myers promises... He will prove definitely whether or not Bud Smith is the missing Clark Kent. Will he be successful? We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, if your crowd has a secret password or a code, that's important stuff. You don't want anybody else to get hold of that, not even your own family. And that's where the Army Money Belt Kellogg's Pep is offering you comes in mighty handy. Man, it's terrific. A real, genuine army money belt, just like the G.I.'s wore, with three secret compartments. One large pocket and two smaller ones. And there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret. A safe hiding place for your papers and letters and and collections and secret codes. Swell when you go hiking or to camp this summer. It's the real thing. A genuine army money belt in real G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable, so it'll fit you slick, and it's the genuine article. G.I.'s paid a dollar for it, but all you do is to mail 10 cents in one box top from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pet, and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Got that? You send one dime and one box top from Kellogg's Pep, along with your name and address clearly printed, to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Don't put it off. Don't miss out. Send in your order today. Get your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, our scene is the library of Big George Latimer's palatial estate in Metropolis Heights. The burly politician is questioning Blake, his slight, bald-headed secretary. Well, Blake, what about that blackmailing gumshoe McGuire? Oh, he'll never try to blackmail you again, Mr. Latimer. Not in this world, anyhow. Good. Imagine he's trying to hold me up for a quarter of a million dollars. Then getting yellow and refusing to after Superman today. I told him he'd pay for it. Oh, he paid all right, Mr. Latimer. In full. Good. Now, what about Bud Smith, Superman? Is it definite he's going to pitch tonight? Well, the Titans manager announced it to the press, so it's pretty definite. How about our box? You got that, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. Your name carries a lot of weight in this town, Mr. Latimer. I'm going to carry a lot more as soon as I'm through with Superman. Mark my words, Blake. Side of six months, no Jew or Catholic or Negro or anybody of foreign extraction will be able to hold public office in this state. If you say so, Mr. Latimer. I do say so. Now, what about Dr. Marsh? Let's get hold of him. He's standing by, sir. And Eddie. 
Yes, he's got his card and papers. I thought I'd play safe and send Joe along with him just in case. Good idea. And we're all set? Well, I've checked and double-checked every detail, Mr. Latimer. I don't see how we can miss. We won't miss, Blake. This plan is foolproof. By midnight tonight, I'll have Superman in my hands again. By midnight tomorrow, you'll be a broken wreck. Out of my way. Forever. Floatingly, Big George Latimer sounds the knell of doom for Superman. What is his foolproof plan to trap the Man of Steel and deliver him again into the hands of Dr. Marsh, the former German concentration camp physician? Tonight is also the night that Candy Myers promised Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen he would prove whether or not Bud Smith is Clark Kent, who, as we know, is Superman. Will Candy and our friends win and so help to serve Superman and restore his memory? Or will Big George Latimer, the vicious, bigoted political chieftain, conquer? Tomorrow's suspenseful episode carries a thrill a minute, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines that is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, what goes with the kids in other countries? What do they look like and how do they dress? Well, Kellogg has the answer with a cutout... Dolls of all nations on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles. It's swell fun cutting them out and changing their costumes, collecting all six countries in the series, like Norway and, and Holland and China. Two cutout dolls with native costumes on every package, and only on packages of Kellogg's Crumbles, the only cereal made in crinkly, sort of sweet and mellow rich shreds of real whole wheat. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Crumbles, and be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Man, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Man, this is... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Clark Kent's friends determine a method to prove conclusively whether or not he is Bud Smith, an unexpected and startling event takes place... That completely defeats their plan. Say, grab yourself a pencil and get a load of this exciting new surprise offer. Kellogg's Pep is offering you a real, genuine United States Army money belt. The very same money belt that GIs used for carrying their personal letters and, and photographs and identification. It's genuine GI equipment. It's made of khaki with three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones for carrying your secret codes and notes, your club secrets, you know, things that you like to keep confidential. There's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret. This genuine army money belt is made of sturdy, water-resistant cloth. It has a full-size buckle and is adjustable so it'll fit you slick. You can wear it under your coat or your jacket or on the outside. You can wear it around your waist or slung over one shoulder. Now, G.I.s paid a dollar for their money belts, but all you do is to mail ten cents plus a box top from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now, remember, send your dime with one Kellogg's Pep box top and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Today, send for your army money belt from that sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. 
After Big George Latimer, a crooked politician, forcibly fed him liquid kryptonite, Superman lost his memory. Then, unaware of his identity, the Man of Steel adopted the name Bud Smith and became a sensational baseball pitcher, working his way up from the Bush Leagues to the Major League Metropolis Titans. Struck by his amazing resemblance to the missing Clark Kent, who, unknown to them, is really Superman, Lois Lane and young Jimmy Olsen, reporters for the Daily Planet, consulted Candy Myers, their private detective friend. Candy said he knew how to prove whether or not Bud Smith, the pitcher, was Kent, and promised to do so after the game that night. But meanwhile, worried that Superman might recover his memory, Big George Latimer made plans to complete the destruction of the Man of Steel's mind and body. As we continue now, Candy, Lois, and Jimmy are in a box at the ballpark, watching Bud Smith pitch his first game for the Titans. It is night, but the powerful lighting system makes the diamond appear bright as day. Listen. Smith struck out the side again. Boy, oh boy, that makes 12 strikeouts in four innings. How do you like that for pitching, Miss Lane? Pretty good, Jim. Pretty good. It's terrific, Miss Lane. Sensational. You're not kidding, Candy. Well, I don't know very much about baseball, Well, let me but... tell you, this Bud Smith is the greatest pitcher who ever lived. Now, take my word for it, Miss Lane. All right, Candy. Oh, yeah. yeah, but he's out of this room. All right, I said, Jim. I'll agree. He's a terrific pitcher. But what I want to know is, is he or is he not Bob Kent? Well, I... Gosh, I don't know. When I look at him, I'm sure he is. And then, well, how could Mr. Kent oh, be Oh, don't bother a... going through all that again, Jim. Candy said that he could prove whether or not Bud Smith was caught. Well, how about it, Candy? I said I'd prove it after the game tonight, and I will. How? Yeah. How are you going to do it, Candy? Just leave it to me. Okay, but let's get... Tell me this, Miss Lane. Did you make a date with Bud Smith for after the game like I told you yes, to? Yes, I did. I phoned him, and he said he'd be glad to have supper with us. Swell. But I wish you'd tell me how you intend to prove whether he's talk or not. It's simple. I'm going to... Hey, what happened, Jim? The final second baseman got a single, and here comes Bud Smith up to bat. Oh, boy, watch this. Listen, Candy. Just a minute, Miss Lane. I want to see this. But look, I, I must say... Wait for a good one, Smitty! Listen, Candy! Please, Miss Lane, wait. Here comes the pitch to Smith! Holy smokes, look at that ball go, Candy! Jump it, Jemima! It's over the bleachers and still traveling! How'd you like that home run, Miss Lane? Huh? How'd you like it? It was lovely, Jim, but I wish you'd stop slapping me on the back! While in another box across the diamond from our friend, Big George Latimer sits watching the game with Blake, his secretary. Behind them are half a dozen quiet, hard-faced men. This fellow Smith is quite a ball player, Mr. Latimer. You ought to be, considering who he is, Blake. Uh, that's quite right, sir. Well, the game will be over soon. And then... So where's Eddie? I don't see him. I told him to get started on his inspection. Oh. Joe with him? Yes, sir. And everything's in order. Cards, papers, everything. With your political connections, it was easy to arrange, Mr. Latimer. Good. Now, let's see. Boys are here. I've got the kryptonite. Now, what about the car, Blake? It's all set. Don't worry, Mr. Latimer. Don't worry until I see Superman where I want him. All along with me and Dr. Marsh. You realize what would happen to me if he recovered his memory before we got hold of him? I don't think there's much chance of that before the game is... Well, you can't tell. I said a sudden shock could do it. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Smith's coming up to bat again. What about it? Suppose he could sit on the head. Lots of players doing that batting. That could restore his memory. Good heavens, I never thought of that. I did. I get the jitters every time he comes to the plate. Why, he, he swung and missed. You see, even he can miss. He only has to misjudge the ball by an inch. He can get bean. Wait, sir. The pitch is going to throw again. Smith hit another home run, Mr. Latimer. Just look at that ball travel. He won't come to bat again tonight. Get ready, Blake. A few minutes more. A little bit of payoff. that guy is, and what a hitter, too. Listen, Candy, I wish you'd tell me. He's holding up the game. Where's the next batter? I don't know. Hey, there's 
a huddle in the Dodger dugout. I guess they're trying to decide what pitch hitter to send up. That's all very interesting, but the game is practically over, and you still haven't told me how you intend to prove if Bud Smith is caught can or not. Did you ever hear of fingerprints, Miss Lane? Fingerprints? fingerprints. Sure, sure. They... Oh, oh. Here comes a Dodger pinch hitter. Oh, Candy, never mind the pinch hitter. What were you saying about fingerprints? Well... A fingerprint is one thing that can't lie, see? Oh, well, everybody knows that. I don't see one. Well, I was up in Kent's apartment today, and I got a nice collection of his fingerprints. Wow! Did you see that? What speed! Nobody can see Smith pitches. Forget that, Candy. Will you tell me what you plan to do with that collection of Paul's fingerprints? Okay. I'm going to... Wait. What's this? Why, Candy, please! Well, right after this game... I'm going to get a set of Bud Smith's fingerprints. Savvy? You are. Yeah. Then we compare Smith's prints with Kent's. And if they match... Then Bud Smith is caught. Right. Hey, that's a swell idea. It certainly is, Candy. It can't miss. Where and when did Smith say he'd meet us, Miss Lane? Outside the Titans' clubhouse, Candy, as soon as he changed into street clothes. Okay. Come on, then. By the time we get through this crowd and around to the clubhouse, he ought to be ready. Right. <gasps> what, what the... Hey. Hey. Oh, the lights went out. I don't like Neither this. Neither do I. I can't see a thing. Jim? Jim, where are you? I'm here, Miss Lane. Hey, Candy. I'm here, Jim. Stand where you are, both of you. I got a hunch something's wrong. Very wrong. Spreading his arms wide, Candy Myers shields Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen from the confused crowd, which mills about blindly in the darkness. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Listen, everybody's doing it. What? Why, sending for that wonderful, genuine army money belt that Kellogg's Pep is offering you, boys and girls. It's terrific, the real GI article, with three secret compartments to carry your secret papers, to keep them hidden, keep them from getting lost. A special flap folds over on the inside of those three secret pockets, so there's no chance of anybody finding out what you're carrying. Yes, this money belt will come in mighty handy when you boys and girls go on hikes this summer. This is the real thing, a genuine army money belt in real khaki color. It has a full-size buckle, and it's adjustable so it'll fit any size waist. You ask any ex-GI you know, and he'll tell you that he paid a dollar for the same thing in the army. And all you do is to mail ten cents and one box top from a package of crisp, delicious pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that straight now? For your genuine army money belt with the three secret compartments. Mail one dime and one box stop from super delicious Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Don't miss out on this thrilling offer. Send in your order today. And every day, eat the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, after five minutes of darkness in the Metropolis ballpark, the huge arc lights above the field flash back on again as suddenly as they had flashed off, once more flooding the scene with brilliant light. Candy Myers, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen make their way through the grandstand to the street. And as we rejoin them, they are waiting outside the Titans clubhouse for Bud Smith. Gee whiz, it's taking Smith a long time to change into his street clothes. It certainly is, Jim. Mm, seems to be taking all the players a long time. Not one of them has come out of the clubhouse yet. That's right. I wish he'd hurry up. So do I. I can't wait to find out if he's Listen. Rip- hey, sirens. Yeah, police. Good heavens, they're stopping right here. Yeah. I wonder what's wrong. I don't know. Oh, hello, Candy. Hey, uh, what's cooking? Something happened to Bud Smith. What? To Bud Smith? What do you mean, Sergeant? Why, we just got a call from the Titans manager who told us that Smith started in a clubhouse after the game, but he never got there. Are you kidding? Yeah, he disappeared. Come on, boys, upstairs. Hurrying up the stairs to the Titans clubhouse, Sergeant Donovan leaves Candy Myers, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen staring after him 
with their mouths open. Bud Smith has disappeared. Bud Smith, as we know, is Superman. And we know, too, that big George Latimer has laid elaborate plans to capture him and complete his fiendish task of crippling his mind and body. Is the Man of Steel now in Latimer's hands? We'll find out in tomorrow's exciting episode when we also make some other startling discoveries. So be sure to listen. Tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Now that the weather's fine and the birds are back, how's about starting your collection of full-color bird pictures that come, one in every package, of Kellogg's Crumbles? You'll learn to identify all 24 in the series, like the Oriole and the Scarlet Tanager, and you can trade duplicates with your friends. And look on the side of every Crumbles package for instructions on sending in to get the colorful album so that you can paste in your collection. Tell Mom that you want Crumbles, the only cereal made in crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents The Adventures of Superman Today as Superman's friends frantically search for him The Man of Steel faces a desperate fight for sheer survival As a helpless prisoner of his murder-bent enemies Say, shh. You want to hide your secret papers? Hide the gang passwords, secret codes, your money that maybe you're saving up for something special? Well, then sit yourself right down and write for that genuine army money belt. Kellogg's Pep has for you. It's the real thing. It has three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones. There's a special flap that folds over the inside and keeps the pocket secret. You can wear this army belt under your coat or jacket, and you can even sleep with it like lots of G.I.s did. Remember, this is the real thing. A genuine army money belt in G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable so it'll fit you slick, and it's the genuine article. G.I.s paid a dollar for it, but all you do is to mail ten cents, one box top from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that? You send one dime and one box stop from Kellogg's Pep along with your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Don't put it off. Don't miss out. Send in your order today. Get your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments from P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. <laughs> Now the adventures of Superman. Although Superman lost his memory and believing his name was Bud Smith became a famous professional baseball player, Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician who brought on Superman's amnesia by feeding him liquid kryptonite, was deeply worried. Fearing that the Man of Steel might recover his memory and seek vengeance, Latimer laid plans to abduct him and complete the destruction of his mind and body. Following a night baseball game in Metropolis, Bud Smith, or Superman, mysteriously disappeared. And as we continue a short time later, 
private detective Candy Myers, who suspects that Bud Smith is his friend, Clark Kent, the missing Daily Planet reporter, has sought the aid of the famous Batman, the only person in the world who is aware that Superman and Clark Kent are one and the same man. Listen. You say you and Miss Lane and Jim Olson searched the ballpark thoroughly, Candy? Every inch of it, Batman, and so did the police. But no Bud Smith. What do you suppose happened to him? I don't know. When last seen, he was walking across the diamond to the clubhouse after the game. And the lights went out. The lights went out? Yeah. And when they came on again, he disappeared. Holy smokes. And those lights weren't turned out by accident either. Are you sure, Candy? Positive. I checked with the park electrician who says he didn't turn him out. I checked up on him, too. We found out that he was watching the last inning from the clubhouse window. The Titans trainer. Now, I see. Well, isn't it possible that maybe a fuse might have blown out? No, or... no, no. No fuse blew out. Nothing was wrong in the power station. I checked that, too. Somebody deliberately turned out those lights. And me, I... I've got an idea who that somebody is. Really? Who? Well, I found out that two guys showed up in the park superintendent's office about the seventh inning. They said they were from the city building commissioner's office, and they had cards and papers to prove it. Uh Uh-oh. They said they had orders to inspect the place, and the superintendent gave him his keys. He did? Yeah. Yeah, I figure they got into the electrician's control room and pulled the master switch. Why, of course. Did you check with the commissioner's office? Sure, sure, but the commissioner says he never issued the inspection order and insists he knows nothing about it. But, um... You know who he is, don't you? Well, no. No, I don't think so. A guy named Lacey, a cheap, ward-healing politician who was appointed by the party boss, which means by Big George Latimer. Latimer? You mean you think he's behind Right. The... I figure Latimer's the guy who ordered the lights turned out in the ballpark tonight, just so his gorillas could grab Bud Smith. But wait, wait a minute, Candy. That's a serious accusation. I know that, but Latimer was seen at the game tonight in a box with half a dozen of his muscle men. And everybody knows Big George Latimer isn't a baseball fan. Well, that proves nothing. After all, why should Latimer have Duck Smith? Because if I'm right, and Smith is Clark Kent... Clark Kent? What are you talking about? Oh, oh, I forgot. You've been out of town. Yes, Robin and I have been hunting for Superman. Uh, uh, and Clark Kent, too. But uh, what's this about the great pitcher Bud Smith being Kent? Well, he's a dead ringer for Kent. Eyes, hair, features, build, the way he moves, everything. No kidding. The only thing different is his voice. But Miss Lane figures whatever made him lose his memory, like a bad shock, maybe, might have affected his voice. Wait, Candy. You say this fellow Smith lost his memory? Miss Lane thinks so, because Smith told her he wasn't sure his name was Smith. And he was starting to tell her he couldn't remember anything that happened more than a month ago when they were interrupted. Great, Scott. That fits in perfectly. Fits in? What do you mean? Somehow, Kent must have gotten away from Latimer last month, suffering from amnesia. Now he turns up in Metropolis as a great ball player. Latimer recognizes him and... and... grabs him before he can recover his memory and tell the police what Latimer did with Superman. Well, uh, y- yes, in a way... That uh... must be it. Didn't you say Latimer had the kryptonite and he used it to weaken Superman and take him away someplace? Yes, that's right, and but... And he grabbed Kent, too, on account of Kent knew all about it. Well, yes. Uh, now, look, Andy. Uh, Latimer lives in Metropolis Heights, right near the ballpark. I think what we'd better do is contact Inspector Henderson and get a search warrant. Save your breath, Batman. I already tried that. You did? Yeah, and Henderson said he let you and Robin talk him into searching Latimer's house once last month for Superman. And Latimer almost got him fired because of that. I know, but this is... So Henderson said he isn't sticking his neck out again. What's more, he says for his money, Smith was grabbed by gamblers who had bet against the Titans winning the pennant, or by kidnappers who want a big ransom from the Titans. Rubbish. And he says so far as the possibility of Smith being Kent is concerned, that's a joke. Kent couldn't pitch a beanbag, let alone a baseball. That's what he thinks. All right, then. Robin and I will have to work alone. Correction, please. Robin and you and me. No, no, Candy. If you cross Henderson, it might cost you your private detective's license. I'll take that chance. Kent's my friend, and I'm sure Latham has got him. So come on. We'll go out to his house right now. Okay, then. Robin's asleep upstairs. I'll wake him and we'll get going. Well, here we are. Okay, Robin. Candy, pile out. Okay, let's go. Look, Batman, we're not just going to ring Latimer's bell and tell him we want Bud Smith, are we? We might say Smith forgot his baseball glove and we're bringing it to him. But I don't think we will, Robin. Come on. Oh, wait, will you? When we were here before, the joint was jumping with gunmen. Really? Ring the bell, will you, Candy? It'll be a pleasure. I don't get it, Batman. You don't usually lead with your chin. Look, chum, with Superman, with Clark Kent in danger, we've got to do everything we can to find him before Latimer can do anything else to him. Gunman or no gunman, check. If you put it that way, check. I've been itching for another go with Latimer's gorillas anyhow. Good, now you're talking. 
Ring again, Candy. Right. Wait, somebody's coming. What's that, you two? Come on, Sid. So am I. Uh, yes, I'll sir. take him. <gasps> Sorry to be rude, friend, but a man's life is at stake. Come on, Robin. Get your rope and truss him up. I'll have him all set for the market in ten seconds, Splat. Now, you gag him. Okay. Hurry, you guys, before somebody else shows up. Come on, step on it, Robin. One hitch here, and another one there. That does it. Yeah, nice going. Now, hold it. It's awful quiet in here. It's a little too quiet, I'm thinking. The playmates are probably upstairs where they were the last time. Standing by with their arsenal all set. Maybe. Here's what we find out. Let's go. Nobody in this room, Batman. Or in this one. We've searched the whole floor. There's another floor one flight up. Come on. And keep your eyes peeled. Nobody on this floor either. That leaves only the basement. All right, we'll have a look at that. Let's go. Nobody down here? Looks as if we've drawn a blank, Batman. It sure does, Robin. Latimer and his boys must have taken Kent someplace else tonight. Figures all right, but where? Yeah, where? Deeply disappointed, Robin and Candy Myers look to Batman who can only shrug helplessly. Where is Clark Kent? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so stand by. It's the genuine article. It's the real thing. It's a United States Army money belt, and it's offered to you while the supply lasts by Kellogg's Pep, so that you can carry your valuables in secret just as the G.I.s did. This Army Money Belt has three secret pockets that'll hold private notes and letters, your secret club codes and ciphers, your allowance money. There's one large pocket, two smaller ones, covered with a special kind of flap that folds over on the inside and conceals the pockets. Great for camping trips and hikes. It's exactly the same money belt that G.I.s wore in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it's sure to fit you. Don't miss out. Send for yours today. Although G.I.s paid a dollar for theirs, you can get yours for only ten cents and a box top from that package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep. Send ten cents and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll repeat that. You mail one dime and one box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Today, right now, send for your genuine army belt. And every day, eat P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Batman, Robin, and Candy Myers search Big George Latimer's house for Clark Kent, the man of steel still wearing the baseball uniform of Bud Smith lies on a couch in a room in a small bungalow. On a table two feet away rests the jagged piece of green glowing kryptonite, which, torn from the exploded planet on which Superman was born, here in the atmosphere of Earth robs him of all his great strength and curious powers when brought within ten feet of him. Near the couch stands big George Latimer with Dr. Marsh, the former Nazi concentration camp physician, who carefully measures drops of a colorless solution into a glass of milk, both of them enjoying Superman's weakened condition. Why have you... Brought me here. Why can't I move? Be quiet, Jew. Oh. Got to hurry, Marsh. Every police officer in the city is looking for Bud's I am as anxious as you are to have this over, Mr. Latimer. Should the police find him here in my house and discover he is Superman, I, I am as good as stay. That goes for both no of us. Strength. Look, What's how long is this going to take? I told you, six drops of liquefied kryptonite every two hours for 24 hours. That'll finish him? Oh. It will permanently block off a portion Man, of his brain for the rest of his life, and his body no will strength. be considerably weakened. You're sure of that? Of course. Did that you not see how he lost his memory job. after only two doses of the kryptonite? Yes, but Tomorrow I... Tomorrow night at this time he I... will be, as I say it, a mental and physical wreck. You can turn him loose in the streets and never have to worry yes. that he will remember what happened Please. or who he is or that he will be what, able to harm him. happened to Wonderful. Me. And remember what I promised, Marsh. Please. This works. That 10,000 a year job in the health department is yours. It will work. Come now, it is time for treatment. Please. And soon, tomorrow night at this time, we will see the end of Superman. (laughs) 
his owl-like eyes gleaming behind his thick lens spectacles. Dr. Marsh takes up the glass of milk in which the deadly kryptonite has been dissolved and advances on the helpless Superman. Is Dr. Marsh right? Is this truly the end of Superman? Batman, Robin, and Candy Myers are certain that Bud Smith is in Latimer's hands, but they have no idea where. How can they find him before the fatal 24 hours are gone? There are thrills ahead and an exciting new development in tomorrow's episode, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Vacation days. And that's Crumble's weather. Extra playtime means that you need the energy a real whole wheat cereal can give you. So wrap yourself around a bowl full of Kellogg's Crumbles. Those crinkly shreds of sweet and mellow-rich whole wheat, cool and fresh and breezy tasting in cool milk. Mm-mm. A dish full of those Kellogg's Crumbles sprinkled with ripe red chill berries and swimming to the brim in cool milk. Good? Terrific. You bet you're in for a prize dish with crisp, crunchy, crinkly Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman, a prisoner of a man who seeks his complete destruction, seems hopelessly doomed as the police and his friends seek vainly to find him. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All you fellows and girls, get your dime ready and get ready to be surprised. Don't let this weekend go by without sending for the genuine army money belt Kellogg's Pep has for you. This is the real thing, same as the G.I.'s war, and it's something that you don't want to miss. It's terrific. It has three secret compartments to carry your secret paper. No chance of anybody finding out what you've got in those three secret pockets because there's a special flap that folds over on the inside, hides them so you're the only one who knows what's there. You can wear it under your coat or your jacket or on the outside. It's exactly the same money belt G.I.'s wore, the genuine Army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle, adjustable so it's sure to fit any size waist. Don't miss out. Send for yours today. Although G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, you get yours for only ten cents and one box top from a package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep. Mail your orders to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll repeat that for you. Mail one dime and one box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Today, right now, send for your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments. And every day, eat the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. Superman was caused to lose his memory through the use of liquefied kryptonite fed to him by Big George Latimer, he became a sensational baseball pitcher under the assumed name of Bud Smith. But fearing he might recover his memory and extract vengeance, Latimer engineered a daring abduction of the famous pitcher and took him to the home of Dr. Marsh, a former German concentration camp physician. There, Marsh resumed the forced feeding of kryptonite to the Man of Steel and promised that in 24 hours he would be a mental and physical wreck. Meanwhile, suspecting that Smith was Clark Kent, the missing newspaper reporter, and that he was in Latimer's hands, Batman, Robin, and private detective Candy Myers vainly searched the politician's home. As we continue now, having left Candy to watch Latimer's house, Batman and Robin are driving through the dark, deserted streets of Metropolis in their Batmobile. It is just before dawn. Listen. 
Where to now, Batman? We're going to circulate around in the underworld, Robin. The underworld? Uh Uh-huh. What for? We'll never find Latimer there. I don't expect to, but... He lives like a plushy millionaire. Big estate, butlers, ritzy clubs and restaurants, all that sort of thing. Right. But you don't think he took Clark Kent or Bud Smith to a ritzy club or restaurant, do you, with every police officer in town looking for Smith? Well, no, of course not. But you think Latimer took Bud Smith to some dive in the underworld, huh? Maybe. But this much is certain. Latimer employs gangsters and gunmen to do his dirty work. And most of those rats hang out in the underworld. Check. Well, we know our way around there. I'm hoping that one of those joints we can pick up a lead to somebody who works for Big George Latimer. And if we can, we... We might be able to locate Mr. Kent. I mean, Smith. Is that it? Right. Better be soon, too. Because Kent's already lost his memory. Unless we get to him very soon, something much worse than that will happen to him. Hang on, Robin. I'm going to make time. As Batman and Robin speed their search for Clark Kent, whom only Batman knows to be Superman, the Man of Steel, still dressed in the baseball uniform of the Titans, lies in restless sleep on a couch in a shade-drawn room in Dr. Marsh's metropolis bungalow. Two feet away on a table rests the piece of jagged green glowing kryptonite, torn from the exploded planet on which Superman was born, and which, in the atmosphere of Earth, robs him of all his great strength and curious powers when brought within ten feet of him. Big George Latimer, vicious, bigoted political leader, sleeps in a room nearby. Dr. Marsh has descended to his basement laboratory to liquefy another small portion of the strange metallic kryptonite. Two of Latimer's henchmen, the burly Gus and a wiry, squint-eyed man called Punchy, sit in the room with Superman. Gus shoves a deck of playing cards towards his companion. Uh, well, what's this for? It's your deal, Punchy. Hey, get that goofy look off your pen and deal the cards, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Gus, uh, did you hear what that guy said? Well, who said? That croaker, Dr. Marsh. He said by tomorrow night at this time, this here Bud Smith won't have no mind and also no strength left at all. I know, I know. So what? So that can't be, Gus. He's got to be strong enough to play ball because the Titans can't win without him. They couldn't even finish in the first division without him. But well, ain't that too bad. Look, are you going to deal her, ain't you? Oh, now, wait, Gus, I'm getting sore, because nobody never told me about this. Nobody never told you about what? Well, uh, about about this here Bud Smith being finished. Why should anybody tell you anything? Well, I figured it was just a snatch, see? And when somebody coughed up a wad of cabbage, we'd give Smith back to the Titans, and then they could go on and win the pennant. Look, Punchy, a dummy like you without no brain shouldn't try to figure nothing. Now forget about the Titans and Bud Smith and deal them cards. Okay, okay, but but I can't forget this is the first chance the Titans had to win the pennant since 1935. But if they ain't going to have Bud Give Smith... Give me them cards. Oh, why? You told me the deal, didn't you? Yeah, and I'm telling you to forget it. I'll play solid there. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to do? Go get lost. But Mr. Latimer said I gotta stay here and help you watch Bud Smith. Okay, watch it, but don't talk if I'm gonna listen to you some more. I'll blow my top. Hey, Gus. Huh? Do you suppose maybe we could get Doc Marsh to kind of, well, uh, sort of take it easy on Bud Smith? Uh, maybe so then he... Ah, Gus, didn't I tell you to stop driving me nuts? I'm gonna beat you real hard. Now, no, look, Gus, I take you it easy. You wicked titans of Bud Smith, you drive me crazy. Oh, no, uh, let me go, Gus. Hey, what? Now you woke Smith up. Hey, now let me listen you? to him make with a goofy yeah, look. Yeah, but... Oh, hey. God, I won't let me. Gus, uh, Punchy, Punchy, what's his nose? Stop! Oh, what's you done? What does this mean? You are here to guard this man, not fight. Are oh, you both crazy? Why, he's driving me nuts with his call. You. No, hold me. I don't do nothing. Help me. do nothing except beat my ears down about the Titans and Titans. Why can't I move? You will wake up Mr. Latimer. What will he say doctor, when I tell him what goes on me. here? Yeah, help me, sure. Know, look, Doc, be a good guy, though. I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, well, we didn't mean nothing. Oh. What if the neighbors become suspicious? They will call the police and it will then be the end for all of us. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, forget it, Doc, will you? Uh, what is the use of talking with stupid fools like you? I will watch here myself until Mr. Latimer awakes. Uh, Gus, go out and buy two quarts of milk. I need it for our friend on the couch. Not me. The boss told me not to move from this room until he woke up. A poor playing friend got awake miss once before, you know. But the milk, I need the milk for his treatment. I'll let Punchy go for it. Oh, sure, sure. I'll go, Doc. All right, go then. And hurry, Punchy. In a few minutes, it will be time for another treatment. Okay, two quarts, you want? Yeah, two quarts. And mark schnell. <laughs> The 
first time the Titans get a chance to win the pennant since 1935 and what happens? Bud Smith, the first quit pitcher and hitter they buy, he goes and gets the works. I ought to do something about it, but if I do, then I get the works. Oh, the Titans ain't got no chance without Bud Smith. Holy smokes, what'll I do? Shaking his head ruefully, Punchy walks down the street worried about his beloved Titans. Yearning to help them, yet afraid to do anything. What will Punchy do? We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say, you're planning to go on a hike tomorrow? Well, I bet you wish you could buckle on one of those genuine army money belts Kellogg's Pep has for you. It has three secret compartments, and it comes in mighty handy to carry your money and identification papers, secret codes, scout knife, and matches. Wonderful to take on hikes or when you go camping this summer. It has three pockets, one large and two smaller ones, concealed pockets. There's a flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret. So get busy now and get yours while the getting's good. These Army money belts are going fast. This is the real thing. G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable, so it'll fit you fine. And it's the genuine article. G.I.'s paid a dollar for it. But all you do is to mail 10 cents, one box top from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address clearly printed, The Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that? You send one dime and one box top from Kellogg's Pep, The Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is limited to the United States. Don't put it off. Don't miss out. Send in your order today. Get your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments from P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, the sun has risen brighter over Metropolis. Newsboys cry out headlines of extra editions of the morning papers which detail the unsuccessful search for Bud Smith, the Titans' sensational baseball pitcher and home run hitter. Punchy is conscience heavy, but growing more befuddled as he progresses from tavern to tavern, has stopped at a lunch wagon. Now we find him sipping a cup of coffee. Yes, up, uh, pal? It's a sure thing them Titans won't have no chance for the pennant without Bud Smith. Not a chance. You said it. You know, me, I always been a Titan fan ever since I was that high. Yeah, me too. Sure is a shame about Bud Smith disappearing, ain't it? Yeah, rotten shame. And all on account of that dirty Latimer. Let he cares about the Titans. Who? You know, I oughtn't to let him get away with it. I ought to do something to help the Titans. Yeah, like what? Yes, sir, I bet you I could do it, too. Then the Titans would sure win the punt. Maybe I should order. to... Yeah, they probably do the same thing to me as they're doing to Smith. Poor Bud. Never pitch again. Listen, mister, what gives with you? I don't know what to do. What to help the Titans. It's the first chance since 1935. I don't want to die, though. Hey, hey, how, how can you help the Titans? Hey, listen, you. Hey, come back a minute. <laughs> Hello? That you, Batman? Yes, who's this? Charlie Ross. You know, at the lunch wagon on 16th? Oh, hello, Charlie. What's on your mind? Well, uh, a dopey little guy was just in here. He's popping off about the Titans and how they couldn't win the pennant without Bud Smith. And uh, he said something about uh, he could help them get Smith back if he wanted to. He could get Smith? You sure? Yeah. Uh, he said it'd mean his neck, though. And he mentioned a name that sounded like Latimer. He did? Uh, that's right. Uh, I tried to pump him, because I remember you said you were looking for anybody tied up with Big George. You bet I am. Is that fellow still there? Uh, no, no, no. He left. Uh, I called you right away, though. Good boy, Charlie. Maybe Robin and I can find him. We'll be right out, so stay right where you are. This may be the break we need. Robin! Hey, Robin! On the double! A few moments later, Batman and Robin are roaring through the streets in the Batmobile, bound for Charlie Ross's lunch wagon. Will they pick up Punchy's trail, the trail which leads to Superman, and will they be in time? There's a thrill a minute in Monday's exciting episode, fellows and girls, so don't miss it. Tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman.
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Bet you've got a lot of fun planned for tomorrow. That's what summer days are for, so start your fun right at breakfast with Kellogg's Crumbles. These shreds of real whole wheat have a mellow-rich, just-right flavor that sure is exciting. And when you top off your bowl of Kellogg's Crumbles with frosty, chilled berries and sugar, then pour on cool milk, oh, man, you've got a breezy, refreshing breakfast treat that'll keep you busy on that bowl right down to the last wonderful spoonful. Try them tomorrow, Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, in a race against time, Superman's friends trail a slim clue to his whereabouts, while his enemies set out to erase that one possibility... Permanently. Say, this is super special week, because this week you can still get in on that super special offer that super delicious Kellogg's Pep has for you. It's terrific. It's genuine. A money belt like the G.I.'s War. Yes, siree, you can get the exact same article. It has three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones to carry your club passwords, secret codes, letters, identification, money. Swell for you when you go camping or hiking. A safe place for your scout knife, matches, comb, and soap maybe. There's a flap that folds over on the inside of the pockets, keeps your belongings safe and dry. This belt is made of water-resistant cloth. The genuine Army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it's sure to fit any size waist. Now, G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, but you can get yours for only ten cents and one box top from those crisp, fresh whole wheat flakes Kellogg's Pep. Send the Pep box top and a dime and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll repeat that for you. Mail one dime and one box top from Super Delicious Pep along with your name and address... Clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Get busy. Send for your genuine Army money belt today. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. By feeding Superman a solution of kryptonite, a strange metallic substance from the exploded planet on which he was born, and which in the atmosphere of Earth robs him of all his strength, Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, and Dr. Marsh, a former Nazi concentration camp official, made the Man of Steel lose his memory. Superman managed to escape them, and believing his name was Bud Smith, became a sensational baseball pitcher for the Metropolis Titans. But then he was captured again by Latimer, and Dr. Marsh resumed feeding him liquid kryptonite, stating that within 24 hours, Superman would be a mental and physical wreck. However, one of Latimer's hoodlums, an ardent baseball fan known as Punchy, has been considering helping his beloved Titans by revealing what he knows. As we continue now, in response to a phone call, the famous Batman and Robin have arrived at a lunch wagon near the Metropolis docks, where Batman is questioning Charlie Ross, the proprietor. Listen. Uh, This fellow, uh, Punchy, you say he mentioned Big George Latimer's name, Charlie? Well, he didn't say Big George exactly, but he did say Latimer all right. What'd he say about him? Uh, he was belly aching about how the Titans couldn't win the pennant without Bud Smith on the team. And he said something about a lot Latimer cared if the Titans won or not. I don't get it. How did I that... couldn't make any sense out of him either. But you said to let you know if I ran across anybody who seemed like he might be connected with Big George Latimer. That's right. Or know anything about Bud Smith. Uh, so... Look, Charlie... Uh, what does this punchy character look like? 
Well, he's a wiry little guy. Uh, about 35, I'd say, and... Uh, Oh, yeah, he kind of squints. Got that, Robin? Yeah, man. How long ago did he leave here, Charlie? Well, I called you right after he went out. And we came here directly. It was about 15 minutes, and we've been here about five. So he's got 20 minutes start on us. That's not so good. It's not much if he's drinking. Uh, did you notice which way he went after he left your wagon, Charlie? Yeah, he turned up the street, north. Good enough. Thanks loads. Come on, Robin. <laughs> Fellow about 35 and squint sort of. Was he in here, mister? Why, I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. Is this guy a baseball nut? Yeah, he's he, a Titan fan. He was in here then. Swell. Crossing about how the Titans couldn't win without Bud Smith. And <laughs> get this. He said he could help the Titans if he wanted to. It must have been punchy, Batman. Checks with me, Robin. Uh, how long ago was he here, mister? Oh, 10, 15 minutes ago, I'd say. Thanks very much. Let's go, Robin. <laughs> Come into my restaurant here, buys a cup of coffee, and there makes me deaf with his talk about the Titans and Bud Smith. Dopey guy. That's our boy, all right. How long ago was he here, mister? I just got rid of him about five minutes ago. We're practically breathing on his neck. Come on, Batman. Right, Robin. Thanks, friend. Goodbye. A wiry little guy, you say, with a squint? Yes, and he's a hot Titan fan. He was probably here sometime within the last few minutes. Mm, nope, wasn't in here. You sure, mister? Sure, positive. Well, thanks. Come on, Robin, we'll try up the street. No, nobody like that was in here. Well, thank you. Let's go, Robin. Uh-uh, wasn't in here. No, he wasn't in here. Jeepers, what happened, Batman? First punch, he's moving north, stopping at all the joints, and we practically got our hands on him. And then, bingo, he disappears. I don't know. It sure looks as if we lost him, Robin. Oh, but we can't lose him. He obviously knows where Bud Smith or Mr. Kent is. Right, but... Say, wait a minute. I've got an idea. The bookkeeper. Give me that again? The fellow they call the bookkeeper. A character who knows everything about everybody in the underworld. Chances are he can tell us about Punchy and where to find him. Yeah, but will he tell us? I think I can make him. How? I'll explain on the way over to his place. It's a tiny cigar store over on 18th Street. That's not far from here. Come on. As Batman and Robin hurry off in search of the mysterious man called the bookkeeper in hope that he will steer them to the elusive Punchy... An ominous scene is taking place in the small bungalow of Dr. Marsh, where Superman is held prisoner by the powerful kryptonite. In the small, shade-drawn living room, Big George Latimer, his beefy face red with rage, faces Gus, one of his henchmen who has just entered the house. As Dr. Marsh stands by, clasping and unclasping his hands nervously. You mean to stand there and tell me you couldn't find Punchy? Oh, it's the right voice. You, you stupid idiot. How could you let a fool like Punchy out of the house? And you too, Marsh. Didn't you hear me say nobody was to leave this house until tomorrow? When Bud, Bud was finished? Yeah, but, uh, but I needed milk, Mr. Latimer. I, I give him the kryptonite in milk and I had no more. You should have told me that. I would have seen to it. Yes, but you were asleep. You mean Mr. you were asleep, Marsh, asleep at the switch. Yeah. And so are you, Gus. Oh. You both know who Bud Smith really is. And yet you let a senseless fool like Punchy wander around to attract attention. And maybe make the neighbor suspicious. Oh, yeah, I did not know. I around, all right, from one tavern to another. What's that? That's what I come back to tell you, boys. I found out Punchy was in a half a dozen joints on 16th Street getting foiled and beefing about how the Titans can't win a pennant now on account of Bud Smith ain't with him. What else did he say, Gus? Well, as near as I can get it, he'd been hitting it. He could help the Titans get Smith back if he wanted Very to. Very close, He said that? Uh-huh. But, of course, nobody takes him seriously. But somebody might. Oh, that's terrible. Gus. We've got to find Punch and shut him up, and fast. That's right, boss. He's bug hustle about them Titans, and if he gets talking to the wrong guy, good night. But what can we do, Mr. Lesson? Look, Gus, pick up Punch's trail, and when you find him, well, you know what to do. That's all I wanted to hear, boss. I think I know where to find that joint, too. You see, when he gets just so blasted, there's a certain place he goes to. Then go there and find him, and finish him. Don't waste a minute. You can ruin me. Okay, boss, I'm on my way. Hurry, Gus, hurry. And report to me as soon as you've done your job. Patting the bulge of the gun in his shoulder holster, Gus leaves Dr. Marsh's house swiftly to finish punching. What will happen 
We'll return in a moment with the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. Say you'd better get busy or you'll miss out on that real, genuine United States Army money belt super delicious Kellogg's Pep has for you. They're going fast, so send for yours while the supply lasts. This is the real thing. A money belt like the G.I.'s wore with three secret compartments. One large pocket and two smaller ones. You can carry your secret codes, money, important papers, anything you may be collecting. A swell hiding place for your personal things. Now, there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps those pockets secret. It's exactly the same money belt that G.I.'s wore. The genuine Army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it's sure to fit you. You can wear it under your coat or your jacket, even sleep with it. Or you can wear it on the outside. And will you hear what a bargain it is? Although G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, you can get yours for only ten cents and one box top from a package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep. Send your name and address clearly printed with your dime and your box top and mail to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that now? You mail one dime and one box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Today, right now, get your order in. This offer is limited to the United States. Now, the adventures of Superman. As Gus, Big George Latimer's henchman, leaves Dr. Marsh's house with orders to find and destroy Punchy, the mysterious underworld character known as the Bookkeeper is returning to his tiny cigar store, where he finds Batman and Robin waiting for him. As we continue now inside the store, they are talking with the Bookkeeper, a gray-haired, mild-mannered man who wears blue-lensed spectacles. Now, look here, Bookkeeper. I'm putting my cards on the table. You see, I know all about you, everything. And if and you don't... so do the police, Batman. But they've never been able to pin anything on me. No? Well, I can. Baloney. Remember the shilling loft robbery? What about it? A watchman and a police officer were shot on that job. And I happen to know you had a finger in that pie. A big finger. Nuts. I don't have anything to do with any jobs. You can't prove I had anything to do with it. Oh, yes, I can, bookkeeper. I've got a few contacts, too, you know. Now, unless you tell me where to find this punchy character, I'll take what I know to Inspector Henderson. You're bluffing. If you had anything on me, you'd have taken it to the police long ago. The reason I didn't is because I thought I'd need you sometime. And here's your chance to repay my little favor, bookkeeper, and to keep out of jail. Well, how about it? You're bluffing. You said that before. You know my reputation. I don't bluff. Well, what'll it be? Do you play ball with me, or do I play ball with the police? Well, come on, make up your mind. And do it fast. We're in a hurry. Look, Batman, if it ever gets out that I peached, I'll be done for around here. You're done for if you don't. Yeah, but good. Well, all right. Just a minute. Where are you going? I've got some files over here. Work, Batman. Say, how did you know he was mixed up in that job? I didn't. What? You mean you were bluffing? Well, not exactly. Anderson told me once he was sure the bookkeeper was mixed up in the shilling job, but he couldn't prove it. I just repeated what he told me and hoped our reputations would do the rest. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I sure got to hand it to you, Scott. Quiet, quiet, Harry. Batman, when Punchy ain't working, he usually hangs out at this address. 418 West River Street, top floor. 418 West River, huh? Good. Come on, Robin. We've got work to do. Let's go. Followed by his young companion, Batman leaves the bookkeeper's shop and leaps into his Batmobile. And a moment later, the dynamic duo are speeding across the city to West River Street, where they hope to find Punchy. But unknown to our friends, Gus Big George Latimer's henchman is also en route to West River Street with orders to eliminate the talkative little man who holds the key to Superman's very life in his hands. Who will win this race for life? Batman and Robin or Latimer's gunman? Tomorrow's action-packed episode tells the story, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Yes, don't fail to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal.
Now that summer's come, you've got plenty of time for all that fun that you've been saving up. And that makes it Crumbles time. Yes, sir. Kellogg's Crumbles, those hearty, metal-rich shreds of whole wheat, sure help to start your day full of zip and energy. And for a fresh, cool-as-a-breeze breakfast dish, just try this. A layer of Kellogg's Crumbles and a layer of frosty, chilled berries. Then pour on cool milk and dig in. Mouth-watering? Man, you'll keep that spoon going into that bowl till it's polished clean. Try it tomorrow. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman's friends, hot on the trail leading to his whereabouts, are confronted with another stumbling block flung in their path by the villainous George Latimer and his henchmen. Say, have you sent for your GI money belt yet? Well, what are you waiting for? They're going fast, and take it from me, you'll be sorry if you miss up on this terrific offer Kellogg's Pep has for you. This is the genuine article, the very same money belt that G.I.'s wore. It has three concealed compartments, one large pocket, two smaller ones, covered with a special flap that folds over in the inside and keeps those pockets secret. A safe hiding place for your secret codes and messages, your money and identification. This genuine Army money belt is adjustable so that you can buckle it right on to fit you. It's real Army khaki color with a full-size buckle. You can wear it under your coat or jacket, like the G.I.'s did, or on the outside, around your waist, or slung over one shoulder. Now, G.I.'s paid a dollar for their Army money belts, but all you do is to mail ten cents, plus a box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address, clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Don't put it off. This offer is good for only a few days more. So today, send 10 cents with one Kellogg's Pep box stop to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You'll go for this swell army money belt, and you'll go for this swell cereal, Kellogg's Pep. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. Suspecting that Superman has lost his memory and is none other than Bud Smith, star pitcher for the Metropolis Titans who has disappeared, Batman and Robin believe he is in the hands of Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician. And as we know, they are right. In the Metropolis bungalow of Dr. Marsh, a former German concentration camp official, Superman is being fed liquefied kryptonite, the strange element which caused him to lose his memory, and which in 24 hours, Marsh has promised Latimer will make the Man of Steel a mental and physical wreck. However, a hoodlum called Punchy, who is employed by Latimer, is an ardent baseball fan and has been grieving aloud in several taverns over the fate of his beloved Titans. Tipped off about this, Batman and Robin are on Punchy's trail. But so also is Gus, Latimer's henchman, who has been ordered to silence the talkative hoodlum. As we continue now in a shabby rooming house, Punchy is discussing his problem with a crony known as Stubby. Listen. Tell you, it ain't right, Stubby. Here is the Titans all set to win their first pennant since 1935, and what happens? They lose Bud Smith. Yeah, the greatest pitcher and hitter what ever lived. They can't even finish in the first division without him. It sure is a shame, Punchy. It's a crime. That's what it is, a dirty, rotten crime. Yeah. You know what, Punchy? What? It's funny, too. Funny? How do you figure a laugh at this, hey? Well, if Bud Smith was snatched like the coppers think, how come the boys which snatched him ain't made a bid for ransom? That ain't none of your business. Go on, you're just covering up. You don't know nothing about it yourself. That's what you think. Well, uh, the first time since 1935 they got a chance for the pennant and that dirty baboon losses it up. I ought to do something about it, Stubby. What can you do, big shot? I can do plenty. Yeah? Yeah. Go on, tell me then. 
I can't, because if I squealed and they found out, uh, that would be all, brother. If who found out you squeal about what? I can't tell you, Stubby. I don't dare. Oh, but jeepers, when I think about them poor titans blowing their first chance for a penance since 1935... Now, Punchy, do you really know what happened to Bud Smith? Or are you just kidding? No, I ain't kidding. Then what is it? Come on, tell all me. All I can tell you is this much. If I stole what I know, see, Bud Smith would be back on the Titans and they could win the pennant. Then why don't you? Because I ain't got the knife, that's why. Oh, uh, look, Stubby, be a good guy and go and get me something to drink, huh? Uh, here's a buck. Tell me what gives first. I'll, I'll tell you when you come back, honest. And then uh, as soon as I get me knife up, I'll, I'll do something about getting Bud Smith back to the Titans. Go on now, get going. Well, okay, Punchy. It'll take me a little while, though. I'll have to go over to Wicker Street, you know. Okay, okay. Hurry it up as fast as you can. Yeah, I'll do it. I gotta. As soon as Stubby comes back, I'll go to the coppers. I'll tell them where Bud Smith is, and I'll, I'll get them to lock me up till they got Latimer in the jug. Oh, but if he ever gets loose, though. Hey, you back already, Stubby? Gosh. Yeah, guys. How you doing, Punchy? Oh, ho, oh, me? Oh, fine, fine, Gus. You hey, listen. You kind of forgot to come back with that milk Doc Marsh sent you for, didn't you? The milk? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the milk. Well, well, you see, it was like this, I Gus. Know I know how it is. You went popping off in every tavern in town. Me? No, no, not me, Gus. I was... I come up here to give you a little message. A what? A message from Mr. Latimer. And here it is. <laughs> The room we want is at the end of the hall, Batman. I know. There it is, Robin. Yes, here's hoping that punchy character is home, Batman. And he can tell us where Clark Kent, Bud Smith is. Here we go. Knock again. Right. Nobody home. What do we do now? I guess all we can do is wait downstairs and hope he'll show. What was that? What? Thought I heard something. Listen. Yes, there it is again. Uh huh. In Punchy's room. It sounds like. Wait, Robin. Let's try the door. It's unlocked. Uh oh. Christopher Columbus. Look, Batman, on the floor. Now I see him. Oh, uh, great Scott! This fellow's been stabbed. Yeah, and unless I miss my guess, it's Punchy. Mm, he answers uh... the description all right. Oh, he's in bad shape. Uh, Quick, where's the phone? There isn't any jeepers, Batman. We counted on Punchy to tell Don't us Don't waste where... time talking, Robin. Go out and find a doctor and a police officer. I'm on my way. Hurry, Robin, hurry. Right. No use. I'm done for. Take it easy, Punchy. We'll have a doctor here right away. I gotta, I tell you, gotta help the Titans and Bud Smith. Greatest pitcher Did ever Did you say lived. Bud Smith? Yeah. Get the coppers. Take them to Bud Smith. Do you know where Smith is, Punchy? Yeah. Latimer's got him. Latimer, eh? I knew it. Where's he holding Smith? In the bungalow. You gotta get there fast. Or it'll be too late. Where's this bungalow? Yeah, they're gonna finish him. Uh, where is the bungalow, Punchy? Where? Uh, on Adam Street. Adam Street? Yeah. Doc, doctor. What number on Adams? Do you know? Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-one? Twenty-one nineteen. Twenty-one nineteen Adam Street. Yeah. Save Bud Smith. Titans can win. Smith. We'll save him. Now listen. Vice chance since nineteen Punchy. Oh. Punchy. Here's the doctor, Batman. It's too late, Robin. He's gone. Get Inspector Henderson on the car radio, Robin. Okay, Pat. Hurry. Tell him to meet us at 2119 Adam Street with a squad of officers, but quick. Check. Batman and Robin calling Metropolis Police Headquarters. Batman and Robin calling Police Headquarters. Come in, please. Over. Police Headquarters to Batman and Robin. Go ahead. Urgent message to Inspector Henderson. Meet us at 2119 Adam Street. Repeat. Meet us at 2119 Adam Street with a squad of men at once. Bud Smith is there. Over. Are you sure about Smith? You heard me. Bud Smith is at 2119 Adam Street. And tell the inspector not to spare the horses. Got it. Over and out. 
Let's go, Batman. Hang on to your hat, silly boy. We're on our way. Pressing the accelerator down to the floorboards, Batman sends his powerful Batmobile roaring through the streets, bound for Dr. Marsh's bungalow. What will happen there? We'll be back in a moment to find out, so stand by. It's exciting, it's thrilling, and it's yours for only one dime in cash, plus one pep box stop. You bet I'm talking about the genuine army money belt Kellogg's Pep is offering you. It's the real thing, just like the G.I.'s war, with three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones, and there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps those pockets secret. A safe hiding place for your papers, letters, collections, secret codes. Swell when you go hiking for your scout knife or matches or money, or when you go to camp this summer. A genuine army money belt in real G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it'll fit you slick, and it's the genuine article. G.I.'s paid a dollar for it, but all you do is to mail ten cents and one box top from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman. Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that? You send one dime and one box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman. Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is good for only a few more days, so don't put it off. Those secret money belts are going fast, and send in your order today. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Batman and Robin in their Batmobile roared up and stopped before Dr. Marsh's small bungalow on Adams Street, a police car carrying Inspector Henderson and half a dozen officers swung in from the corner and braked to a stop beside them. As we continue now, the police officers have spread around to the outside of the house. Batman, Robin, Inspector Henderson, and Sergeant Healy stand on the little porch outside the front door. Ring the bell again, Inspector. I rung it half a dozen times, Batman. Either nobody's inside or they're playing possum. I'm sure they're in there. So am I. Uh, we'll find out right now. Break that window, Healy. Okay, Inspector. Careful, though. Just in case somebody's standing inside with a gun. Well, if they are, this ought to draw a shot. Quick, get back, Healy. Okay. Nothing happened, Batman. Something tells me something will happen now. I'm going in through the window. No, no, no. Come back here, Batman. Sorry, Inspector. This is my party. And mine. Come back here, Robin. All right, come on, Healy. Let's follow them. Right, Inspector. Smith. Bud Smith. Where are you, Latimer? You better give up. This is the end of the line. Anybody home, Batman? Doesn't seem to be. This bedroom is empty. So is this one. Yeah. And so is the living room and the kitchen. The whole house is empty. Maybe not, Inspector. No attic, but there's a cellar. Well, Healy's down there. Find anything, Healy? Nobody down here in the cellar, Inspector. Yeah, I thought not. Then where is Bud Smith? And where's Big George Latimer? I don't know, Robin. It looks as if Latimer's outsmarted us again. Helplessly, Batman and Robin look about the small empty bungalow while Inspector Henderson glares at them angrily. Yes, once more, the cunning big George Latimer has outmaneuvered Batman and Robin and the police. What will happen now with only hours remaining before Superman's mind and body are crippled forever? Exciting things happen in tomorrow's episode, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Vacation days. Man, that's Crumble's weather. Extra playtime means that you need the energy a real whole wheat cereal can give you. So wrap yourself around a bowl full of Kellogg's Crumbles, those crinkly shreds of sweet and mellow-rich whole wheat, cool and fresh and breezy-tasting in cool milk. Mm-mm. A dish full of those Kellogg's Crumbles, sprinkled with ripe red chilled berries, and swimming to the brim in cool milk. Good? Why, it's terrific. You bet you're in for a prize dish with crisp, 
crunchy, crinkly Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman's friends, refusing to admit defeat in their desperate search for the Man of Steel, arrive one step closer to the whereabouts of the murderous villains. Say, when you go on hikes this summer or to camp, you'll sure be glad to have one of those secret money belts those super delicious whole wheat flakes Kellogg's Pep has for you. It's a real, genuine United States Army money belt. The very same money belt that G.I.s used for carrying their personal letters and photos and identification. And you can do the same. It's genuine G.I. equipment. It's made of khaki with three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones. Now, there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps the pocket secret so nobody but you need know what's in them. This genuine Army money belt is made of sturdy, water-resistant cloth. It has a full-size buckle, and it's adjustable so it'll fit you slick. You can wear it under your coat or your jacket or on the outside, and you can wear it around your waist or slung over one shoulder. Now, G.I.'s paid a dollar for their money belts, but all you do is to mail 10 cents plus a box stop from a package of Kellogg's Pep and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now, remember, send your dime with one Kellogg's Pep box stop and your name and address... Clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. And don't put it off. The orders are coming in thick and fast, so hurry. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. Near death when he was found by the famous Batman, a hoodlum called Punchy told him that Bud Smith, the missing baseball star, was a prisoner of Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician in a metropolis bungalow. Believing Bud Smith to be Superman, who was suffering from loss of memory, Batman hurried to the bungalow with Robin, his young companion, and Police Inspector Henderson. But to our friend's dismay, the bungalow was deserted. And as we continue now, in the small living room, Henderson faces Batman angrily. Listen. Dang it, Batman. Once again, you've brought me out on a wild goose chase. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think I've got nothing else to do but follow up your bum steers? Now look, Inspector. This is the third time in one month that you've dragged me out on a phony lead. First, you made me search Big George Latimer's house for Superman. Then for Clark Kent. And now you drag me way out here to look for Bud Smith, whom you say is Kent. I know, Now we don't find Smith. We don't find Kent. We don't find Latimer. We don't find anybody. Now, look, Inspector. I told you, a fellow who worked for Latimer gave us the lead that Bud Smith or Clark Kent was here. Yeah, yeah. And he was not only dying at the time and didn't know what he was talking about, but was half drunk besides. I think he knew full well what he was talking about. He knew all right. You know, Batman... The trouble with you is you got it into your head that Big George Latimer is behind the disappearance of Superman. I'm sure he and is. And so when anybody else disappears, Kent or Bud Smith, you think Latimer must be behind that too. Well, naturally, they're all the same person. What's that? Did you say they're all three the same person? Well, I... Uh... Huh? I mean, uh, uh, Clark Kent and Bud Smith are the same person. Kent lost his memory, you know. That's and... what you say. But you can't make me believe that. Kent may look like Smith, but that's all. Why, this Smith's a terrific athlete. And everybody knows Kent couldn't hold his own in a game of marbles. Just the same, Inspector. Take my word for it that Kent is Smith. Rubbish. Now, look. If you fellas don't lay off Latimer, you're going to get yourselves and me into serious trouble. He's a big man in this state, you know, and if you think you can get... Inspector. Yeah? What is it, Haley? We checked up on who lives in this bungalow like you are, did Well? It's rented by a doctor, a Dr. Gerald Marsh. Marsh? Who's he? Well, the neighbor says he's a refugee, a quiet guy, minds his own business. He's connected with a little hospital. Sounds like they open up to me, Inspector. Yeah, it does to me, too. Well, Batman, are you satisfied now? Not yet. Where's Dr. Marsh now, Sergeant? The hospital says he's out of town for a couple of days. They expect him back tomorrow. I see. Do you mind if Robin and I give this place a quick once-over, Inspector? I certainly do mind. But, Inspector, now, if we don't... Now, get this, Batman. And you, too, Robin. 
Lay off Latimer. And stop playing games with the police department or you're going to get into trouble. Now, get out of this place and stay out. We're going back to headquarters, Healy. Come on. Well, here we are out in the cold again. Yes. Thanks to Henderson, we can't follow our hunches to Kent. Look, Batman, maybe the inspector's right about Punchy not knowing what he was talking about. No, I don't believe it, Robin. I'm sure Punchy knew what he was talking about, all right. And I'm convinced he was stabbed to keep his mouth shut. Well, maybe. Anyhow, we know that Bud Smith isn't here, and neither is Big George Latimer, right. so... But I think they were here. Come on. Where? I hate to disobey Henderson, but Kent's life is at stake. So we're going to let ourselves back into Dr. Marsh's house again. And hope we can pick up some clue as to where Latimer took Kent. It's our only chance. You're the boss. Let's go. As Batman and Robin let themselves back into Dr. Marsh's bungalow, the owl-eyed physician and Big George Latimer are in the cellar of a secluded farmhouse about 35 miles from Metropolis. On a rough cot, still wearing the baseball uniform of the Titans, Superman lies in a restless sleep. Two feet away on a crate rests the jagged piece of green-glowing kryptonite, the strange metallic substance from the exploded planet on which Superman was born, and which, when brought within ten feet of him in the atmosphere of Earth, steals every ounce of strength from his powerful body. Look at him, Marsh. The great Superman. Helpless at my feet. I swore I'd get even with him. And I have. Yeah, Mr. Latimer. That is, if nothing happens. What do you mean? That stuff you're feeding him. The liquefied kryptonite is working, isn't it? Do not worry about the kryptonite. It works well. And why do you keep saying, if nothing happens? Because I am worried, Mr. Latimer. Worried about what? This place, this farm. We were here once before, you know. And Batman and Robin successfully chased us here. Is that not so? Relax. They drew a blank here once, so they won't return. Anyhow, we'll be through by midnight. Then we'll clear out. But what if Batman and Robin come here before me? Don't worry about them, I tell you. I'm sure they won't show up again because there's no reason for it. But if they do, they won't get far. I've got a gang of tough men, men I can trust, guarding this place. Very well, Mr. Latimer, if you think it's safe... I do. Look, isn't it time to give Superman another dose of the liquefied kryptonite? Yeah, I will get it. Uh, Will you wake him up, please, Mr. Latimer? (laughs) That will be a pleasure. Get up, Superman. Get up, I said. Get up. Treatments make him sleepy. I'll wake him up. Wake up, you. Superman, wake up. Uh, Superman. uh, What did you call me? (laughs) I called you Superman. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I know. Is that my name? Don't you know? I... Oh, that's strange. I can't seem to remember my name. Maybe it's Bud Smith? Bud Smith? Yes. Does that sound familiar? No. No, it doesn't. Tell me why am I... <laughs> you hear that, Doc? He's even forgotten about being Bud Smith, the baseball star. Sorry, I, I don't seem to understand anything. Tell me. Who am I? What's happened to me? And, oh, why, why can't I move? <laughs> Listen to him. This is worth a million dollars to me, Doc. Doc, <laughs> are you a doctor? Here, yeah, drink this milk. It will make you feel stronger. Uh, well, all right, I'll, I'll drink it. Oh, oh, but I, I can't raise my hand. I will hold the glass for you. Oh, here. Drink. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Just six more doses, eh, Marsh? Yeah. Every two hours for twelve more hours. And then he will be finished forever, Mr. Latimer. Floatingly, Big George Latimer watches Superman drink the milk in which the deadly liquefied kryptonite has been mixed. Twelve more hours, says Dr. Marsh, and the Man of Steel will be finished. Can anything save him now? We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. So keep listening.
Say you want a safe hiding place for your secret codes, identification, money? Then hurry, 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 and send for the genuine Army Money Belt that super delicious Kellogg's Pep is offering you boys and girls. They're going fast. This offer is good for only a few more days. This belt is the real GI article with three secret compartments. There's a special flap that folds over on the inside, so there's no chance of anybody finding out what you're carrying. This money belt will come in mighty handy when you go on hikes this summer or off to camp. This is the real thing, a genuine army money belt in khaki color. It has a full-size buckle, and it's adjustable so it'll fit any size waist. You ask any ex-GI you know, and he'll tell you how tricky this money belt is and that it cost him a dollar, so you're getting a real bargain. All you do is to mail ten cents and one box stop from a package of crisp, delicious Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. And don't forget, print your name and address clearly. You got that straight now? For your genuine Army money belt with three secret compartments, mail one dime and one box top from Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This offer is good for only a few more days, so send in your order right away. This offer is limited to the United States. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, Batman and Robin have been searching Dr. Marsh's bungalow in Metropolis. Robin is about ready to admit defeat. When suddenly, Batman cries out. Hey, Robin. What, Batman? Look at this little book I found behind one of the blocks in the fireplace. It's a diary. Oh, so what? I'm not in the mood for diaries now. No, well, listen to this. Dachau, May 24th. Dachau? That was a German concentration camp. Uh Uh-huh, listen. Today I performed 21 interesting brain operations as experiments. The patients died, but it does not matter. They were all Poles and Jews. Tomorrow I shall perform many more operations. The living human guinea pigs here are unlimited. Christopher Columbus. What devil wrote that? Dr. Marsh, I think. Marsh? The fellow who lives in this bungalow? Yes. But apparently his real name is Marshak. Dr. Gerhardt Marshak. See, it's written here on the cover of the book. Oh, you like that. Imagine a rotten, murderous German concentration camp doctor living right here in Metropolis. How about that? I wonder... Great, Scott Robin, look. Now what? This is a German driving license. Issued to Dr. Gerhardt Marshak. Look at the photograph attached to the license. You recognize that man? I'd say you were... Why, yes, he looks familiar, You but... saw him about a month ago at a farm. The place where we thought we'd trace Superman to from the old mill. Holy smokes, I remember now. Superman wasn't there, but this guy was. Right. And now Superman, I, I mean Clark Kent's trail, leads to this German doctor again. Say, do you think this Nazi rat is tied up with Big George Latimer? Obviously. Come on, Robin. We're going back out to that farm again. And maybe this time we will find Superman. <laughs> Closely followed by his young companion, Batman rushes from Dr. Marsh's house to his powerful bat-shaped car. And a moment later, he and Robin are en route to the farm where we know Superman is. But Batman and Robin are alone, and Big George Latimer has a small army of tough-armed henchmen guarding the scene. What will happen as Superman's last hours tick away? There's a thrill a minute for you in tomorrow's action-packed episode, fellows and girls. So be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Bet you've got a lot of fun planned for tomorrow. Sure, that's what summer days are for. So start your fun right at breakfast with Kellogg's Crumbles. These shreds of real whole wheat have a mellow, rich, just right flavor that sure is exciting. And when you top off your bowl of Kellogg's Crumbles with frosty, chilled berries and sugar, then pour on cool milk, oh man, you've got a breezy, refreshing breakfast treat that'll keep you busy on that bowl right down to the last wonderful spoonful. Try them tomorrow. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. 
Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Superman's friends and enemies face a battle of life or death, as each fiercely struggles against the other for desperate control of the Man of Steel's existence. Absolutely. Positively. This is next to the last day I'll be telling you about the thrilling G.I. money belt Kellogg's Pep has for you. And if you haven't sent for yours yet, you better grab yourself a pencil and get busy. This money belt is GI equipment, the real thing. It has three secret compartments, one large pocket and two smaller ones. Now, there's a special flap that folds over on the inside and keeps those pockets secret so that you can safely hide your money, identification, letters, and secret codes. And you can wear this army belt under your coat or your jacket, or you can even sleep with it like lots of GIs did. Remember, this is the real thing, a genuine army money belt in GI khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable, so it'll fit you slick, and it's the genuine article. Now, GI's paid a dollar for theirs, but all you do is to mail ten cents, one box stop from a package of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that? You send one dime and one box stop from Kellogg's Pep along with your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Don't put it off. There's just one more day left to send in your order. Do it right now. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. On a secluded farm near Metropolis, where he is a prisoner of Big George Latimer, a dishonest politician, and Dr. Marsh, a former German concentration camp official, Superman is being fed a solution of kryptonite. This substance from the exploded planet on which he was born, and which in the atmosphere of Earth robs him of all his strength, has already caused him to lose his memory. And in 12 hours more, Dr. Marsh has promised Latimer, the Man of Steel will be a mental and physical wreck. But meanwhile, in Metropolis, the famous Batman and Robin followed a clue to Dr. Marsh's house, where they found a hidden diary which contained a photograph of the Nazi. Recognizing him as a man they had seen at a farm some time ago while they were searching for Superman, the dynamic duo decided to investigate the farm again. And as we continue now, they are speeding along a country highway in their powerful Batmobile. Listen. Okay, keep your eyes peeled now, Robin. The lane that leads to the farm cuts off along here somewhere. Yeah, I'm watching for it, Batman. Good. Brakes. I think it's right up ahead. Check. Yep, this is it, all right. Winds through the woods for about half a mile. It's out of the farm. Yeah, that's right. But you're not going to drive all the way in, I hope. Oh, of course not. We'll stop just before the woods end. Then hide the car under the trees. Uh-huh. And then go looking for trouble, huh? No, sir, Robin. For soup, uh, for Clark Kent. Well, if he's at the farm, chances are Big George Latimer and our Nazi doctor friend are, too. And if so, there will be trouble. Well, that's what I've been suggesting, Pappy. Any objection? Oh, are you kidding? It'll be a pleasure. Only, um... Uh... Only what? I just remembered. The last time we tangled with Latimer, he had Boku gorillas around. And all of them had guns. They're with him here. That might make it a bit more difficult. Well, now you're not kidding. Say, maybe we should have slowed up long enough to collect Inspector Henderson and a few of his gendarmes. No, 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 Robin. Henderson's office since we made him search Latimer's house and then hauled him out to Marsh's bungalow to find Kent. And uh, no Kent, remember? Yeah. Well, I guess we're on our own as usual, then. Right. Now. Hey, where are you going? The woods end just ahead there. See? Oh, that's right. If we park under this big tree, that ought to do the trick. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I don't think anyone in the lane will notice the car. Okay, Robin. Out we go. Check. Hey, hey. Not so fast. I just want to have a look, see. Someone might see you. I'm behind the tree. Oh, the farmhouse looks nice and peaceful. See anybody around? No. Duck back. What's up? 
There's a big lad coming this way. Right along the edge of the woods there. See him? Uh-huh. Oh, a tough-looking customer. He's carrying a gun. Say, Robin. Uh-huh. He's one of the fellows we tangled with at Latimer's house. One of Latimer's gunmen. Say, that's right. That means the trail's getting warm, huh? Oh, it certainly is. My hunch is this fellow's a lookout. See? He keeps peering about. Great Scott. Now what? I think he spotted our car. Oh, no. Hey, no. He has. Hey. Come on, Robin. Let's take him fast. Okay, Pappy. Yeah. No. Yeah, got him. Yeah. Yeah. Nice tackle, Robin. Hold I'll hold him while you truss him up. I'll have him ready for the laundry and two shakes. Good. Let's just take a hitch here. Another hitch here. Hey, there. There. Uh oh. Here comes reinforcements for our friend. Hurry it up, Robin. Right. There. He's all set. That closing in. Not your handkerchief, Robin. Stuff it in this laddie's mouth when I take my hand away. Right. Just a second. Oh, there. Oh, all right. That does it. Good. We'll have more company in a minute, then. Uh-huh. Get behind that big old rubber. I'll wait behind the street. When our company shows, make them welcome. Oh, should I bake a cake? Dad, where are you? Oh, here, here they come. Where is that guy? Hey, Eddie, look! What the... Oh, it's Dan. Yeah. Over the top, Rob. Right, right, right here, Eddie. Eddie. Get him. Hey, Green, hey, friend. Here's my Eddie. Oh, what a lovely what? chin you have for a haymaker. Oh. Ah, nice going, Batman. Same to you, son. <laughs> two up and two down, short and sweet. Oh, boy. When we hit them, they stay hit, eh, Pappy? Okay, never mind the orchids. Come on. We'll tie these two chickens together. My rope here. Right. Roll that husky this way, chum. Check. A little more. There you are. That's it. I wonder how many more of these toughies are around. Well, something tells me we'll find out soon enough. Right. There. There. That does it. These two buckles will keep for a while. Okay, come on, Robin. All right, where to? We'll make a beeline for the farmhouse. You ready? Never readier. Okay, let's go then. And keep low, Robin. Right. Hey, we're spotted. Duck low. Last shot almost parted my hair. We're almost at the house. You see that cellar window? Yeah. Dive through it when I give the word. Check. Come on. Okay, Robin, through the window. Right. Liver. Up on your feet, Robin. Right. Who, who are you? Dr. Livingston, I presume. Dr. Marsh is more correct. Save me. Save me I shoot. You're not shooting anybody, my dirty Nazi friend. No. Oh. Batman, you should be more gentle. Robin, look. Look on that couch. Christopher Columbus, it's Mr. Kent. Superman, you mean? Superman? That's right. You sleep. Superman, wake up. Wake up, Hurry, Superman! Yes, and it's Mr. Latimer. Out of the fire, and we'll get him. Batman, Hurry. that's Latimer outside. I hear him. Wake up, Superman. Wake up! Wake up, Superman, will you? Robin, Robin, that piece of kryptonite. Get it back in that lead box. Oh, okay, but hurry and wake him up. We're going to have our hands full in a minute. Wake up, Superman. Superman! Superman, wake up, will you? Robin, I can't wake him up. Get that kryptonite away, Robin. I am. Wow, it burns. There, does it. Good. Now we ought to wake up. We can fight our way out of here. Superman, wake up. Wake up, I say. Holy smokes, Batman, look. At the window. Hey, Batman and Robin. Hold him down, boys. Down, Robin, down. Desperately, Batman shakes the sleeping Superman, calling to him. The Slatimer's henchmen crowd outside the cellar windows, training their guns on Batman and Robin. We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. So keep listening. You'll be sorry if you don't get one of those exciting money belts Kellogg's Pep has for you. This offer has only one more day to go, so get busy. This belt is the genuine article, a real United States Army money belt with three secret pockets that'll hold your letters and photos, identification, your secret club codes, and your allowance money. There's one large pocket and two smaller ones covered with a special kind of flap that folds over on the inside, conceals the pockets so nobody can get at them except you. Great for camping trips and hikes. Safely carries your knife and matches. It's exactly the same money belt G.I.'s wore in real khaki color with a full-size buckle. Adjustable so it's sure to fit any size waist. 
Don't miss out. Send for yours today. Although GIs paid a dollar for theirs, you can get yours for only ten cents and one box stop from a package of that swell cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And send your name and address clearly printed and mail to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. You may never get such a bargain again, so get busy. Mail one dime and one box stop from a package of Kellogg's Pep to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Remember, this is next to the last day of this offer. So hurry, hurry, hurry. This offer is limited to the United States. Now back to the adventures of Superman. Trapped in the farmhouse cellar with the sleeping Superman, Batman and Robin placed the kryptonite back in its lead box and then attempted to waken the Man of Steel. But meanwhile, Big George Latimer had posted a henchman at each of six cellar windows and each trained a gun on Batman and Robin. As we continue now, the dynamic duo have flattened themselves against the wall, protected by Superman's cot and his body from the bullets that have been spraying the walls and the floor about them as the Man of Steel begins to awaken. What? What's happening? Superman's waking up, Batman. Thank oh. heaven. Listen, Superman. Who are you? What's all this shooting about? Who are we? Batman and Robin, of course. Batman and Robin? Yes. Now listen, will you? Well, I can sit up. I can move. Look out, Robin. Duck low. Wow. Oh, this is getting hot, Batman. You're not kidding. Superman, listen. What did you call me? Holy smokes, Batman. Has Superman lost his memory, too? Naturally. Listen. You're Superman. You hear me? You're Superman. Look, su- I can stand up. I can even walk. Hey, Mr. Lattimer, look at that. Superman is standing up. Never mind him. We'll take care of him later. Get inside, boys. Finish Batman and Robin. Okay, let's go, fellas. Holy smokes. Here they come for us. What will we do, Batman? I don't know, Robin. If only Superman would snap out of it, he could help us. Nobody can help you now, Batman. All right, boys. Finish him. Backed against the wall, Batman and Robin can only watch as Big George Latimer's henchmen swarm through the cellar windows and start toward them. Guns raised. And Superman, the one person who could save his friends and himself, stands wonderingly by, unaware of his identity, unaware of what is going on. Is this the end of Batman and Robin and of Superman? What will happen? Tomorrow's action-packed episode tells the story, fellows and girls, so be sure to listen. This will be Superman's last thrilling program before his summer vacation and his return to the air on September 29th. So don't fail to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. Now that summer's come, you've got plenty of time for all that fun you've been saving up. And that makes it crumbles time. Yes, sir, Kellogg's crumbles. Those hearty, metal-rich shreds of whole wheat sure help to start your day full of zip and energy. And for a fresh, cool-as-a-breeze breakfast dish, just try this. A layer of Kellogg's crumbles and a layer of frosty, chilled peaches. Then pour on cool milk and dig in. Mouth-watering? Man, you'll keep that spoon going in the bowl till it's polished clean. Try them tomorrow. Kellogg's crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the... Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, 
Superman faces the supreme test of his existence as the forces about him rocket him up and away, far into the stratosphere of restored memory. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's now or never. Today is the last day I'll be telling you how that you can get the genuine army money belt Kellogg's Pep has for you. So grab yourself a pencil and jot down all the dope. This is the real thing. A United States Army money belt, same as the G.I.'s wore. It's something that you don't want to miss. It's terrific. It has three secret compartments, a safe hiding place for your money, identification, letters, and photos. No chance of anybody finding out what you're carrying because there's a special flap that folds over on the inside, hides the pockets, so you're the only one who knows about them. You can wear this money belt under your coat or your jacket or on the outside, around your waist or slung over your shoulder. This is the genuine Army article in real khaki color with a full-size buckle, adjustable so it's sure to fit any size waist. Now, G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, but you get yours for only ten cents and one box top from a package of those crisp whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep. That's a bargain you may never get again. Mail one dime and one box top from a package of Kellogg's Pep, along with your name and address clearly printed, to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. This is the very last day of this offer, so don't get left out. Send your order in right away. This offer is limited to the United States. And now, the adventures of Superman. Becoming a famous baseball pitcher while suffering loss of memory, Superman was captured again by Big George Latimer and taken to a secluded farmhouse. There, a former Nazi doctor named Marsh fed him liquefied kryptonite a strange metallic substance from the exploded planet on which Superman was born. This had originally caused Superman to lose his memory, and in another few hours, Marsh stated, he would be permanently disabled. But that afternoon, Batman and Robin traced their friend to the farmhouse, and after disposing of three of Latimer's henchmen, found Superman and Dr. Marsh in the cellar. After Batman knocked out the Nazi position, Robin locked the kryptonite in its lead case, releasing Superman from the power of its rays. This restored to the Man of Steel his strength, but not his memory. And at that moment, Latimer and several of his armed hoodlums burst into the cellar. Robin gasped. It looks like curtains for us, Batman. But as we continue now, Superman, still wearing the baseball uniform of the Metropolis Titans, has stepped in front of Batman and Robin, who are packed against the wall. Latimer, halting a few paces away with his men, calls angrily to Superman. Listen. Get out of the way, you. No. You've got these fellows outnumbered ten to two. What's more, you're armed and they're not. I don't know who you are or who they are, but it isn't fair. Hey, Mr. What do we do, Mr. Yeah. Latimer? Just like stand it. back and keep them covered, man. Yeah. I'll take care of this myself. He's moving toward the kryptonite. Batman, we've got to keep him from opening the box. I yes, warn but... you two. Take one step toward me, and my men will finish you. What do we do, Batman? He'll have the kryptonite in a minute. Quick, Robin. Grab hold of Superman's back. Watch them, Mr. Latimer. Do as I say. Now, Superman, listen to me. Do you want to help us? Why, yes, but why do you call ah, me Superman? Ah, my friend. Batman, look, Latimer's got the kryptonite. Superman, say, up and away. Then leap up. Leap up. Do What's as more? I say, please, hurry. Ah, Superman, I'll take care of you. And then Batman and Robin. Do what I told you, will you? Hurry, or we'll all be done for. Do it, Superman. Now, well, say, Superman, well, uh, you're through. All right, I don't understand, but here goes. Up and away. <laughs> Leaping upward as Batman has instructed Superman with his two costume friends clinging to his belt, zooms like a meteor, crashing through floors and ceilings and roof, and flashes up from the shattered farmhouse into the heavens like a mighty jet-propelled rocket. Higher, Superman zooms, and higher. Then, as Batman and Robin begin to turn blue and shake with cold, the pressure of the high altitude and the shock of rocket-like flight seems to explode a gigantic whirling pinwheel in the mind of the Man of Steel. For a moment, he gapes about him, looks down at the two costumed figures who cling to his belt. And then, slowly, the expression of stupefied amazement fades from his face, and he laughs aloud. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha! Superman, of course, that's who I am! Superman! 
swiftly then the joyful man of steel clasps his arms about his two shivering, nearly unconscious friends and plummets downward to a green, sun-bathed hill. Batman. Robin, snap out of it. Uh, I'm all right, I guess. Uh, well, Superman, you know us. I've recovered my memory, Batman and Robin, thanks to you two. Hallelujah, was that close. One second more and Latimer would have finished all of us. You said it, Robin. Wait, Scott, I forgot about Latimer. He's still got the kryptonite. Uh-oh. That's right. Up with you fellows. <clears throat> and back to that farmhouse. Up and away! <laughs> Is the farmhouse, or what's left of it? Great Lucifer. It's collapsed like a house of cards. What happened? When I went up through it from the cellar, I must have wrecked it. Latimer's gang are caught under the wreckage. How about Latimer and Dr. Marsh? And the kryptonite. We'll find out in a moment. Stand back, you two. I'll have this mess cleared up in a moment. Away! Christopher Columbus, look at him clean up that mess back there. Talk about your human steam shovel. Yeah. Now, Robin, keep your fingers crossed that Latimer didn't get away with the kryptonite. <laughs> What's up, Superman? Hey, look, Batman. He's found Latimer and Dr. Marsh. Right, and the rest of the gang. Are they alive? Most of the gang are, I think, but Latimer and his Nazi partner look done for. Uh Uh-oh. They're lucky at that. They'd have gotten the electric chair if they survived this. Yes, either way, they were finished. Latimer wanted to be a Hitler in this country. Wanted to use his political power to discriminate against good Americans just because they attended a different church from his. Or because their skin happened to be a different color. Well, he finished up where Hitler did, and Mussolini, and all the other bigoted tyrants. That's right, Superman. Well, there's only one more thing to do before we get Inspector Henderson out here. Pick up that lead box, will you, bad man? Oh, yes, yes, the kryptonite. Well, what are you going to do with it, Superman? I'll show you. Up into my arms, you two. There. Now, out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Up and away! <laughs> that lead box, please, Batman. Here you are, Superman. Thanks. Now, Bud Smith will pitch his last strikeout. Uh, wow, look at it go. Goodbye, kryptonite. Down to the bottom of the ocean with you where you can never harm me again. There it goes under. And down to the bottom of the briny. Oh, boy, am I glad to see the last of that. You and me both, Robin. You and me both. <laughs> Happily, Superman, Batman, and Robin watch the lead box containing the deadly kryptonite sink beneath the waves and out of Superman's life forever. A few hours later, once more in the business suit and spectacles of Clark Kent, the mild-mannered reporter, Superman has arrived at the Daily Planet and entered the office of Perry White. For a startled moment, the gray-haired editor, Lois Lane, and cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, who have been mourning the strange disappearance of their friend and colleague, stare at him in open-mouthed disbelief. As if they are beholding a ghost. And then with glad cries they fall upon him, wringing his hand, clapping his back, and firing a host of embarrassing questions. Clark! Oh, Clark, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, glad to see you, Lois. Gosh, Mr. Ken, I'm so glad I, I can hardly talk. Ah, easy, Ken, Jim, easy. It really is you, isn't it? Certainly is, Chief. Well, 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 come on. I'll start talking. Oh, yeah. Tell us all about it. Yes, what happened to you after you disappeared from the ballpark the well, other night? Yeah, and we're Superman. <laughs> Say, you really are that picture of Bud Smith, aren't you? Well, uh, Why, of course I, he is. Listen, Clark. Gosh, Mr. Ken, how could you be such a great pitcher and home run hitter? Well, I... I, I that's what bothers me. And what, what, do you play ball like, like Superman would? Oh, now, look. Yes, I, Clark, you've got to make this clear. What? How could you pinch and hit as only Superman could? Yeah. How, Mr. Ken? How could you do that? For the moment, Clark Kent is speechless as, with the questioning stares of his friends full on his face... He thinks hard and fast for a way out of this uncomfortable spot. We'll know what happens in a moment, so keep listening. Well, this is it. It's now or never. For the last time, I'll tell you how to go about getting your genuine GI money belt from Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. So get a pencil and paper ready and listen closely. This is a genuine money belt. It has three secret compartments to carry your money, identification papers, secret codes, scout knife, and matches. Wonderful to take on hikes or when you go camping this summer. It has three pockets, one large and two smaller ones, concealed pockets. You see, there's a flap that folds over on the inside and keeps those pockets secret. 
This is the real thing. G.I. khaki color with a full-size buckle. It's adjustable so it'll fit you fine. And it's the genuine article. Now, G.I.'s paid a dollar for theirs, but all you do is to mail ten cents and one box stop from a package of those super delicious whole wheat flakes, Kellogg's Pep, and your name and address to Superman. Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll repeat that, and it's the last time. Send one dime and one box stop from Kellogg's Pep, along with your name and address clearly printed, to Superman, Box 251, Battle Creek, Michigan. Don't put it off, or you'll miss out. This is the very last day to get your genuine army belt with the three secret compartments. This offer is limited to the United States. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, Clark Kent, just returned to the Daily Planet after being missing for some time, is in danger of revealing his true identity as his friends press him with embarrassing questions. Tell us, Clark, how could you pitch and hit as only Superman could? Uh, yeah, how about that, Mr. Kent? I, I, how could you do that? I, I can't explain. You, you see, I, I lost my memory about a month ago, and everything that happened during that time is, is, is a blank, you might say. Now, wait a minute, Clark I'm Kent. I'm sorry, Lois. But gee whiz, Mr. Kent. Oh, uh, Lord, Kent. Lost my memory, I tell you. As a matter of fact, I'm starting to feel rather strange again. What? You are? Yes, I... I'll take it easy, Ken. I... Here, lie down on my couch. Oh, thank you, Chief. Listen, Clark. No how... more questions, Lois. No more questions. Don't you see the poor fellow's all in? You don't want him to get amnesia again, do you? I was just going to ask him if he wanted a pillow. Do you, Clark? No, thank you, Lois. But please don't ask me any more questions. It, it sort of makes my head spin. Gosh, no wonder. After all you've been through. Yes, poor chap. Hmm. You know, something tells me we'll never find out exactly what happened. Oh, maybe someday I'll be able to tell you, Lois, but not right now. Not for a long time, I'm afraid. Chuckling to himself, Superman lies back on Perry White's couch and closes his eyes. The near exposure of his double identity averted, and the greatest threats of his life, the deadly kryptonite and big George Latimer, gone forever. <laughs> And so we leave Superman and all his friends, Batman and Robin, Perry White, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and all the others, until September 29th, when they'll all be back with you in a new series of thrilling adventures. Remember the date, September 29th. Mark it on your calendar and be sure to join us again at that time, when we will bring you a new thrilling series of adventures with Superman. Now, here for a special word with you is Superman himself. Yes, this is Superman, and that special word is vacation. Starting today, I'm off for a vacation until September 29th, when I'll be back on the air again for the same good sponsor. So, see you September 29th. Meanwhile, happy holidays. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and will be brought to you again beginning September 29th every Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Vacation days. Man, that's crumbles weather. Extra playtime means that you need the energy a real whole wheat cereal can give you. So wrap yourself around a bowl full of Kellogg's crumbles, those crinkly shreds of sweet and mellow rich whole wheat, Cool and fresh and breezy tasting in cool milk. Mm-mm. A dish full of those Kellogg's crumbles sprinkled with ripe red chilled berries and swimming to the brim in cool milk. Good? Why, terrific. You bet you're in for a prize dish with crisp, crunchy, crinkly Kellogg's crumbles. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the Mutual.